In the early 1930s, the I am discourses on supply. I am activity of Saint Germain Foundation. The I am activity represents the original, permanent, and highest source of the Ascended Master's instruction on the great laws of life, as first offered to the Western world by the Ascended Master Saint Germain through his accredited messengers, Mr. and Mrs. Guy W. Ballard. In the early 1930s, the Ballards established Saint Germain Foundation and Saint Germain Press Incorporated which under St. German's guidance, have expanded into worldwide organizations that offer to mankind the true ascended master teachings on the great cosmic word, I am. St. German Foundation strives to keep the, I am, ascended master instruction in its pure, unadulterated form, free from any human interpretation, personal monetary gain, or proselytizing. As it is a gift from the great ascended masters and cosmic beings to bring illumination and perfection to mankind. Hundreds of I am temples and sanctuaries exist throughout the world where the teachings are applied in I am decree groups. The books of the Saint German series are available in many libraries, bookstores, or directly from Saint German Press. Dedication This series of books is dedicated in deepest eternal love and gratitude to our beloved ascended masters, Saint German, Jesus. Nada, the great divine director, our beloved ascended messengers, beloved Godfra, and Lotus, the great white brotherhood, the brotherhood of the royal Titan. The brotherhood of Mount Shasta, the great ascended masters from Venus, the great cosmic beings, the great angelic host, the great cosmic light, and those other ascended masters whose loving help has been direct and without limit. V. Tribute. The hour is at hand when the humanity of this earth must give more recognition to the activity of the great ascended masters and angelic host, who are constantly pouring out their transcendent light, assistance, and supply to mankind. There must come more gratitude to God for the blessings that are so lavishly and constantly bestowed on mankind. These great gifts are supplied to mankind from the beloved Lord the Moha Chohan, the powers of nature and the beings of the elements. Therefore it is time mankind awoke to their responsibilities in the use of these blessings. Beloved Godfrey reminds us, it is up to you whose homes are here in America, who earn your living in America, and whose supply in America blesses you. It is up to you to protect that supply for the other people in America, and the generations that are to build her into the ascended master nation of the future. Your obligation to your country is even greater than it is to your own outer activities, although you cannot possibly bless. Tribute. 7. Your nation and not be more supplied individually. You cannot possibly call for your nation with your intent to bless all and shatter that which limits, without increasing everything that blesses the nation. Will you love America enough to protect her homes, to protect her people, to give the supply and protect the supply God has given, until the cosmic light reaches the point where the human selfishness and discord is dissolved from the planet? The voice of the, I am, 85. For 11, 25 beloved Godfrey continues, the usury system is based entirely upon the borrowing of assets, rather borrowing of things. Now this is not reversed in a moment. It is a transition period in which you are passing out of age-old momentum of borrowing, borrowing in order to keep you under the claw of those who lend, make you subversive to their will, and make you think they are the authority over your life stream instead of your presence. Freedom must come in every way to life on this earth, and freedom can only come as the human dies, because freedom is wholly divine and usury is wholly human. The entire idea of debt has for long centuries, through fear, held its claws upon mankind. A tribute. I know from my own personal experience that it is necessary to maintain an inflexible, determined command to be free from all debt and obligations. The moment you take that stand against that with your presence and say, Mighty I am presence, cleanse my world of this thing, and give me the limitless supply from your hands, and see that no more debt binds life anywhere. You hammer that way like a pile driver, and you will find the thing goes down as sure as creation exists, but it does not bow in a moment. Keep commanding yourselves free from those obligations, then call forth the limitless opulence that you may be like the sun and pour assistance anywhere and everywhere that you wish to build beauty and perfection and permanent accomplishment. No matter what seems to be, make your calls and remember that presence is the door, and just rest within the presence. 
the voice of the I am 86.7.6, 10 with this in mind, there is presented in this volume a series of dictations by the great ascended masters on the law of life regarding supply. Tribute. Tribute. The voice of the I am 86.7.6, 10 with this in mind, there is presented in this volume a series of dictations by the great ascended masters on the law of life regarding supply. Read, study, and be blessed. 9. Editor's Note The following 20 discourses are unpublished except for the first dictation. It is reprinted here from the September, 1978, The Voice of the, I Am, magazine for the convenience of the, I Am, students because of its importance to the subject matter, supply. The supply of God of a thousand sons. Now gives us our supply. Now floods it from on high. Now keeps it in our hands. Fulfills our God commands. Is God's secret, I am, power. Doubles our supply each hour. Supplies us for all time. Is God's supply divine. Brings our supply clear through. Protects it here now, too. Brings us God's full release. Compels here all God's peace. Now pays here all our bills. Now heals all human ills. Supplies all that we love. Now floods them from above. Supplies all we hold dear. Now blasts all human fear. The supply of God. Now keeps our way God clear. Now makes all see and hear. Now brings all God's success. Floods all God's happiness. Now grants each God desire. Now gives all we require. Now gives us victory. Compels and sets us free. Now gives us all we ask. Fulfills our cosmic task. Now answers this our call. Now gives us here God's all. Now here all freedom gives. Is God's heart in which each lives. Now floods God's miracles through. Guards all the good we do. Is all God's power and might. Now holds us in its height. Now gives us all God's wealth. Now makes us all God's health. Now makes us all God know. God's blessings does bestow. Now makes us all do right. Is our, I am presence, bright. Now makes us know, I am. Fulfills each one's God plan. God's self here does reveal. Does make us God's flame feel. Is God's great seventh seal. Does make us all God feel. Does make us know all things. To us all God's gifts brings. Now all on earth does raise. Makes us the, I am, praise. Now hold supreme command. That flame of God, I am. That love is all God's life. Does still all earthly strife. That love to all does sing. That love, I am, and bring. Chanira. 13. Contents. Discourse I. Beloved Godfra. January 23, 1949 Chicago, Illinois Beloved Ones of the Light, Our Dear Hearts of Light. Today I trust one may bring to you the light in its great cosmic blessing of such intensity, and such glorious release that you will come with me hand in hand to the great freedom of the universe. Come. Behold the glory and the powers which life is waiting to pour forth into your hands and use, for we shall enter in today to the great divine law and its mighty action of producing manifestation in the physical octave. In your constant demands of the outer self, you have focused, drawn, and anchored the energy of your own life into the outer conditions that have become your problems and your limitations. Now as you come with me to behold the great cosmic law's action in producing manifestation in the physical octave, you must anchor your attention. To the, I am, upon your, mighty I am presence, upon us, and upon the action of the great cosmic law of energy. You may all think you know something about the action and the law of energy, but you know very, very little compared to its great cosmic power, which swings in perfect divine order under conscious directing intelligence everywhere throughout infinite space. 
all energy of life acts under the divine control and directing intelligence of the great individualized beings whose responsibility, authority, and capacity have made them the law of its action to produce cosmic manifestations such as a sun, a world, a planet, or a system of worlds. Try to enter into our understanding of your own mental processes and your own feeling world, because, my dear ones, through doubt and fear alone, both of which are selfishness, you have bound yourselves with your own energy. I am determined to release to you the understanding, and the power of those great cosmic currents of purifying violet flame to bring into your outer understanding, that which compels you to be free. You have heard the messenger many times say that all your limitations are due to body. Dis 3. Consciousness, and that means to some thought or feeling concerning what the body either wants or fears will happen to it. That is what makes mankind misuse the great energy of life. While if the outer intellect and the feeling world were trained to feel that the great supply and security to the body came wholly from the presence in answer to your conscious call and your own directing intelligence, you would feel your safety flow from your I am presence, which the outer world will never give you because it does not hold that safety. Therefore it cannot give you what it does not possess. I have particularly in mind the desire to help you in regard to supply. You may decree for a thing for eons of time. But if you want your decrees fulfilled quickly and anchored into your outer affairs as conditions that produce perfection, which fulfill the divine plan, then you must produce them according to law. Sometimes by just desiring a thing with great intensity, it draws to you its fulfillment one time, and another it fails. In producing anything constructive into outer manifestation, you must come fundamentally to the understanding that unless you create the picture clear, distinct, and definite in your own mind, you for the, I am, discourses on supply. Do not have an anchorage for the light substance which produces freedom. You do not have a cup, so to speak, into which the energy and the power of your life can concentrate with enough pressure to become the thing manifest in the outer world which you desire. Everything that comes into outer manifestation has a mental picture or you could not produce it into the physical world, nor even in the mental and feeling world. Every thought you think has a picture within it which represents that thing to you, and these thoughts are things. Feelings are things. Words are things. In producing a manifestation which you consciously design which you desire to use in the physical octave to fulfill the divine plan, or do anything which is constructive, you begin always with the mental picture. If it is hazy and indefinite, your words do not have a definite focus into which to draw your own life energy which becomes the thing manifest because anything you want manifested in your world must live by your life. You do not quite realize this, but everything you do in your physical life either you do with your own life's energy or you do not produce the result. Discourse I. 5. This is the secret of freedom, my dear ones. This is the secret of boundless supply. This is the secret of perfection and the only way and means by which the divine plan can be fulfilled absolutely a hundred percent all the time. You can positively produce the result a hundred times out of a hundred. Follow me today with clear, alert attention and undisturbed feeling. If your feeling is not undisturbed, you are compelling part of the energy of your emotional body into whatever your attention is focused upon, and you receive only a small portion of that which I, otherwise, can give you in its fullness. When you give your decrees, stop a moment before you begin, get a clear mental picture of what you want to produce, and then while you are saying the decrees, hold the mental picture and pour the love and enjoyment of the thing you desire into the energy with which you give the decree. The love in your feeling world is the magnetic attraction within your own life energy which draws the universal cosmic light substance, and condenses into the thing you decree into outer manifestation. This is just as necessary as molding a loaf of bread out of a piece of dough there isn't the slightest difference. Sixth, I am, discourses on supply. If you do not have some mental picture of the shape of your loaf of bread, you would not make a loaf of bread that shape. Your own feeling world, if it be charged with doubt or fear, is the thing that pushes away the fulfillment of your call, because both doubt and fear are repellent forces. They are not love, therefore not attractive. Love is the great cohesive power of the universe and is the vibratory action which coalesces the universal light substance into the picture of what you desire to produce quickly. The love in your feeling about a thing is the enjoyment of it before it becomes manifested. 
Therefore in the anticipation of the fulfillment of your call is the opportunity wherein lies your work, or activity, of pouring your love into the thing you are decreeing into outer use. For some people it seems quite difficult to generate the power of universal love. Now that has not anything to do with personal attachment or what the world calls, love. The love of which I speak is the great, divine, magnetic current of life from within the electronic body. This pours itself out as magnetic attraction by which it molds the universal substance into what it desires to produce into, manifestation in the outer world. 7. Mankind goes through year after year of financial limitation and lack of supply of money or things when they could have them just as easily as breathing. Mankind has lived century upon century and hundreds of lifetimes in the degradation, the limitation and pettiness of their own feelings that continually are repelling the great God blessings, which are as free for your use as the air you breathe. They are as free as God's life. But what can you produce without using the energy of God's life? Now follow me closely, because if you will, it will be your financial freedom. If you go wool gathering and you only get part of what I say, you will imagine the rest and you won't get anywhere. Even when people are working for things physically through physical channels which are ordinarily their channels of supply. Many times those channels fail because the doubt and fear, that are both discord, qualify the energy of the feeling world with the force that drives away the very thing for which they are working. If you hold clearly in your mind the sharp, clear picture of what you desire to produce for the constructive activity of fulfilling the divine plan, and pour your love upon it, you will produce it. If you hold clearly in your mind the picture. Eight the, I am, discourses on sub, from the, presence, and then you pour upon that picture your love and enjoyment of doing what the, presence, wants you to do, you will do it. You will draw into outer manifestation that which will fulfill the divine plan of the, presence. You will find as you maintain the love, harmony, and enjoyment of holding the picture of the, presence, doing a thing, it will release from its own hands into your outer use that which you require. You will find, my dear ones, supply, opportunities, and wonderful blessings coming to you from channels you never dreamed were in existence. It is because people do not do this is why many fail financially. If because you know there is supply in a certain channel, many times you think, well, those people are not using that. I need it. Or, they have more than they can use. You tie your attention to it and push your presence aside. If the attention of the outer self becomes fastened to another's supply with the determination to bring it to yourself, even though you are doing something constructive, you will fail ultimately even though you draw or pull the thing into your world temporarily. If you draw supply from a channel which is under someone else's direction. 9. And the divine plan wants that one to hold it for a certain length of time for its radiation. You have caused disorder to come into the other channel of supply and the disorder you cause there will create disorder for you. Therefore it cannot produce the fulfillment of the divine plan. Every individual has his or her own direct connection with his or her own mighty I am presence, which is life's open door of boundless supply to each one. But that which fulfills the divine plan must be the gift of life, for love alone is the fulfillment of the law of perfect manifestation in the physical octave. Therefore, unless your love goes to your, I am presence, in the enjoyment of holding the picture the, presence, wants, you do not open the door. By sending your love and asking the, presence, to produce it into your hands and use out here its own divine way by the power of its own love, you give the, presence, the open door by which its own magnetic currents can draw from many channels more than you can use in the physical octave. I am trying to help you today to let go of the little tight channels so you may open your world to the limitless channels of God's boundless opulence. So long as you keep your attention fastened to people. Ten the, I am, you will be limited. Until you lift your attention to that, I am presence, and to the ascended host who are wholly unlimited, you cannot have the gifts of the unlimited. You cannot have the divine pictures of the manifestation of the unlimited unless you come through the door of the unlimited, which your, presence, and the ascended host are with no uncertainty. Supposing you draw from certain channels in the physical octave which you feel you have the right to draw from, and you force into your world certain accumulation of wealth. Where is your certainty of keeping it? If you draw it from some other place where it ought to be, even though it seems to be an excess in that place, yet you do not know what the higher mental body of any other individual wants to do with an accumulated supply. 
you do not know whether it is charging that supply over a certain length of time for a purpose of its own. You do not have any right to draw from channels that are in the physical world the things you require in your world. Your world belongs to your presence. Your presence is its own open door into the limitless. It can draw to you in a moment that which all mankind put together cannot give you through the ages, and if I can get this clear in your minds. Discord 11. Today, you will all be free, financially and otherwise. Thank you, precious ones. Please be seated. Now supposing you take a responsibility and you desire to carry that honorably. It is constructive and is the fulfillment of the divine plan. Well, so much for the outer. But what about the fulfillment of the divine plan in regard to the supply for its upkeep or for the power which protects it? Do you not have to qualify in the fulfillment of the divine plan in those two channels just the same as you do in its outer use? You most certainly do under the divine law. But the human, through doubt and fear alone through the centuries, has anchored within its feeling world so much terrific pull upon the things of the physical octave that it has forgotten it has its own, individual open door into the limitless. Your presence was great enough to put you here. Your presence, which is great enough to supply your life and heartbeat with the energy you use every moment to breathe, do you not think it is powerful enough to bring you what you require for your food, your clothing, or anything you choose to do in the world of action? You belong to it, and the world belongs to it, but it has its own divine plan of its own relationship to the rest of the world. 12. I am, discourses on supply. So until you get this set correctly, precious ones, and you get your house in divine order and in right relationship to your, I am presence, everything in the outer is a continual struggle and a continual battle, when it could be a continual enjoyment of lifting all outer action. You could just as well draw these manifestations which you desire as physical things from your presence, with loving happiness as to dwell in the fear of the mental and feeling world of the outer self. Through that fear your mental and feeling world will drive you here and there and everywhere to get a pittance of existence when you could have the boundless. I shall tell you the story that this messenger used to repeat many times from the shrine platform. Through this explanation of the law, your, I am presence, and we are offering you the use of the unlimited wealth and things from the, presence, from our octave and from your own, I am presence. You are either afraid to take them or you let the outer world's old habits fasten you so tight to the outer routine, that you cannot let go long enough to receive these greater blessings. Then you are like a little boy who has his hands full of pennies and his father says, let go, sonny. Disco 13 and I will give you a handful of quarters, and he says, no, I want to hold on to these. If he does, he does not get the quarters. As long as you claw on persons or physical things for your supply, you will be limited, my dear ones. I am not criticizing or condemning anybody. This is an old race habit of fear and doubt. Today I shall cut it free from you because it is just like chewing gum. It sticks you to everything you do not want. Thank you precious ones. For just a moment, stand there. I am going to get this energy into you. Now supposing you need something in the outer. You are doing something constructive, and it is the fulfilling of the divine plan. It is your responsibility to fulfill the divine plan your presence way. Therefore, if something suddenly seems to be needed, you turn quickly to your presence and say, Beloved mighty I am presence. This is required here as the only thing to do to fulfill your divine plan. You see that I give and I demand the joyful obedience of this outer self to you. You show me the happy, joyous way of fulfilling this requirement. If what I am to use here is in the physical octave, then you bring it to me by your great love, and make me love you enough to keep the door open. Bring this to me by your love. Then if it comes from the physical octave, bless it with your love. Thank your presence and go on fulfilling its divine plan. If it is not the divine plan to draw it from the outer or it has not yet come into the outer or maybe not yet created, you say to your presence. Show me the most joyful way of obedience to you and the most powerful focus of your love to me, which brings this into my hands as you want me to have it now. Then if doubt and fear beset you, order them out of your world and say, get out of me. I belong to the love of my presence, and its love does fill me with the fulfillment of its own divine plan which brings only happiness to everyone. I challenge you to try me out for one week on that and see whether your presence knows many ways to bring you things you require, 
Things which will make you happy, things which will lift your limitations from you. Things which will let you have the freedom to go ahead and do a work with greater happiness, and yet hold it invincibly protected. This is the divine way of creation. I have charged you with my feeling of that joyous release which compels you to be supplied the way of the presence. Thank you. Won't you be seated? Thank you so much. Now please be seated. Discord. I will show you what you do to yourselves, and I am quite sure you will agree with me. What is your habit of feeling? What is the picture in your mind when you have a lot of bills to pay? You say, I have to pay these bills. Here are these bills. Do you ever stop and look at those bills and say, Beloved mighty I am presence? Pay these bills. See that they are paid through your love, and keep me so happy with your love pouring through me that whatever is necessary for me to do to pay them. I do through love, and all loves to come to me to pay them for you. You never thought about loving your bills, did you? Well, the day you do, bills won't bother you any more than the air. Of course, sometimes the air becomes contaminated, but you can change that, too. Now I want to take this element of doubt and fear out of you because, my loved ones, the money beast of the world holds its whip over mankind through doubt and fear. Why? Because through doubt and fear, it disturbs your harmony so your supply cannot come to you. Prove to me anything to the contrary. I am trying to get the whole, I am, student body to practice the picturing in the mind of the fulfillment of your calls through love. You can do it just as sure as. You exist in this universe. I am, determined to get this clear in all of your minds to help you reverse the habit of race consciousness that has bound itself to you through debt and doubt, and fear by its own selfishness. This is what takes place, because of doubt and fear, people, through their feelings, lock a small quantity of something to themselves that, if they would let it go in love and blessing and give it back to the presence in the enjoyment of fulfilling the divine plan. They would keep the stream open by which it could expand, because a thing cannot expand if you have it locked into something. This is why mankind is in these conditions today. The war beast, the money beast of the world, and the tax beast of the world hold mankind in their clutches and usurp the authority of the great Christ presence of the mighty I am by the whip of debt, doubt, fear, and lack of love, because fear is lack of love. The thing that makes individuals lock the door against their supply is because of that feeling in the physical body of what is going to happen to it if it does not get enough to eat when it is hungry, and the kind of a roof which it wants over its head or have the physical things of the world it wants which are, but temporarily loaned. Disc. 17. To it for use in the outer self. This is the thing that makes mankind slaves to the destructive forces when they could be free in the opulence of God. This is why we have given you the decree in this class, I demand and I am. Notice these two things. Your demand is the fulfillment of the cosmic law's requirement which you must demand from the great life its substance and energy into a concentrated focus in your outer use in order to set it into action and stir it into vibratory activity. Your acknowledgement, I am, is the acceptance of it. When you say, I am a thing, you accept that you, as the God life, have those qualities within you, or you have the picture of the design of the divine plan which you want fulfilled in the outer world. You have to give those two commands before you will produce a manifestation. Now if you will hold closely in your minds, when you say, I demand and I am, that it is you who is stirring the energy into action, you will accept and draw into outer manifestation the universal light substance, to fill the picture which is in your mind at the time you speak those words. You will draw it quickly or otherwise according to the amount of love and enjoyment you put into the contemplation of the picture. 18. The I am, discourses on supply. This does not mean that you can sit over here in the corner and just daydream and not move a muscle, and expect things to drop into your lap out of thin air. Why do you suppose the presence gave you a set of muscles? Why do you suppose you have nerves in the body? Why do you suppose you have an intellect with which to think? Why do you suppose you have the capacity to love if it isn't for use, divine use instead of human? I am sometimes tempted to take a class and train you to visualize and show you what a good time you could have. But the reason I hesitate is because it would become so popular that people would surge into this activity just for money, and I would not open the activity to that. It would wreck you if I did. 
I can teach you to produce manifestations. You can all have an abundance of every good thing in the outer, but if you are going to let yourselves become fastened to the powers that you are using, you will again forget the I am presence, and go the way you have gone before. I am determined this time to keep the door locked against the fascination of phenomena, against the fascination and pull of physical things. Otherwise I could take you and in a week's time let you, by your own visualized picture, your Discourse I 19. Own feeling of love to that picture, draw into the outer manifestation that which would make you so astonished, you could scarcely believe. Mankind has had these powers before and they became more entertained using the powers than they were loving the presence, or trying to fulfill its divine plan. And this time I am not going to let you endanger yourselves, so we will put the phenomena where it isn't going to hold the attention to the point where you forget the presence. The person who isn't concerned about anything except standing at attention to the presence, sending love and gratitude there, demanding that it fill the outer self, will demand that its divine plan be outpictured and everything in the outer is used only to fulfill that divine plan. As soon as you are happy not to use the things of the outer just for amusement or entertainment, or just to gratify the slightest feeling of doing as you please, then you will be content to use everything in serving the presence. You will enjoy loving the presence, and loving to give obedience to it, then obedience will not be difficult for you. It will be as natural as breathing. Until you understand this and conquer the outer feeling, precious ones, you may solve problems today, you may be able to. 20. The I am discourses on supply. Pay your bills, get a little reserve, you know, and then you begin to feel very secure on that money, and you would again, the next time that was swept away, feel that panicky feeling of fear. With the life of the creator of the universe in your heart, you would fear that the outer self was not going to eat. Now you have to one day conquer that thing. This outer self has to be put in its place and told you are not concerned whether it eats or does not eat, or whether it ever again gets what it wants. You are concerned with loving that presence and giving the obedience which enables this to become perfect out here. Precious ones, you do not know how much power you give to money until suddenly it is all swept away, and then the outer self is just panic-stricken with fear. When you lose your pocketbook, what is the feeling? I do not want you to lose it, and I do not want you to have that feeling, but why is the outer self so panicky? Because it loves the money more than it does God. Now that is the plain truth, because if you love the presence enough and something happens to the outer, you would continue to love that presence and say, mighty I am presence, forgive me for not obeying you, but you take care of me. You see that I have something as good and. Discourse I. 21. A thousand times better come to take its place, and do not let a thing but a ripple of your love be in me. That is the only thing which will make you master of the outer world. It is the only thing which will open the floodgates to the limitless to you. You have to become indifferent as to whether the outer self is always going to get everything it wants or not. When it begins to torment you with this, that, and the other thing and use up all of your energy which you need, and you do not have the time to go back to your presence, it is time to wring its neck and say, you go back there where you belong. Precious ones, I want you to be free from this thing because it will disturb you periodically until you do conquer it. You may have to go through it or not, just depending on your determination to conquer it. Supposing everything were swept away, physically speaking, in the outer that you require. So long as your presence leaves you here with your heart beating, it has a purpose and a divine plan to be fulfilled through you or it would take you into the next octave. So long as it leaves you here, it is willing to provide food, clothing, life, or whatever you require. I am determined to root out these things that have been your chains through the centuries. 22. The I am discourses on supply. And the day you take every problem and every limitation and look it in the face for what it is and say, well, I don't care if I did create you. I am the God presence of life who can dissolve you from creation because I am your master. And it won't scare you anymore. Precious ones. You would be surprised at what happens in the mental and feeling world of people that causes them to do the things that are so tragic just, because there come financial losses. Something is taken away in the outer and they are thrown into a panic just because the outer can't have its own way, and for no other reason in this world. 
What happens in a panic, a financial panic? Those of you who lived through 1929 should have many remembrances if you care to learn the lesson. People who had a great deal of money, who had the capacity to make a fortune and run a big business, when it suddenly crashed, it was of so much importance to them that they committed suicide by the dozens, jumping out of windows, etc. Why should they render that ingratitude to the presents just because they lost their fortunes and throw the temple away? Why? Because of a few dollars. That is what makes people cowards before the divine law. Discourse I. 23. Take all importance of money away. It has only as much importance as it becomes the harmonious servant of the presence to fulfill its own divine plan. People say, oh, yes, but you can't pay your bills without money. I have heard you talk like that. I have heard many sassy people say, but you have to have it. Oh. Do we? We live in our octave without it, so what about that? We don't have money in the ascended master's octave, but we have the boundless powers of life. We do not know what poverty and limitation are. We do not know what hate and condemnation are. So do you have to have it? Money is a wonderful tool, a wonderful friend, a wonderful blessing if it fulfills the divine plan and does not make you fear and doubt, if it does not become your master. But if you use it as a whip over others, the day will come when you whip yourself with your own agony until life, the greater life, takes mercy on you and illumines to you and shows you what you do to yourself. Now, I am, determined to help the, I am, student body be cut free from the mass race consciousness of doubt and fear, and money is one of the easiest channels by which, that holds its whip over the outer self. But, precious ones, you must, if you are going to. 24 The, I am, discourses on supply. Reach mastery, if you are going to fulfill the divine plan, your, presence, must be your master through the outer self. And if anything or anybody on this earth has power to disturb you, for the time being you have turned your back on your own master, your own life from your presence. I am determined to clear away as much as you will let me of the mass race consciousness of doubt and fear and lack, because these are all concerned with the body. Everything that is of doubt or fear or lack is all body consciousness, something concerning the desires of the atomic structure and the mental and feeling world to have its own way and do as it pleases in the outer. Now, I am, determined to take that away from you and replace it by this great love to the, presence, the great enjoyment of fulfilling its divine plan and the enjoyment of giving it obedience. Then when you say to the, presence, I seem to need so much down here. If that is your way of fulfilling this divine plan, then will you see it comes to me by your love, and keep your love in me so victoriously all-powerful that I do the right thing with it. See I keep my door open by which it can come to me from the channel that you choose. If you do not do this, precious ones, you will have more and more and more struggle from which you could be so easily free. Discourse I. 25. The sun does not struggle when it spreads to whole systems of worlds. It stands serene above all and shines its light and gives its life and enjoys its manifestations of perfection. And you are the sun of your universe. If you are not the sun of happiness and love to your world, your world will be filled with shadows and distortion, and it does not need to be, because that is not the divine way of God's mighty plan for you. Oh, precious ones, these things have come about only because mankind has fastened the attention to the misery, so to speak, of creation and manifestation in the physical octave instead of the great, loving enjoyment and gratitude for the great God gift of life. People do not feel, precious ones, they feel no compunction of conscience at all when they become angry, irritated or rebellious, deceitful or arrogant. Why, it does not even occur to them that they are dishonoring God. Yet every discordant thought, feeling, and spoken word is dishonor to God's life, and yet the outer self has become so arrogant, it thinks it has a right to send out anything it pleases and does not have to pay the penalty. Of course, the only person who gets fooled is the outer self so it ties itself in chains and cries away its own misery century after century until. 26 The, I am, discourses on supply. The great love of life in some ascended master pours the light which gently raises the attention to the point where the, presence, can be assured that the outer self can understand where the pathway of life is and who supplies this universe with every good thing. I want the, I am, student body free from debt. 
I want the, I am, student body joyous in taking the greater responsibilities that are soon to be yours. I want the, I am, student body to be so clear-headed, so balanced, so joyous, and so anchored in the love of that, presence, that nothing can sway you or cause you to doubt or fear or become depressed, because you are simply handling a greater responsibility that contains greater blessings for you. Why, it is a privilege to give to that, presence. Your happiness grows greater as you do. You cannot give to God and have unhappiness as a return. That is unthinkable. How could you give to the source who gives you life and have anything come back to you but greater love and blessings? So it is a privilege to give back to that, presence. The only thing that punishes you is when you think the outer is more important than that, presence. Now let us take something that you want to do. Each of you has something you want to do. Discourse I. 27. Personally, some service you wish to render or something you would like to do for the nation. If you have the desire to do something constructive, pour your love to the presence. Visualize that done in its completeness. Pour your love and your enjoyment or anticipation upon it, and then issue your decree. I demand this come forth to fulfill the divine plan, and I am, that divine plan fulfilled in the greatest enjoyment of God's love which is in all creation. Had you ever thought of just enjoying God's love? Well, you should. You think you enjoy people and things, and what have you. Why not enjoy loving God, your mighty I am presence? As soon as you really feel that joy, in just one fragment of a second you will know its happiness is more boundless than all the whole world put together were it at your feet, and what could ever come back to you but greater love and joy from your presence? Now watch that in this work you do not lightly take the attitude that you look back to your presence, only when you need something or are in distress. If you learn to give your love to your presence, and you form the habit of enjoying associating with your presence, it will. 28 The I Am Discourses on Supply Be only a short time until there will be no veils between. And then someday when you desire to do something constructive down here and you might be uncertain as to whether it was the divine plan or not, in one wave of love to your presence, like a pathway of light, your presence, would part the veil of the atmosphere of earth and smile down upon you. It would nod its head if it were all right, and if it were not, it would simply signal to you, no. And you would never again make another mistake. That is what the mighty Arcturus means when he said, it is my responsibility to unite the unfed flame in the heart with the sevenfold flame in the forehead, and when the two become one, you never make a mistake again. For then you see your presence, consciously and at will whenever you need its assistance and illumination in the physical affairs of mankind. Then would you know the cause and effect of a condition, and you would have enough knowledge about it to govern the outer self accordingly, so it would not become entangled in things that later on cause distress. I am still tempted to try something with you. Thank you so much, precious ones. Please be seated a moment. Did. Discourse I. 29. You understand the power in your visualizing faculty and knew what magnetic, cosmic magnetic power is in your love to the picture you would hold, precious ones, you could not keep from seeing us. Does that mean anything to you or not? Thank you so much. Now please remain seated the rest of the afternoon. Follow me closely. I am having a very good time this afternoon. Supposing you spend some time each day visualizing yourselves as you desire to be, looking like your higher mental bodies, visualizing the outer self giving the loving cooperation and obedience to the presence which you are required to give. Enjoying the fulfillment of the presence divine plan for you in your outer activities. If you love to do that for a while, you would be amazed how soon you would become like that. If your purses need replenishing and you would enjoy visualizing what you require within your own purse coming from the hand of your presence, not from your paycheck, not from your bonds invested, not from your money in the bank. But from the hand of your presence, who loves you enough to give you your own life, you would see come into your purse or pockets what you desire, the actual. 30 The I Am Discourses on Supply bills of that which you wish to use. And you just say to your presence, give me this which seems to be required in the outer or something better your way, or changing it so that only the victory of your love exists in me and my world, and give me the freedom of your boundless supply. 
then visualize yourselves enjoying the freedom, anticipating and enjoying in your own mental and feeling realm the use of the perfect thing you desire. Now the law of creation is this, the visualizing faculty of the mind is the scissors of the mind cutting this universal substance into the pattern of the picture you hold, in the mind. Now that picture is cut in the universe by your mental picture. Your love for that picture is the magnetic attraction which draws it into outer physical manifestation. Then when you speak the words, I demand and I command this to come into the outer, and I am now its visible, tangible presence in my hands and use, fulfilling the divine plan the ascended master's way, well then. Your acknowledgement spoken into the ethers of earth would become like a dazzling sun around you, and there would come to that sun the beings of nature or the assisting ones of the angelic host or the ascended masters who might be watching your Discourse I 31 Activity. They would give to you their assistance to make that thing a physical condition or manifestation for you. You can never in all eternity get away from your great creative power. Every moment of eternity, waking or sleeping, you are creating something, and you might just as well definitely select what produces perfection as to go on in the haphazard manner accepting the feelings, that are in the mass feelings of mankind of their limitations and distress. And go down into degradation. We are the boundless realm of perfection. We are not limited, and there is no law in the universe which prevents us flooding you with anything, and everything good when this obedience is given first to the presence. Do you remember my experience in Los Angeles when the financial struggle seemed great, and I had wanted to do so much for my family and I wanted so much to go to the retreat of the ascended masters, and the old human kept saying, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. You are a failure. You are discouraged and you just aren't making a go of things. The day I turned on that thing in Los Angeles and said, you are not going to scare me anymore. I shall return to this city victorious. And I did. Applause. 32 The I Am Discourses on Supply. Audience rising, thank you, precious ones. Please be seated. When I turned and took away from that human thing some of its authority, from that hour I gave all authority to my presence, and today I stand forth the victory of its perfection. And I could not be that victory until I took everything away from that human. So it is with everyone else. Oh, do not envy anybody else regardless of what they have. The presence has its own way and means, and the open door of giving you the boundless, and you are not dependent on human beings. Oh, my dear ones, it is pitiful the way people can be thrown into panic if they think their money supply is going to be cut off, and may I say, very few stand and face that presence without a quiver and are indifferent whether the body eats or not. Whether the body gets what it wants or does not, and are absolutely unconcerned about the body, but just loving that presence, and getting the enjoyment of the connection between without interruption. Once the presence gives you the picture and you send your love to it and you enjoy the anticipation of the fulfillment of that picture, then ask the presence what it wants you to do in the physical octave in the way of physical service in order for that to become an outer manifestation for. Discourse I. 33. You. Then you will give intelligent cooperation with your presence and fulfill the divine plan, and you will enjoy the thing you love so well. There is no other way to give obedience to the law and produce these manifestations which give you unlimited freedom in a world, that is bound by its own fear, its own doubt, its own money grab, and its own selfish channels of life everywhere. Precious ones, do you not see, if you live close enough to that presence, it knows ahead what you are going to require, and it will have it all ready, waiting for you, when it knows you will never be scared again or forced to do anything by that outer feeling of doubt and fear or uncertainty. If you find yourselves fearing or being uncertain about something, turn on that like you would a rattlesnake and demand the blue lightning of cosmic purity of the All Christ to shatter that feeling, and compel the love to your presence, which is your freedom. There is no other way of permanent mastery over this world. Why, the Master Jesus in some of his experiences sometimes had to hold on with every atom of his being before the light broke, which absolutely cut away the human that had sought to interfere with him. So it is with everyone on the path. 34 The I Am Discourses on Supply 
now if you require certain things in order to satisfy your obligations, well, take time enough to visualize the hand of the presence, giving you what you require to fulfill those obligations. Then pour your love on it, and as it passes into the outer world's use, it will be a messenger of love to a world darkened with its own hate. Wherever your love goes, it will consume that hate. Then you will have nothing to fear. You can have all the love of your presence, which you want. You can generate as much as you desire to compel these conditions to change in the outer. But remember, if you are going to fulfill the divine plan, you must keep the balance to life. You cannot borrow here and you cannot borrow there and somewhere else, then forget to pay it back and expect your presence to open the floodgates to the boundless. Now that is a mistaken idea. People think, well, God owns everything in the universe. These people have more than they can use, and it does not make any difference whether I pay it back or not. That thing is going out of this activity. People who have that consciousness will be dismissed because I am not going to put up with it. Precious ones, go ahead and demand what you need to pay your bills on time, but do not. Discourse I. 35. Feel safer with the money in your pocket than you do with the love of your presence in your heart. The minute you turn on that human and say, you are not going to scare me anymore, and you have no power in my world. I am, the world of my presence, boundless opulence, you will see whether I mean what I say today or not. You will begin to acknowledge that you are the world of your presence, boundless opulence ahead of time which gives you unconditional freedom to act when it is required, and you will have what the rest of the world cannot attain until they give the same obedience. Precious ones. Mankind to some more or less degree is doing this thing by holding the picture without the concentration they require in order to get the manifestations quickly. They are doing so much of it on the wrong side of life that they are binding themselves deeper and deeper. You let someone come in and discourage your manifestations. Everybody gets together and discusses it and discourages them. They all hold the mental picture. Then more and more of the same thing occurs. But when someone comes in with a thrill of happiness, then a miracle occurs. The majority of people's feelings say, oh, I don't believe that. It sounds like a lot of imagination. So they stay in their chains. 36th, I am, discourses on supply. Precious ones, you do not realize one millionth part of the power that is in your own visualizing faculty. And when you unite that with your desire, which is your love, and you give it to your presence and demand it fulfill its divine plan, and that your joy is the joy of your presence. Then the presence says, well. At last we have things in the right relationship. Now let's go. Precious ones, there isn't a thing in the universe which is good which your presence doesn't want you to have. There isn't a thing you cannot have so long as it fulfills the divine plan of your presence. So as you pour your love to it and hold the harmony and give obedience, the universe is yours to fill with beauty, perfection, and enjoyment. But you cannot pull people and things through your human desires and load yourselves up with that sort of energy and have the perfection of the presence, because it won't come. You know, they have always illustrated Atlas carrying the world on his shoulders. It just happens that that represents mankind carrying their own human creation, and they are all bowed down with its weight. I would take that away from you and lift you to the enjoyment of seeing your presence. When you ask the presence to. Discourse I. 37. Give you something, visualize it coming from the hand of your presence, and then just enjoy the anticipation of what great happiness would be yours if your presence, visible to your physical sight, would reach down and give you the thing. Wouldn't you be happy? Thank you so much. Wouldn't you enjoy the anticipation of that instead of fearing your presence wouldn't let you have enough to pay your bills? Your presence hasn't anything that it will not let you have, nothing. That idea is your own creation, your own idea. See? Now you know why we offer you our ascended master consciousness, because your own ideas of doubt and fear and limitation and the human way of doing things down here are not of any account, are they? You get rid of one problem and twenty more stare you in the face. You pay one set of bills today, then you go out and make a whole lot more, and the next month you may have twice as many. Be careful, my dear ones, 
that you love your presence enough to visualize your presence running your affairs, your presence controlling things, because when your presence is fulfilling its divine plan, when it does one thing well, it does not replace it by 20 things that are disturbing. 38. The I Am Discourses on Supply do not let any suggestion come to your minds, oh well, I have lost that opportunity, I just can't make any further effort. Don't let those things come in. You have to make effort. Whose human creation can say what your presence can do for you? Who can say what I might do for you in a moment when your presence and your love to that presence is enjoying the fulfillment of the divine plan? Who are you to say what the presence will give you through me? And if you visualize us enough standing on this platform, giving your love and obedience to your presence, who are you to say that the hour won't come when that picture would become a reality in your outer experience? Now I will give you another part of my secret. When the outer self reports imperfection or limitation or discouraging conditions or things that seem to be wrong, jump on it with both feet and say, you don't know what you are talking about. Get into the heart of my presence. Go there. Get some perfection and bring it to me. And you will break that thing. Simply turn on that and say, well, if you don't know enough to give me perfection, go to my presence and get some. But don't you. Discourse I. 39. Report to me anything less than the fulfillment of the divine plan of my presence. Go there and get what is required to produce perfection here. In this way you will soon control your attention. You will soon draw forth a power of concentration which will absolutely shatter your limitations and repel from you disturbing forces. When you find your bills or anything else that seems to throw over you a sense of discouragement, doubt or fear, uncertainty or depression, you take that thing and say, oh h, no you don't. You are not my master. You are not of any consequence against my God, my presence. I withdraw all energy from you, and I give it to my presence, to qualify it with the perfection which makes me its victory here in the physical octave, and this boundless supply is mine to produce perfection through the world and fulfill the divine plan which sets my fellow man free. And you shall not remain in my world. My dear ones, you have to order these things out. You have gone out and lassoed them into you through your attention. You have to lasso and chase them out or burn them up in the violet flame but take all their authority away, all that causes doubt, fear, and selfishness in your world. 40 The I Am Discourses on Supply If you do not take it away from them, they will take everything away from you. Precious ones, supposing, I don't say this is coming, and we are doing everything to prevent it, but just supposing everything in the outer world would suddenly be reordered. Then what? Has your presence moved away from you? Has anybody taken it out of existence? You still use its life, and as long as you are using its life, you are tied to it. So in that light ray, the substance can be condensed into any picture which it desires to produce out here as a manifested thing. This is the way you came into being, and after all, you are life. Precious ones, today if you want magnificent temples, if you want your wonderful schools, if you want the boundless supply of anything and everything to do this to render service in this, I am activity and do what is required to let this greater power go forth, then visualize it. Acknowledge it. Love it. Anticipate it. Demand it. Acknowledge it as, I am its presence in full command and the, mighty I am presence, sustains and expands it in conscious cosmic victory forever. And the ascended ones will take you by the hand. And if opportunity seems not to be, say, well, I demand the opportunity from my, presence. Discourse I. 41. Come to me. I demand the hand of my presence, make the opportunity for me, and open the door by which this can be done as the ascended masters or as the presence desire to do it now. Mankind has to be re-educated, precious ones, to do things God's way. The outer human has been so satisfied all these years and all these centuries that it knew how to do everything better than God that it has pushed the God presence aside until it had forgotten the presence ever existed until the beloved Saint Germain educated mankind of where it is. What it is, and how you can call its power into the physical octave at your conscious command. So today you are free, my loved ones. Set your mental picture. 
it does not make any difference how great it is, how all-powerful it is, go on and hold it. Love it. Acknowledge it. Command it into the physical octave to fulfill the Ascended Master's divine plan, and anything that interferes with that, push it aside and go on your way like the wind, and you shall have legions come forth to manifest everything you desire. Mankind will stand aghast at your success and accomplishment, and if there seems not to be an opportunity, make one and say, I am, the boundless opportunities required here. But mow down everything that any longer casts. 42 The, I am, discourses on supply. Limitations upon God's universe. You are God's life and God's energy and God's directing intelligence. If you use it according to the great law of creation, you cannot help but have success and perfection and joy and boundless supply to go forward and do that which the rest of mankind consider miracles, but which, after all, is but the natural action of a great law which all must someday learn to operate consciously before they are free. Oh, could you see sometimes, precious ones, as we see life streams come over who have been so fastened to their own ideas of physical power, could you see the pitiful state they are in when they are shorn of the things of this world? It is pitiful to behold. The beloved Saint Germain told the messengers in the early days, myself, the beloved Donald, and this messenger, that in 1887 they established a school where they took people of great wealth who had misused it, and when they came over after leaving the body, they were shown what the effects were. They were shown how they could be taught to undo the wrong, and by accepting the knowledge and going through the discipline, they could correct the wrong and help to turn and balance the wrong by obedience to the law. They were given a chance to either accept or discourse I. 43. Refuse, and they have all accepted. Not one ever refused when they were shown the aftereffect of their own misuse of God's divine gifts. So it must have been rather effective. So today, if you will let me, we will go on an exploration tour of association with your presence, holding clearly the visualization of its own blessed self before the mind, pouring your love to that presence. Then whatever you seem to require in the outer, take time enough to visualize it clearly, pour your love and blessing upon it, ask the presence to bring that into outer fulfillment, and be still long enough to let it connect with the energy of the outer self and perhaps quicker than you dream, it will become a thing manifested in your outer experience to set you free more quickly. Then that gives you freedom to help others do the same. You must gain the mastery over your own visualizing faculty. You must become its master, and you must use its energy in accordance with obedience to the divine plan. Then pouring your love upon it, you become the director of circumstance. The director of circumstance, my dear ones, is your divine destiny but it can only be accomplished through love and kindness and uninterrupted harmony. 44 The, I am, discourses on supply. A great many people do well, quite well, from time to time, but they do not get the manifestations as quickly as they should because the harmony is interrupted periodically. The harmony must be maintained without interruption over a certain period of time in order to let the energy accumulate and concentrate to the place where it fulfills the decree more quickly. You know, it is like a frog in the well. You maintain harmony for a few hours or days, then you go off the beam and raise, Ned, because you don't get your own way. Then you have to start and build all over again until the form is built to the place where it will give you its blessing. So as you enter into the wider activities now of what the outer world is going to require from the, I am, student body, remember my words today. Do not think I have been just talking about it to amuse myself or that it is the messenger speaking. I am using the outer self, but these are my words, and these are my gifts to your life. If you want to prove whether they are real or not, I dare you to give me the obedience. I dare you to practice this. I dare you to try it out and prove it to yourselves. I challenge you to try this and see whether or not your pictures become. Discourse I. 45. Realities in the physical octave provided they are constructive and in agreement with the fulfillment of the divine plan. But you cannot hold a picture in your mind that interferes with the destiny of another individual or groups of them and then expect success, because you won't have it. The pictures in your mind must not interfere with the destiny of any other human being except to keep discord out of your world. Lift your attention to the heights. 
and you may have all that is divine in the universe come to bless you and become a physical condition for you in the physical world long, before your ascension. As we go forward in the accomplishment of much greater manifestations in the outer world, I want every moment of your time to be charged with such love and such happiness, such encouragement and such a feeling of dominion over all conditions of discord that it gives your presence, and gives us unconditional freedom to give you the boundless supply by which you can do the greater work which brings greater light to your nation, and then holds that light as the governing force until the people see it and enter into its heart and let go of their limitations. 46. The I Am Discourses on Supply So, beloved ones, you are still, my dear hearts of the light, and every time you take your determined stand against the human, I shall stand by your side, and from the inner level. I shall say the same decree for you against the human that I did on the street in Los Angeles when I turned on my own and finished it forever, I shall stand beside you when you take this stand and help you issue that command by which it shall cease its authority forever. So in the fullness of our love, I give you the scepter of power which fulfills the divine plan, and you shall know joy that the rest of the world has never experienced, and yet which makes you the master over conditions of the outer world to which the rest of mankind bow and which you can stand against and always be victorious. Now bless everybody and everything you contact with the fulfillment of the Ascended Master's divine plan, and the great victory of the love of the Presence in the power of the All Christ. Pour that forth and then demand the boundless wealth from the Presence, come into your outer use to give you unconditional freedom to go forth and accomplish quickly what otherwise might take you months to attain. Be of good cheer. I have given. Discourse I. 47. You everything which will help you. I have given you nothing that won't help you. So from today, visualize the perfection you desire. Pour your love upon it demand it, then accept it. Acknowledge it as ever manifested, and we shall show you powers that this time will hold you close to your presence, and never again allow you to become entangled with the manifestations that make you forget your source, and you again come under the control of destructive forces. You are free this hour, my precious ones, as you take me at my word and demand the outer self give the obedience with great love and joy which brings the pictures from the presence into outer manifestation in the world around you. And release their powers to set your fellow man free and give you unlimited ability to help your fellow man to the same mighty victory. We clothe you and bless you with the enjoyment of our love and the pictures of perfection without limit which come now into your outer you shall be the forerunner of the permanent golden age of the world of which you, too, are part of the builders, because you are the bearers of the light of eternity, and your destiny is the victory of perfection. Thank you, precious ones, and now be happy in the 48 The I Am Discourses on Supply Enjoyment of your new powers, new because it will be a new experience to use them. These powers are as old as life itself but you have just forgotten how much happiness is yours when you use them in the physical octave to fulfill the divine plan. Thank you, and with the greatest joy at my command shall I surge that to the student body day after day, and wherever the stand is taken to turn on the human and command it to be gone shall I shake your hand and say, I know you. For I have been there, too. May your victory be boundless. Love is without limit, and we do love you, precious ones. We do have your good at heart. We do show you the way to perfection, and there is no substitute for either your presence or its great light of life which, through love, releases every good thing to bless you, give you freedom, make you happy, and become your mastery over all that has bound you through the centuries. And from tonight I shall watch and wait and assist you every time you give me the opportunity. Thank you until we meet again. Discourse 2 Beloved Lord Moha Chohan August 22, 1950 Mount Shasta, California Beloved Ones of the Light, we come together tonight for a family conference, and I want you to feel that you are my family as well as that of the beloved Saint Germain, because his family and my family are one. And since my realm and my responsibility of the activity which I give to the earth, the power which I use to bring forth supply through the activities of nature and the beings of the elements, I want you to feel very, very close to me. The closer you can feel to me, the easier will supply come to you, because I am the authority of supply to this earth. Through the powers of nature and through the beings of the elements does that supply come to mankind. 
since that supply is the gift of my love, then love can reach me very easily. And those who? 49. 50 The, I am, discourses on supply. Wish to use that which it is my privilege to bestow can come to understand, that as they release the intense love of their own life streams by conscious command to the beings of the elements and to the powers of nature. Will they find that love returning to them carrying the gifts and the blessings, and the supply of that which they are going to require in fulfilling the great divine plan? The mighty being Virgo in the great cosmic power and authority which she is to the earth, governs the structure of earth itself and governs a great deal of the substance in mankind's bodies. But it is my responsibility and my privilege to bring forth through the powers of nature many wonderful new blessings, blessings that are ever becoming greater and greater in their great service to life, to mankind everywhere. It is also my great joy to let you know that it is one of my activities to so remold the powers of nature, and to so direct them that all that is going to be used in the future, of many things that have never yet manifested in this world, can come forth by your conscious command into your use first. Because you are the children of the light, and you belong to the legions of the light. Then those who carry the light are the first to receive of the blessings that belong to the new cycle. Discourse 2 51 There will come many wonderful, beautiful activities through the powers of nature, and the forces of the elements that shall seem to you and to mankind as if an entire new world had been created. But that is because that which comes forth to beautify the earth, that which comes forth to serve mankind in the future must carry those forms that are transcendently beautiful, and forms that blaze forth more light, because mankind are going to use more light. They are going to require more light in the activity of life upon this earth in the future. Therefore, you who are the people of the light are the first ones to whom these blessings come. And I want you to feel that we want you to have a lavish abundance of every good thing, and my dear ones, who supplies you with a lavish abundance in this world? Does not your supply come through the beings of nature and the powers and activities of the elements? Who else provides that for you? Your, beloved I am presence, can give you, direct, its own mighty supply when your powers of precipitation come forth. But until that time, your supply has to come through the avenues of nature and the use of the blessings of the beings of the elements, because the beings. 52 The, I am, discourses on supply of the elements are not the only activities within nature, and will you show me one thing on this earth that you use that does not come through those channels? Then since I am the authority and the director of those activities, and since I must design new and more beautiful manifestations for the incoming golden age of perfection, then it is perfectly natural that I would seek you as the open door through whom those gifts can come. So the closer we live to each other in that immortal love of the great Christ presence, the mighty I am in the great central sun, the closer we live together, you and I, in that daily recognition and love to the beings of the elements. Will you find their wonderful blessings coming into your hands and used by ways and means that the world considers miraculous and transcendent, and yet they are, but perfectly natural, great natural activities of the great law of life's mighty love. Your love to me will automatically draw forth my boundless love to you, and wouldn't my love contain my blessings to you? Wouldn't I love to give you all that you would love to use to fulfill the great divine plan? That would be my joy to give to you, that your joy might be full. Then as. Discourse 2. 53. You use those gifts would you bring that same joy to the beings of the elements and to the rest of mankind. So I say to you, you might consider me the guardian at the gate of the great treasure house of God's mighty universe, God's mighty love for that. Beloved I am presence. Since it is the giver of all good, since it has custodians in every realm of activity of its mighty powers and its mighty blessings, its mighty manifestations, then I say to you. I would like to feel that you are so at one with me through our great love for perfection and our love to produce perfection in this world, that I will be free to give you unlimited blessings and wealth and opulence to beautify the earth, to purify it, to illumine all things and to establish that which becomes the permanent manifestation in this world. Then will you find yourselves automatically designing those things that have never been in this world before, and yet which will bring such joy because of their sheer beauty that they will be a raising influence, and will radiate a raising energy and power of light to all who behold them. And you will come to find that beauty is one of the raising activities of our love, and you could not. 
54 The, I am, discourses on supply. Have perfection without it. We do not bring it forth to gratify any vanity or pride or anything of that sort, but just because beauty gives such happiness that you automatically love it. Now whether that beauty is within form and things, whether it is the beauty of your music or whether it is the beauty of nature, matters not. All beauty that pours forth a spiritual radiation is a raising, powerful activity to all who behold it. So from tonight, when you are calling forth supply for yourselves, your loved ones, and those under this radiation, I would remind you to call forth in the name of your, beloved I am presence, and in the name of my authority over all supply to the earth. All supply through the powers, activities of nature and the powers of the forces of the elements, that you demand the authority of my love to draw to you that which you require to produce happiness, and fulfill the great divine plan with the perfection which is intended. Some of you have called to me with very great love and devotion, and I thank you all for the blessings you have poured forth to nature of your own free will. And now it is my privilege to pour forth more blessings to you because you have loved the beings that have done my will. One day you. Discourse 2. 55. Shall see what they can bring to you just through love alone. As you pour your love to them and demand that my authority control the wealth of the world, to the freedom and purification and illumination of mankind. Then will you find the beings of the elements bringing you very real gifts that will delight you greatly and will make your pathway easy and wonderful, and beautiful as your heart's desire. Just send your love to the beings of the elements who serve me, to the powers of nature who do my will, and bless them and bless them and bless them. And then ask them to bring to you the wealth and the boundless supply that fulfills my divine plan, and let me show you what my divine plan for you contains to make you happy. Oh, you will never find the happiness you crave anywhere, my loved ones, except in the heart of your own, God presence, the, mighty I am, and the ascended master's octave and that great use of life's great, great love. Love can call forth from within the very structure of the earth you tread upon, blessings, wonders, glories, and supply that you do not even know exist. Love to the beings of the elements can draw to you their protection when all about you is destruction. 56 The, I am, discourses on supply. Love to the beings of the elements will draw to you mighty friends whose power is without limit. And while the beings of the elements are some of the powers of nature, they are not by any means all. When you call forth your love and charge it to the powers of nature, send forth that love to the fulfillment of the great divine plan through those channels, and you will find as your love blesses the powers of nature. Will you find those powers automatically pouring back to you many of my blessings? And may I say to you, because I am the authority of those gifts to the earth, when you pour forth love, that is one thing, and it will always be answered from our octave and from the beings of nature, the forces of the elements, but when I pour forth my love to you and to those beings who serve me, my love will reveal the things that are hidden from the mass of mankind. I have a certain action of the all-seeing eye of God in connection with the mighty Cyclopea, therefore, I see ahead from age to age the beauties that I may bring forth through the powers of nature. I see ahead also what mankind's love would do to the beings of the elements, therefore, when all of us plead with you all to pour forth. Discourse 2 57 More and more love and kindness and command the presence of the victorious Christ to come forth with limitless blessings to the powers of nature and the beings of the elements. As you pour forth that living light will you find light revealing to you from within itself its more magnificent blessings. And this all has to do with the fulfillment of your calls for supply. Your requirements for supply should be very great if you are to render a great service to the earth. But the supply which you are going to require to fulfill the great divine plan may require many forms, many avenues of supply, may require the assistance of many beings to bring you that supply. And more than that, it may require the assistance of many individuals or beings of nature to use that supply to fulfill the divine plan. You might think you have all this. And true, you have. But how are you going to use it alone? Is your physical body capable of moving great masses of stone or wood, or any one particular kind of substance? Supposing you had all of this supply of everything you'll ever require to build as your heart's desire and do these things, will you not require the assistance of the beings of the elements, of the powers of? 58 The, I am, discourses on supply. Nature.
of the principles that the ascended masters release and direct into your construction of physical machinery, and other construction work in the physical world? Will you not require the assistance of other human beings? You will require the cooperation and the harmonious activity and love of the beings of the elements. You would want all the activities of the elements to come to you at the right time, and manifest the right activity to coordinate and to protect that which you are calling forth. And in your use of that, you will use sometimes one element, sometimes another, and you want it at the right time and in the right place. Water is a blessing, but too much of it in one place is not, and so with fire, air, earth, so with the beings of the elements, so with the blessings of nature. You see, when you call forth boundless supply, wealth of every description to give you unlimited freedom to build as your heart's desire and to fulfill the great divine plan, you're going to need the assistance of other beings than yourselves. And that means you will want their assistance through love. And if you call forth my authority of the love which I direct through the powers of nature and the beings of the elements, then will you have. Discourse 2. 59. Raised up to your assistance many beings that you do not live upon the earth, beings whom your intellect does not even yet know live. So I am the authority to draw together, whenever you are using the supply which comes under the direction of my activity, I know what you will need. I know who can assist you best. I know what balance you will have to maintain in the activities of the elements if you're going to produce the perfection you desire. And all of that comes under my control. So if you should send love to me, it won't be wasted. Really, it won't. Your love to me will draw back to you infinitely greater love. Your love to the beings of the elements whom I direct will draw back to you their love and their gifts. Your love to the powers of nature will draw back to you health and strength and blessing and beauty that will bring you boundless joy. And my love will hold all in perfect balance, in the perfect place, to be used at the right time to produce perfection. Isn't it wonderful? Do you know what I mean tonight? Thank you, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please? Now I want to show you how quickly the beings of nature and the forces of the elements will. 60 The, I am, discourses on supply. Respond to your love, and I want to give you just a little glimpse, perhaps quite far ahead, but still, not too far, into that which you can call forth into outer manifestation to begin the release of this greater beauty and perfection. You know already you have certain substances which are self-luminous. You call them fluorescent. You have certain substances that emit or radiate a soft light in the dark. Why could you not call forth through love the luminosity of a tree in the forest? Why could you not call forth the light on your pathway when there seems to be the darkness of evening? Why could you not call forth light into many kinds of substance to make them serve you in a very much more wonderful way? Why could you not call forth light that repels all unnecessary substance and keeps it in its own divine place in perfect balance? You can. We do. And if we can, so can you. We are life. You are life. Your life and our life, the life in the beings of the elements, the life in the powers of nature, that life is one life. Therefore, my dear ones, I want you to think deeply upon the wealth, the abundance, the supply for which you are calling, and always demand that it produce such perfection, and whatever supply you have releases such victory of cosmic Christ. Discourse 2 61 Love in your use of it that no matter where you send it in the commercial world or in your own private use or to beautify the planet, wherever you send it forth, command it to become a being of immortal love and light that blesses with love everything it contacts. What think you would be the force acting from our octave in the commercial world, in the money channels of the world? If every human being who touched a piece of money were to charge the light and love of immortal purity into that and command it to go forth as a being to produce the happiness and perfection of the divine plan's fulfillment. You would find, as you say, for the destructive forces, it would be, too hot to handle. We could make it so. And you have the power to do that, precious ones. You all have the power to track dirt in from outside, we call it dirt, but it's just Virgo substance, and bring it into a nice, clean room where it isn't wanted. You all have the power to do that. You know, little folks many times have the propensity and the ability to put their fingers on mirrors and so on, 
Put substance where it doesn't belong. Even a little tiny child has that ability to move substance where it doesn't belong and. 62 The, I am, discourses on supply. To change, therefore, its effect upon life. Well, so have you. You have the right to draw forth the substance of our light into what you call money or the physical wealth of your world, and pour into that the qualities that make it luminous with our love. And should there be any objection to that? It surely can stand it, and the beings of nature would feel a great release. I'm asking you to think deeply tonight on the channels of supply and the things you use, that you may bless them with more of my authority and love, and power to command them to become self-luminous and imperishable in the perfection they produce for you. Were you to just form the habit of charging whatever comes under your direction with the Ascended Master's immortal love and purity and happiness that would make itself luminous, you would be amazed at what would occur. And some of it would attach itself to you, and your garments, too, could begin to show forth its blessing. Try it. If you have the ability to bring substance of the earth into a room and do what you please with it, don't you? By exactly the same use of life, don't you have the ability to bring the substance from our octave into the things in the room to make? Discourse 2 63 Them luminous? Oh yes you do. I'm never going to accept anything else. I do, and I'm life. Therefore you can do it, too, because you're life, and there's only one life, and that's God's life. You have all had the experience during the dictation, or sometimes with love and devotion to the presence, of drawing the substance that makes your hands feel smooth and wonderful. You drew that substance from our octave into your world, and if you had continued perhaps a little longer with a definite command that it be self-luminous, it would become so. You just don't do it, that's all. Were you to command everything to be self-luminous that produces happiness and perfection and purity in your world, it would be so. So long as no discord is imposed upon it, it will take your command and return to you that which you give to it. The world of the universe around you is doing this all the time. Life is constantly returning to you the energy you have sent out to life with exactly the same qualities that you sent it out. So if you form the habit of blessing all supply with the love and authority which I am to the earth, and with the love and authority which your own, beloved presence of the I am is to life everywhere, commanding it to send forth its quality of love. 64 The I am discourses on supply. That illumines all substance and makes it a joy to all life because of the love and light which you charge into it, if you send that forth, wave after wave, if you form the habit of just flooding it forth, my dear ones. You could no more escape the return than you could cease to exist. I'm taking you into the fairyland of God's love tonight, and I deal with it through the powers of nature, because my love brings forth boundless designs that are always beautiful and always carry happiness to life. From the infinitely small to the infinitely great, from the tiny piece of moss to your giant redwoods does my love flow forth, and my blessing to life and to substance carry the design of my heart. So can it be with you? You just haven't tried it, that's all. You might think, oh, well, we have so many things to do. All the masters tell us so much. How can we do it all? You'd be surprised. Love can do anything, and love can do everything. There are ways and means of doing these things that we know, and we will teach you, your presence will teach you, and the world in its need will teach you to draw forth, because love, in producing that, will keep you happy and give you a happiness nothing else can bestow. Discourse 2 65 So from tonight may you go forward with the greatest joy you've ever known, and in anything and everything you wish drawn forth, just charge it with such intense love and purity and light of the victorious Christ, of my authority to the earth, that it brings its blessings without limit. And then will you feel what miracles mean to life. Then will you know how to use God's ways of producing these manifestations uninterrupted by mankind's discord. And may I congratulate all the precious ones in your presentations that are coming. And the Master Jesus wants me to convey to you his love and gratitude for your devotion, your reverence, and your sincerity. Know always it will draw back to you his boundless gifts and love and power as the victorious Christ which he now is. May you feel its boundless power the next few days, and may the harmony and the joy you've had through your music ever intensify and increase. Until it enables you to go forward, 
and do these more magnificent things in the outer activities of life and produce that which will be as irresistible to mankind as the power of the physical sun is to the earth. After all, the love of which we speak, which is the victorious Christ, is the great motive power of. 66 The, I am, discourses on supply. Existence, and it is that which draws forth anywhere and everywhere whatever beautifies, purifies, perfects, and makes self luminous and eternally happy. Who can refuse it? Who can resist it when they are moving in the outer world that tortures them with its distress? It is my joy to bring happiness, and my love to the powers of nature ever expands its beauty, and I do it to give it to you. So as you learn to use these powers, you too will enjoy these greater manifestations in the use of the powers of life that never cease their ever-expanding wonders throughout creation. Tonight, come with me into the treasure house of my heart's love, and let us draw into outer action the supply you are going to require. But which may just as well manifest beauty, and luminosity and wonderful power as to just manifest the few qualities that you think you need in any special manifestation that assists you temporarily. I wish you to become aware of all that the love which I have for the beings of the elements and the powers of nature can do to serve you. And I command them to be your ascended master friends of the light, come to your assistance, offer you their gifts, stand beside you and to help you, that love, their love and your love. Discourse 2 67 And my love, may unite to bring into outer manifestation these things that are to become permanent throughout the earth. So now when you call for supply and you say, keep the money rolling in, you might just as well say, keep my love and my light in that money rolling in, until it does for you that which fulfills your every heart's desire. Boundless wealth, and as the mighty Saint Germain told you, God's great opulence, the opulence of God's will, is the opulence of goodwill to all life. And goodwill carries the love of the light. Then if you love to charge everything with the substance of light from our octave, you will find it always producing happiness and beauty and perfection for you. Then will you know that the light and the love and the supply of the mighty I am presence never, never, never can fail. So enter in with us tonight to the use of the limitless love and light that spreads its substance over all that you use, all that you contact. Until its great harmonizing presence purifies everything, and gives you that which always brings joy and greater joy until you too will love to give as those beings do and as we do. And then even though you be a group set apart, still will you be happy in. 68 The, I am, discourses on supply. Giving that love that teaches the rest of mankind to obey the law, until love reigns everywhere supreme, in all and through all and over all, with light that is limitless and beauty that is eternal and happiness that forever expands. May I clothe you in its substance tonight, and you feel its flame ever lifting you with enthusiasm and happiness and conscious power to produce these things that fulfill the divine plan, and take you forward to the eternal freedom of the mighty heart of the blessed Saint Germain. Until that hour when you stand ascended with us. May your love and your light be the magnet that draws the rest of mankind up and out of the darkness, and at the same time draws down into your outer use the boundless supply which we love to give, which you will love to use, and which will lift all in its use in fulfilling the great divine plan. Then will you know that God's heart is your home, and never again will you want to be anywhere else. I clothe you in its joy tonight, and may its boundless wealth of every description bring you the light that illumines all things and makes you invincibly strong in its perfect use. Thank you with all my heart tonight. Cassette 65082 Discourse 3 Beloved Godfra September 5, 1950 Oakland, California Dear Hearts of Oakland, once again we meet with the joy which only love can bring. And I want you to feel so encouraged tonight, for those of you under this radiation who do give us your attention each day cause to arise from the planet Earth a light and a love, that is welcomed into our octave and on which we may return to you and to your nation and to the world the ever-expanding stream of that great power of the sacred fire, which will as surely possess the earth as that the earth exists. While changes will come, and while that which is destructive must be leashed and bound and purified, yet that which is reaching to the heights for greater light and power shall also manifest its greater victory here. So be of good. 69. 70 The, I am, discourses on supply. Cheer regardless of outer world appearances. We long so much, precious ones, to give you all of everything you require in one great wave of our love, 
but the great cosmic law does not permit that, because I am quite sure you would feel yourselves almost overwhelmed. You see, we can love so much more than you can, that if we were to flood that to you without any reservation, I'm sure you would wonder what was occurring. You can only absorb so much at one time. And we have to temper that to that which you are able to receive, because what you receive you must use from day to day, for there is no use placing in your world the tremendous love from our octave, unless you are going to release it in dynamic action into the atmosphere of earth. And you might think, well, if you give it to us, it would keep acting. Yes, if you let it go forth. But if we gave you the power of our love and you didn't let it go into outer service to the rest of life, it would but store up in your world, and we wouldn't be able to give you any more until you use what you have. So you see, you may have all the power in the universe, provided you use it, for all these great blessings and gifts of life are given to. Discourse 3 71 You for use and unless you do use them in outer, dynamic service, it would be useless for the law to bring them into your atmosphere and into your world just to remain inactive. These great powers of life which we use in our octave abide everywhere within life, but they lie quiescent, and unless you set them into dynamic action by conscious command, they would forever remain quiet. So it does take your direct call to us, and then after we answer you, it takes your conscious recognition that we have given the gift that it is within and around you, and that you, by command. Let it go forth or command it into outer action to produce what you require in fulfilling the great divine plan. So try to feel that everything we give you is for use in your world, and the more you use it, the more we can give you. And if you just put it away in the closet, so to speak, you might have a storehouse full of it, but if you required it and you didn't use it, it wouldn't be our fault. Tonight I want you to feel that you may come just as close to us as you want to, and you may have just as much of our power of victory as you can use from day to day, from hour to hour, from. 72 The, I am, discourses on supply. Moment to moment. Regardless of what your affairs require, you may have always a thousand times more than you can ever use, provided you keep the door open so it may surge into outer action and it takes your application, your call, to make it act in the physical octave for you, because many times there stands around you, dear hearts, not only the power and the energy of our love, but many times there stands the supply from our octave almost touching you. Therefore, in order to help your world come into divine order that you may be a powerhouse to assist others, try to command that your, beloved I am presence, takes the outer self in hand and reminds it to draw our powers into outer, dynamic use for the freedom of all. Then you might suddenly find yourselves doing things you have never done before and didn't really know you could do, until the need or the requirement called that forth into outer action in some service which you render to life. And since obedience is the first law of manifestation, try to remember that the first demand of the cosmic law is your own love to your, beloved mighty I am presence. That opens the door into its great octave of power and supply. Then as your love reaches into. Discourse 3 73. The heart of your presence on the return current begins to flow the blessings and gifts from its own realm of activity. Therefore when you say, my beloved I am presence, I demand the immortal victory of yourself be made alive in me, and be the flame that blazes through me and compels victory everywhere in the physical octave, wherever I move, as you say that to your presence. We can enfold you then in many of our powers and you move among mankind, and many times we can do for others that which you do not even know is going on. We may render a service through the radiation or just the happiness in your own feeling of the love from your presence and the closeness to it. As you demand its powers come into outer action, there goes on from our octave service to many that you do not even know, and yet we are doing that through the radiation of the light in and around you which flows forth from your presence. It is that light that forms the open door by which we may reach into the physical octave into many places and pour assistance, because your light is like a bridge on which our service to life, our blessing, may come into many, many channels as you are busy with your outer world activities. 74 The, I am, discourses on supply. You see, there is a twofold action of life going on constantly. There is that which is going from your presence into outer manifestation concerning your individual world and your service back to life. And then there is our service going on through your radiation into the locality of the nation, 
which affects the many that you do not even know, and yet if you do not let that light come through you and radiate forth so we can pour our love and our activity to the mass, then they would not receive the help. You might ask, well, since we are all powerful, why can we not help the mass? Because, my dear ones, there must be an upreaching of some of the unascended of mankind in a nation before there is the connection through that permits the cosmic law, to use its greater powers to affect the many. Unless the individual expands his or her own light by an adoration or a desire to reach up to that which is greater than itself, how could the great cosmic law draw you into greater power and perfection if you were not yet ready to come? You see, the initial desire to reach up for greater perfection must come from within each one's own life stream. That is the natural, raising, ever-lifting process within life itself when it is allowed to act. Discourse 3 75 Without interference or interruption. Therefore, every time you send your love to your own, I am presence, it draws back more love into the physical octave, and that naturally is an expansion of the perfection of your own world. And it is on that return love from your presence, that we move into outer action cosmic powers to assist the whole mass of the people of a nation or of the world. So every, I am, student is like a beacon light, and wherever your light moves, we can pour our light to enfold yours, to strengthen the magnetic pull on the mass of mankind until they are gradually lifted out of the frightful conditions in which they are now caught. So we do appreciate every wave of love that you send to your presence or that comes to us. We will pour back, always, infinitely more than you can give. And try to feel that when you have sent your love to the presence, and it has returned its love to you, and then you know automatically when you think of us, our love enfolds you, try to feel that we have given you a gift in your world. And from then on, you may reach in and use that love in the physical octave to do what you will, for our love is absolutely master over everything in this world. 76 The I Am Discourses on Supply you little dream what the mighty victory did tonight through your decrees. When your call goes forth to him or the mighty Sanat Kumara, you have no idea what they pour back into your world. Here you have a world full of people, and they don't even know that the mighty master victory or the mighty Sanat Kumara are ready to pour this help to them all. But unless they open the door from their side of life, the cosmic law does not permit a greater power to intrude upon them. You see, so long as they sleep in the condition of the senses, they are not awake to the freedom of our powers, and it is only by some frightful shock of outer world conditions that they give us attention enough to become aware of the powers of life that, are waiting to assist them. So we are more grateful to you for your love to your, presence, and to us than you will ever know until your ascension. We, many of us have reminded you all of our love and gratitude that you continue to make your calls, but now feel that no matter what you require in the physical octave. Right at hand is our love and our power to go forth at your command, and produce the conditions that you require in correcting things of the physical octave that are out of balance. Try to. Discourse 3. 77. Feel we have given you gifts when we offer you our power, our love, our light, our activities of the sacred fire. We offer you the wealth of our octave, and if you would just feel that it is just as real in and around you as the air you breathe, then wherever you move, you would be alert and say, well, mighty beloved Victory's love is here. Mighty Saint Germain's violet flame is here. An angel of the presence is here, just as real as reality will ever be. I want to stress this tonight because, precious ones, throughout century upon century you have been trained to lean on outer things, and that has made the physical life of mankind entirely artificial. The outer senses have been so trained to lean on physical things that they could see and handle, that the feeling world is uncertain and doubts the existence or the reality of something the eyes can't see. And yet you never saw the current in an electric wire, and yet you accept it. Now we are trying to get you to feel with absolute, dynamic certainty in your feeling world the love from your presence, the power of its light, the wisdom and victorious presence of the cosmic Christ which is the mighty I am presence, in the great central sun, and to feel. 78 The, I am, discourses on supply. That when you ask us for some of our power or powers to correct wrong conditions in this octave, that we're going to answer you. I want you to know that. I know you've all had many, many manifestations, and you do have more conscious awareness of that and more certainty than the rest of mankind, but still you can be much more certain yet. 
and the more certain you are, the more power we can release. And I am determined that you shall feel this more, hourly. Now then, you look around in the physical world and you think, well, I need this and I need that, and you want physical wealth or physical things to do what you call physical service to life. We have offered you the use of our ascended master consciousness, and our ascended master consciousness produces instantly the manifestation of that which we desire. When we think of a thing, the picture is so clear, the thing manifests instantly. Therefore, when we loan you and ask you to accept and to use our ascended master consciousness, try to feel that when you want something produced and you ask your mighty I am presence, to see that the ascended master consciousness of this thing produces the manifestation at once, then try to. Discourse 3. 79. Feel that as you use our love and our wisdom and our power to fulfill your call, the answer is coexistent with the call. I'm determined to get this over to you, because if you get what I mean tonight by using the ascended master's consciousness of anything you desire, the fulfillment is automatically coexistent with the call. Then you do not have to wait for the fulfillment of your calls, and you move into what you call transcending of time and space. Then you will know what it means to demand that our love move into a situation, and our love controls it. Were you to say to a situation that is discordant, My beloved I am presence, clothe me with yourself. I reach up and call forth the mighty flames of the mighty Sanat Kumara's love. I call them into that, into action, into that situation, to possess it, to purify it, to raise it, and his love shall hold command. And then forget it. Now then, supposing we apply this same thing to your supply. The beloved Lord the Moha Chohan governs the supply through nature. Your own, beloved I am presence, governs the supply of its life to you. The beings of the elements, the great beings who direct them, govern all supply of everything that life holds within it to the earth. 80 The, I am, discourses on supply. Therefore, when you say to your, beloved I am presence, clothe me with yourself. I call forth the ascended master's feeling and manifestation of all supply that I shall ever require to do this which needs to be done now. Now try this. And let us see how close you can live in our ascended master consciousness of the limitless supply, and the instantaneous fulfillment of your every call. If you get the click on this, as you say, you'll click a lot of manifestations quite quickly, and I'm quite sure you'll enjoy it. And if you will think clearly through this, my beloved I am presence, make me know and feel within myself and around me the immortal mastery of your heart's flame. Then be quiet and feel it deeply. And then demand that it control your every outer action, and you will find the outer self raising into more and more freedom, and more and more use of the natural divine powers of your own life. And then when you call to us for the victorious presence of our power, of our love, to make this manifest more quickly, you will find it breathtaking in its magnificent accomplishment. And I tell you, you will go forward like a skyrocket with joy unspeakable. Just live it. Say often to your, beloved I am presence, clothe me with the fullness of. Discourse 3. 81. Yourself, and manifest your mastery here, and see that the ascended master qualities and powers, I require to govern all manifestation move into dynamic service to bless life wherever I am with the fulfillment of its great divine plan, and then go on your way. Just give the command and leave the rest with us, and you will find love will take possession of its own. It will know what it wants, and it will be all-powerful to fulfill your slightest call. I want you to experience this freedom. I want you to know the reality of the flames of love and the cosmic light substance we have placed in your mental and feeling world, in the atmosphere about you, and even into your flesh bodies. I would like to see a few of you make the experiment. I'd like to see you all do it, but if a few do it, I'll be grateful. If you speak to the light, the point of light in every cell of your body, and say to that, Beloved mighty I am presence, clothe me with yourself, and I demand every point of light be made dynamically active as self-luminous atmosphere about me. That love supreme may produce perfection for eternity. Now you try me out. And if you'll give obedience, I am the god of obedience. I will. 82 The, I am, discourses on supply. Be obedient to your call, and I will see there are manifestations that fulfill your call. 
If you will be obedient to the law and call your mighty I am presence into outer action, I will be obedient and give into your outer use that which produces these manifestations. So we'll both be obedient to life, if you don't mind. And if you do mind, we'll give you a little more time, because one day it must come. And when you begin to feel the closeness and the power of our ascended master consciousness, you will realize there are no veils between. Then when you demand the light of the cosmic Christ be made dynamically alive and active in the atmosphere about you, you will see us face to face. Do you know what I mean tonight? If you want to see us, then the atmosphere about you must contain more light. And as that light of the victorious Christ expands and is dynamically active around you, will you find the vibratory action of the optic nerve raised until you can look into our octave, and then there are no veils between. Our world is not so far apart from yours. You think it is, and all that makes you think so, now think of this. The only thing that makes you think you can't see us is a little vibratory action in your optic nerve. Isn't that silly? Isn't that nonsense? Discourse 3 83. We used to see each other face to face, didn't we? I haven't moved out of the universe. You haven't moved out of the universe. You have seen me at the inner level when your bodies sleep. Many of you have brought back the remembrance of it. You saw me there. You did see me here. What's the matter? I'm telling you what to do, and when you demand to see me, you will see me. I don't think you get me yet tonight. I am just as close to you as you want me. And if you command that the power of the victorious Christ and its cosmic light be made alive in you and be made your atmosphere, then I am in that light, for in that light nothing can be hidden. Then there will be no veils between you and me. I hope we may come closer and closer, but all of that isn't just on our side, you see. We can see through that veil from our side. We can see you. So where is the seeing to take place? In you, isn't it? Isn't it you who have to see us? We can see you. We see you all the time. We have but to project the light ray anywhere you happen to be, anywhere we happen to be. And just like you'd use a telescope to behold a star, we can use a light ray and behold you. Now why can't you use the same light ray and behold us? 84 The, I am, discourses on supply. You can. I'm telling you how tonight, and if you can use a light ray and our ascended master consciousness to correct conditions here, well then, you can use a light ray and our ascended master wealth to help correct conditions here. Try me out. I'm always willing to be tested. I told you that a long time ago. I could come so close to you, I could push your shoulder, and you would look to see who was around, and you wouldn't see me. But you could feel me. Now why wouldn't you see me? Because of the vibratory action of the optic nerve. And that's due to the whole vibratory action of the physical flesh. So when you command that the mighty I am presence clothe you in itself and make its cosmic light dynamically active in you, and your atmosphere self-luminous, the optic nerve will have to get busy and vibrate more rapidly. And then we will see each other face to face. How much do you want to see me? Thank you, precious ones. And while you're standing for just a moment, remember my words, your ability to see me depends on the amount of light that you demand be made dynamically active around you to see into our octave. Won't you be seated, please? Now the thing. Discourse 3. 85. That makes that light dynamically active is your love to your presence, and your call to it that it enfold you, because your presence can see me. We're getting hot, as you say, not by the weather, but just coming closer to the reality. When you demand that your mighty I am presence clothe you in itself, it will send down the ray of its light and love to make everything in your world brighter and more powerful with its own victorious flame. And the more you do that, just charge it into outer action, then go about your business just as natural and normal could be. Every once in a while, do it again. Demand the atmosphere about you be made dynamically active with the power of the victorious Christ that sees everywhere, that penetrates all things. And then as the Master Jesus said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Come into that light of the cosmic Christ, the mighty I am presence of your own precious self and of our octave, and when your attention is on us, you will come into our feeling world. 
you will feel us first, and then as you realize that that love is light, and you demand it be made dynamically active, the light grows brighter and the veils are consumed. Now we want you to become. 86th, I am, discourses on supply. Accustomed to this as naturally as breathing, because we have great wealth in our octave that ought to be serving you as soon as you are strong enough to hold protection of it in the physical octave. And that wealth always comes on love. And the light, as you release that love, is the bridge between, and we want this to come into your outer use, that you may all have more freedom, that you may do wonderful things that need to be done for the rest of mankind. And they need to be done by you. We've done a great deal for mankind, but these things need to be done by unascended beings for other unascended beings, until the light within mankind as a whole begins to reveal its raising power. And then will you find the mass of the people awakening to the God consciousness of their own reality. So these marvelous gifts which are at our command, that we can release to you with one wave of our hands, are ready to serve you, and if you will command them into outer, dynamic action for the illumination and service of all mankind, you could not be denied. I am tipping you off tonight. I trust this will remain in your mental notebook for some time to come. I'm not just talking to hear myself. I am offering you tonight very real, practical powers. Discourse 3 87. Do not your inventors and your scientists reach up into the higher mental body's realm and into our octave and draw forth ideas through invention? Well, what's the difference between reaching into the life, the greater life of each individual's life stream or into the life in our octave, and drawing ideas? What's the difference between drawing ideas and drawing substance? It's all energy. If they can reach up and get our ideas and you can reach up and get our love, you can reach up and get our substance. You can reach up and get our things. Then your world and our world becomes filled with the perfection which ought to be. This is one thing I've been waiting for, for a long while, to give you the freedom of boundless supply. And the boundless supply only comes from our octave, because your world is not boundless. The supply that's already manifested in the physical octave is limited, but that in our octave is not, therefore, if you want boundless supply, that supply must come from our octave. And it can come by your call first to be clothed in the magnificence of your own, beloved I am presence, and its light be made dynamically active in and around you as the atmosphere in. 88 The, I am, discourses on supply. Which you move and live and have your being. Then when you say, Beloved mighty I am presence and the ascended host, give me the things from your octave that belong in this world to enable me to fulfill the divine plan, then there will be no delay. And I do trust you will enter into this and begin its use very shortly. So with all the love at my command, I demand tonight that this illumination come to you as an eternal flame inside of yourselves that shall ever grow brighter, until you have the full understanding of all that this means to you, and that the oneness of your life and our life. The oneness of your love and our love, the oneness of the great light of all creation dissolves every limitation, and you go forward to demand in outer action that which sets the world free by light into which none can ever cast a shadow. That is the light of God that cannot fail to either reveal to you what you require, or supply you with what you require or raise you into what you require, until the victorious Christ blazes its light. And that, beloved I am presence, takes possession of its own and commands freedom and compels it for eternity. Thus do you enter into the great command of love supreme, the love of the cosmic Christ. Discourse 3 89 And it is the master presence and all authority of life everywhere through all manifested worlds, therefore it is all authority in your world and your manifestation everywhere you go. Let it reign. Experiment with its power. Command its victory, and go forward free in the light and the love that my heart wants to pour into your world, that you may pour it to others and to America and the earth, until it does fill all and the end of the darkness has come forever. Thank you, and good night. Cassette 65077 Discourse 4 Beloved Lord Metria October 14, 1951 Shasta Springs, California Precious Ones of the Sacred Fire, it is with great joy and very, very great satisfaction that we are to spend a few moments with each other, and in this. Draw closer and closer into your knowledge of the sacred fire and the way it controls conditions in our octave of existence. 
were you to take the command in your call to your beloved I am presence and to us to teach you our way of life, then make the demand that your blessed mighty I am presence through its own heart's flame moves in and through the outer self and prepares conditions so as to manifest here that which we have in our octave. You might say to me, well, we're not ascended yet. Well, you're moving toward it. Someday you must have the picture if you are to attain it in. 90. Discourse 4. 91. Manifestation. But let me tell you what it means to say, teach me your way of life. That means that we may show you the way life acts in our octave. And life in our octave is the concentrated energy that is much more powerfully concentrated in our action than it is in yours, since there is no discord by which it may be requalified. Then there can come to you, beloved ones, many revelations that will be very practical for you to use in the outer world even today, because the way our life acts in our octave is always harmonious, is always comfortable, is always balanced and pure and can never create anything but perfection that brings happiness to all. Now you have all through the centuries tried out every conceivable way by which your life did things in the physical world. You tried out your own ideas and your own feeling, and you have not gotten too far on the right side of the book of life, have you? You're farther than the rest of the world, I know. But look how long through the centuries have you been trying out the desires of the outer self and the ideas of the intellect that while the feeling was to create, the ideas brought forth did not produce for you, in that which you created, the perfection for which you had hoped. 92 The, I am, discourses on supply. Therefore, regardless of what you have to do in the physical world, before you enter into it, retire into the flame of love from your own, blessed I am presence. And you enter into that by drawing the feeling of the outer self within the heart flame in your own heart. And as you feel that great stillness does there come the raising or lifting power that draws you closer in your feeling world, into the great flame from the heart of the higher mental body. After you have felt that intense stillness and its power, then call forth to us to charge our way of life into your way of physical activity. Let our way of life be your pathway. Then you can draw activities into the physical world that have never been here before but which are to come as the greater perfection of the incoming civilization is expressed in physical action. Therefore as your call goes to your presence and to us to teach you our way of life, the way our life acts in our octave, then you can command your life of the outer self to act exactly as ours does. Now this takes a cosmic command and a definite decision on your part that the energy of the outer self shall act as we act, that the life of the outer self shall act through the life of this world as our life. Discourse 4 93. Act through this world. Now when you demand this into outer action, it will come. And the easiest way by which you may feel your presence is to still the solar plexus and rays, through your love, into the feeling of the higher mental body. The solar plexus is a ganglionic mass of nerves that are radiating forth from the back, in, through, and around the stomach. They are placed there as a protection to hold harmony while the digestive process of the body goes on to help produce perfection in the flesh structure. But the peace and the harmony of the feeling has been so often interfered with, that mankind have lived in a continual turmoil in the feeling world and, hence, they do not let the life within live the way in this octave that our life lives in ours. Now if you want us to teach you how our life acts in our octave, you make the call and hold your own energy quiet, and enfold it within the flame of love from your heart and from the higher mental body. As you turn your attention to your heart and know that the infed flame there comes forth at your call and spreads its radiance around the outer self, you give the higher mental body the opening, and by uninterrupted harmony as it flows through, will you find it joining our radiation from. 94 The, I am, discourses on supply. Without. And then, my dear ones, when you move into a situation, you have control of yourself before you touch the aura of someone in the physical world who might be disturbed or have something to do with that which you wish to accomplish here. If you are going to hold harmony in your world and produce the miracles we want you to have, the first place you must control the energy harmoniously is within your own feeling world. And you will find as you just still the outer for a few moments, and then as you give it into the control of the infed flame in your heart, and to the enfolding flame from the higher mental body just for a few moments, then make your call and go into outer action, you will find you will draw many. 
many wonderful powers from the higher mental body into your outer use. And I am stressing this because the higher mental body is always waiting to release these powers into your outer use and direction. But it cannot and will not release those powers until you have gained control over the feeling of your own solar plexus, and have learned by habit to still that energy whenever you want the gift or the power from the presence to act in your outer conditions. Discourse 4 95 the moment you still the energy in your feeling world and raise it into the possession and control of the unfed flame in your heart, and into the higher mental body's control, then the presence can hold command of the atmosphere about you, and it drops, as it were, a curtain of its own flame in and around you to hold gathered within you, your own energy. And as long as you hold that quiet, then whatever is necessary to control conditions in the situation. You can control with the feeling of mastery because the sacred fire, which is the unfed flame in your heart and in your higher mental body, is always the master element that holds energy in balanced action. Therefore, if you give the energy of the outer self into the possession of your own heart's flame, and then raise into the possession of the higher mental body, you have disconnected the streams of energy that ordinarily flow out from you. You have disconnected them from the discord of the world around you, and you have drawn within your own powerhouse your energy and raised it into the control of the higher mental body. Then, because of the great calm, poised control, it can blaze around you those activities of the sacred fire. 96. The I Am Discourses on Supply That purify the energy or the conditions with which you must deal, and enable you to get accomplished that which is constructive in a very much shorter time than otherwise would be. And this takes the struggle out of your daily activities. The moment you are content, my dear ones, to surrender the control of your feelings into the possession of the unfed flame in your heart and into that of the higher mental body, the moment you are willing to surrender that, peace comes on the instant. And that is why this must come first before the tremendous release of the greater powers of greater energy in your own life streams can come, into your outer, physical use to do what the world calls miraculous. This has gone on a long while, my dear ones, in mankind's outer activities. Many have turned away from the discord and sought the silence within, and whenever they have accomplished that, power and control comes into the outer conditions, and just naturally things set themselves in divine order. Balance takes place. Everything goes along in the divine order that enables you to accomplish that which fulfills the divine plan. Now when I said, when you turn your attention to your presence and hold control of your feeling. Discourse 4 97. Then lift it to the higher mental body, when I said you withdraw the energy around you, I want to show you what happens. Ordinarily, when the guard is not up over the feeling world, the radiation of the energy from the physical body and the feeling world pours forth in straight rays of light. Just streams of energy are constantly radiating out from your physical body. That is when you have plenty of energy within and are rested and positive. But after several hours of activity or in moving among discord, if you do not know how to protect yourselves, the contact of that constant radiation out into the atmosphere of other people, there comes a suction, and it keeps drawing off the energy that was within the body. And then you begin to feel tired and distressed. Could you see that from the inner standpoint, where the rays of light are strong and positive in the morning when you are rested, when you become tired they droop, just like that. With the weight of the discordant substance in the atmosphere in which you move or the radiation of the discord from others. That is why when I said, when you still the solar plexus and draw the energy of the outer self into the possession and control of the unfed. 98 The I Am Discourses on Supply Flame, raise it to the higher mental body, it immediately drops around you a curtain of its own cosmic fire. And that is what enables you to go forth into conditions, pour into them what corrects the wrong, and stand the guard over that which is right. This is a powerful protection which all of you need, because the outpouring of your own radiation is the thing that either keeps harmony about you and attracts to you what you require, or, if it be discordant and depressed, drops, and you have no protection. The destructive forces ride in on your own energy, and the next thing you know you have something to handle. Now you say to me, well, what about our tubes of light? Well, what about them? That's just what I am talking about. When you become discordant or distressed, the protection of your tube of light is down, 
and it has opened up and let the destructive energy from the outer world come into your feeling world. There is nothing so necessary in all mankind's outer activities as a calm, poised, inner control of the energy at the solar plexus, with the authority of the outer self that it be raised into the control of the unfed flame in the heart, and again raised into the control of the higher mental body. Then. Discourse 4. 99. It can fill up the cup and re-energize the outer self, drop the flame of its protecting love, and enable you to go forth and try again to accomplish that which is constructive. Now all through the centuries various activities of protection have been offered to mankind. In the beginning, around the emotional body, which extends for at least three feet on each side of the physical body, there was a natural oval of light substance from the higher mental body that was a natural. Enfolding outpouring of absolute purity from the higher mental body around the energy of the emotional body of the outer self. But as time went on and discord from within was allowed to charge into that substance, it was just as if the discord tore a hole in a fine chiffon garment, and another one occurred, again and again, until that entire protecting oval of light substance was destroyed. And that is why the mighty Saint Germain gave you the exercise of the tube of light for energizing the outer self that this might be re-established if you make the call. This was a natural, enfolding oval of light, and you lived in that, my dear ones, in the two first golden ages as a natural, enfolding oval of light substance about the physical body. 100 The, I am, discourses on supply. Just as the ascended masters today come and go in a similar oval of cosmic light substance through which the discord of earth cannot pass. Very often when we manifest, we come within the oval of light substance. And as we step through that to become more visible to your physical senses, still that substance remains around us. And when we are through with our radiation and retire within that, we raise its vibratory action and disappear. And it is just as mechanical as an airplane. Try to realize that because a thing is invisible does not mean that it is not made of visible, tangible substance because if it happens to be invisible to your physical sight, it is not invisible to us. When you realize how limited is the action of the senses through the physical body, you'll understand what I mean. The actual power of sight from within the higher mental body only functions through the physical eyes, when the vibratory action of the optic nerve is functioning within certain octaves of vibration. And that is a very small proportion of what we speak of as the vibratory action of the magnetic spectrum. You hear within certain rates of vibration. You see within certain rates of vibration. You can feel farther than you can hear or see at the present time, but below your power of sight and above your power. Discourse 4 101 Of sight are infinite rates of vibration in the energy of the universe wherein there is consciousness, and you can be conscious of what is there, just as well as conscious of what is here. Every night, my dear ones, your waking faculties go somewhere while the body sleeps. You know you are not all in that body on the bed, are you? Oh, no. Very little of you is there, just enough of the energy to keep the vital processes of the body in action. But most of your consciousness, your power of sight, your faculty of sight, your faculty of hearing, your faculty of feeling, your faculty of speech, your power of action, mark you, has withdrawn to a very large extent from the atomic structure of the body. And your faculties go somewhere else and do something else in bodies of substance in which you are alive. Because you know that you have brought back the memory of thinking and feeling and speaking and acting in the substance, and in the body of that which is not the physical body that you leave asleep. So your physical senses, or what you call physical senses, are also elastic. They come and go. They come and go from this outer self to this other inner octave of life. And there you see the way of life, the way life acts there. When you're in the physical. 102 The, I am, discourses on supply. Body, you see the way life acts here. Therefore, if you come into our octave and try to understand how our life controls conditions there, if you bring the memory of that back into your waking consciousness, and the feeling with it, you have but to keep your attention upon the memory of that, and enable yourselves to feel it again and again in order to draw those same powers of life into your outer use. Now it is as simple as your ABCs. You don't think so this moment, but one day you will. And when you do, and you have proved that I have told you the truth this hour, what will have happened to your thoughts and your feelings of the present that think you can't do that now? 
What will have become of the thought and feeling in your life that you can't do it, after you can do it? What happens to that which said, I can't? You think it through. That was only a rate of vibration in your thoughts, in your mental body and in your feeling world and in your speech. It was only a thought and a picture. It was just a passing wave of vibration that passed through you, and you just accepted it and it controlled your outer action. When you ask to be taught our way of life, the way our life acts in our octave, then the Discourse 4 103 Rates of vibration from our octave, our thoughts, our feelings, our pictures, those rates of vibration come into you and blaze out through you. They enfold you, and then you feel them, and as soon as you feel our way of doing a thing, there comes the illumination to the mind that you can do it. And then you try, and then you will succeed, because if you never try, you will never succeed. If a music teacher can radiate her, or his or her knowledge of music and the feeling of that music and the instruction about it to a student, and the student makes the application until he or she can do the same thing, well then. The music teacher has taught the life in the student his musical way of life, hasn't he? And the student can absorb that completely, and go forward and play the same thing just as well, and sometimes better. And that is exactly the way it is with us. We give you the thought. We radiate to you our feeling of the power to do that. We radiate to you the picture. If you take it up and think on it and feel it and hold the picture, and then you try, who of you can tell me what you can do in a few trial? That is the way of teaching, precious ones, from the tiniest child to the greatest cosmic beings in the universe. Everything that is greater than you. 104 The, I am, discourses on supply. Are now is ready to teach you about itself and give you the feeling of itself, reveal the perfection of itself into your outer use. And you have, but to try and keep on trying, until you feel it deeply enough to qualify all the energy in your feeling world. And as soon as all the energy is saturated with the feeling of that which you want, the energy surges, and the first thing you know, the power is released and you find yourselves doing that thing. It's a mechanical thing. And therefore, in order to comply with the cosmic law's demand that you ever reach up and learn to do that which is greater than what you are doing now, the law is such that those who are in charge of that greater activity are to pour to you their thoughts, their feelings, their pictures, and their love to illumine you and show you how their life acts to produce that. Then you use those same faculties, and your life learns to produce that. It is but a perfectly natural way of radiation. The ability to do something greater than what you are doing now has to be radiated into the energy of this outer self both by your higher, mental body and from our octave. And that is all done by the power of the great central sun magnet. That is. Discourse 4. 105. The magnetic power of the universe, because it pours its energy down with its consciousness, and as soon as it connects with the energy in the feeling world, it begins to lift that up into its own vibratory action. And it is just as simple as tuning a string on a musical instrument. The moment you tighten the string, you raise its pitch. Well now, after you tighten it and you raise it, where did the other pitch go that was lower? It ceases to exist, doesn't it, in that string, once you raise it? Well, that's the way with your troubles, and I'm here tonight to tell you that as I pour my love down into you to raise you into the feeling of my harmony and my way of life, your problems and your struggle and your discord of the outer, your limitations, will be as completely gone if you feel me. As the wrong tone is gone if you raise the pitch of the string. It will disappear just that easily, for once you step into the higher vibratory action with the energy and feeling of your own life's action, when you step into that, the other becomes non-existent to you. That passes out of your world forever. So don't you see, you only live in that of which you are conscious, whether it be good or bad, comfortable or otherwise. You can only live in. 106 The, I am, discourses on supply. That of which you are conscious, and when you are conscious of the way our life acts in our octave, while you are thinking and feeling and desiring that and holding its picture, everything else below that does not live for that moment in you. Do you see now how you let go of your human creation? I hope you get this today. Thank you, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please? Now you're doing this all the time, more or less, but you don't quite realize it, and hence, 
you don't definitely command what you want to be maintained permanently. Supposing you're cold outside, and you come into a room and you go over to a radiator and you stand there a few moments and you get thoroughly warm. After you get thoroughly warm, where is the feeling of cold that you had a few minutes before? It doesn't exist, does it? It doesn't exist in you after you get warm, does it? Now think this through, because it's your secret if you understand it. Therefore, the moment you raise the energy of the outer self into the possession of the unfed flame in your heart, and offer it again to be raised into the unfed flame of your higher mental body, the moment that energy comes into that and you begin. Discourse 4 107 To feel that, the stress and the struggle and the discord of the outer is gone. And that is why the blessed Saint German has repeatedly said to you, where your attention is, there you are. What you think, you create, and what you contemplate, you become. Therefore if you contemplate our way of life and you begin to love that and desire it and feel it and call it into yourselves, you will very soon find many of the things of perfection from our octave coming into you and your world and seeking you. And may I say, the things of the outer world do not seek you like that. So I think our way is superior to yours. Your physical world, in the world of things, you have to go out there and lasso them and bring them in, to hang on to them long enough until you use what you want before somebody else takes it away from you. And we don't live like that. See? Our way of life is the way that ever raises everybody and everything into greater freedom, greater love, greater perfection, greater dominion over everything. So if you will lift your energy into your own heart's love and raise it into the possession and management of the higher mental body, asking our way of life to be taught to you, and charging that energy with our feeling and our pictures. 108 The I Am Discourses on Supply And our action and our way of life, then the presence, can pour that out into your affairs and draw to you those things that will produce the perfection we have in our world. Now will you try to remember this concerning your supply? Now there is a great deal, God knows, plenty of supply on this earth. But what do they do with it? People to whom it does not even belong say that it does belong to them, and then they misuse it. They still want to hold on to it. When they pass out of the body, everybody else fights over it. Now let me show you something. If you want limitless wealth and supply of every good thing so that you can live in your world like we live in ours, and you call to your presence and to us to bring you the wealth, the opulence. The supply of every good thing which is yours by divine right, and I mean by that the energy and the supply that was yours before you left the great central sun, then your presence can draw forth from its own channels, whether it be in our octave or yours. It will draw to you that energy and supply of the things of the universe, the things of life that it wants to use to express its will done here in the fulfillment of the divine plan. Discourse 4 109 then it wouldn't make any difference how much someone else is using of the things of this world or how much they're abusing the things of this world. It's nothing to do with your supply. I want you to be free in that acknowledgement of your own supply that is yours by divine right. That was given to you from the great central sun before you came into physical embodiment. You accepted the responsibility of consciously using a certain proportion of the energy of the universe to create down here as your free will directed. Therefore, in accepting the responsibility of the use of that energy, you had to have a certain supply that belonged to you and nobody else in all infinity, in order to express or create that which you agreed to create before you left the great central sun. So this supply of which I speak is that which has been preordained for all of you before you came into this embodiment. And that's what I want you to have when you call to us to teach you our way of life in this world, our way of drawing supply. Our way of using supply, our way of blessing life everywhere with the love that keeps your world clear so that your own supply can reach you. 110 The I Am Discourses on Supply Then it wouldn't make any difference if everybody on the earth was misusing everything here, it's no excuse for you. You don't have to be under that law. You have a right to call for the supply of the universe that is yours by divine right brought into your outer direction to produce the way of life that we live, that you may pour love where hate seems to be, that you may bring light where darkness appears. That you may hold protection when danger opposes, and that you may forever expand the gifts and the beauty, and the perfection of your own blessed heart's flame into the outer conditions of this world to make a perfect garden of paradise out of that which, 
mankind has soiled. Is that worthwhile, or not? Thank you, precious ones. And while you are standing just a moment, before I leave, will you call to your, blessed I am presence, more often, and just drawing the feeling of your own life's outer energy into the unfed flame in the heart, offer it back to the, presence. And then say to it, give me the boundless supply that is mine by divine right, and see that I do your way of life in the physical world to do your will here, express your divine plan, and live the way. Discourse 4 111 of the ascended masters. Bring this to me, then you direct it and control it and protect it, and I will give the obedience that enables the perfection of these manifestations to be produced in the world around me to serve you. My dear ones, a surrender and a call like that to your presence, with uninterrupted kindness in your feelings, with uninterrupted stillness and feeling of your oneness with that presence, asking it to show you its way of life down here, will as surely bring it as you do it. So I leave you with the desire to experiment with it. I don't believe you quite had that desire before, but I am here to give it to you, and we'll see what you feel in the future. Thank you, precious ones. Now I clothe you in the love of my heart's flame, that golden flame, golden and pink, of my love from the great central sun, within which is boundless supply. May I offer its enfolding radiance to you all to help give you this feeling of absolute stillness within that just keeps drawing and drawing you into your own heart's flame, and raising you with love and devotion into that closeness with your higher mental body. Until its enfolding radiance about you clears away everything, and you say with. One twelfth, I am, discourses on supply. Eternal gratitude, thank you for your way of life. See I forever abide in it and use your love to make that way happy for others, until they too learn the divine way to live life in the physical world until all becomes the perfection expressed that raises all to the ascension. This is one of my joyous services to the earth. And then keep calling for all the wealth that is yours by divine right to come now into your outer physical use, and enable you to live the way of life of your presence and of our octave, with the command that the wealth that is brought to you shall never be touched by human qualities. But shall carry only happiness and freedom to all life. So to its glorious, dazzling victory and to its marvellous success do I call you this hour, and shall forever watch your every effort until you feel the fullness of this power and go forward free to use it without limit, until your joy knows no bounds and your world never has a limitation again. That is our way of life. I leave my feeling of that with you and charge you with our ascended master consciousness, and direction of that which is brought to you until all of the glory of life unfolds and gives you its. Discourse 4 113. Boundless blessings, that you may give them to others until the way of life from all that is above becomes the way of life to all that is below, and never a shadow ever again cross your path. To that eternal joy and victorious glory do I call you tonight, and give you every possible blessing of my love and feeling until you experience it in its fullness. I commend you to the mighty victory of my heart's love and the boundless supply of our octave of life, in yours, to set you free. Thank you with all my love, and good night. Won't you be seated, please? Record SG 2065 AB. Discourse V. Beloved Godfra. December 5, 1952 Cincinnati, Ohio Precious Hearts of Cincinnati, once again are we privileged in that great love of life, the love of eternity, to come together and draw in and around you these greater powers of life to give you the perfection that must come into your outer use. Tonight I want to encourage you. I want to give you the assurance that as you look only to the presence for more of the things that are required to fulfill the divine plan, will you find those manifestations coming more and more rapidly. As soon as you have trained the outer to feel your dependence entirely upon your own, blessed I am presence, then will you find the delay that is in the outer will cease to act in your world, because all delay is in the outer. It never exists in the inner. 114. Discourse V. 115. So as you turn away from the outer, determine to stand. Face. And conquer. With your, beloved I am presence arms about you, knowing it is your way, your protection, your defense, and your deliverance, it is also your boundless supply. I want you to feel that the more you can demand that your, mighty I am presence, make you feel itself in your outer feeling, 
the quicker will everything act for you in the fulfillment of your calls, because all delay is but the obstruction of the discord of the outer appearances of life. And so if you want instantaneous action, as you turn to your presence, and there call forth its feeling into you, demand that it make you feel its instantaneous action of anything you require, because your blessed I am presence, and higher mental body do not know anything about time nor space. Because that part of your life acts instantly everywhere it desires. Instantaneous action into your physical manifestation must come from the feeling of your mighty I am presence, of its instantaneous action in you. You see, that instantaneous action is already in the feeling of the higher mental body, and it is the energy of the outer self that needs to be charged with the instantaneous action. 116 The I am discourses on supply of the higher mental body or the electronic presence. So, when in love to your presence, you ask it to charge all the feeling, all the energy of your outer self, with its feeling of instantaneous manifestation, then will things of the physical world come to you faster and faster and faster, until eventually, one day, they come directly from the universal by instantaneous call. So keep charging all the energy of your feeling world with the instantaneous fulfillment, and feeling of the higher mental body now into your outer affairs. When there are problems out here, instead of allowing the intellect to dash into the problem, and then try to figure it out, if you will compel that intellect to turn its attention back to the, mighty I am presence, and higher mental body. And saying to that, presence, with all the love at your command, will you come with me into the problem and place your instantaneous feeling of its full solution into the problem, that I may, that that problem may be solved to glorify you and fulfill your divine plan out here. That you may reveal more of your cosmic perfection. Just as soon as you get the outer self completely reversed from its old habit of dashing into a condition before it consults the presence, as soon as you. Discourse V. 117. Change that habit, my dear ones, your troubles are over. Believe me tonight. Your limitations will dissolve almost in a breath as soon as you constantly train the outer to stop just a moment before it tries to do anything, and go into the heart of the presence, and say to your presence, as if it were a living helper, as if you took your presence, your higher mental body, by the hand, and said, will you come with me into this problem and produce your instantaneous solution of the problem, that in outer conditions there may come the perfection that glorifies you and sets me free. Then, my dear ones, you will make a daily companion of your higher mental body. And what do you think will happen when you say to your higher mental body, will you come with me into this problem and show me your solution of it, before you ever start to go into it? Then if you ask your mighty I am presence to make you feel its feeling of instantaneous solution, the moment you enter in and try to solve the problem, I tell you, the ideas will just come tumbling over themselves, almost, as to the ways and means of doing what you are required to do to assist and it will help to clear the mind, precious ones, of the doubts and the fears that cause your delay, because. 118 The, I am, discourses on supply. All delay in the fulfillment of your calls is due to doubt and fear, which are, but the resistance of the discord in the world about you. Oh, you have no idea how much closer your, presence, can come through the outer physical form when you reach your heart's love to it and say, will you give me your hand? Will you come into me and make me feel your feeling of your nearness, your feeling of your solution for this problem, and then come with me into the problem? Why, my dear ones, your presence will bring you surprises you little dream, and when it comes to the supply, your presence has many, many channels of supply that even those in the outer world never heard of. Do you remember, a long, long time ago at the Shrine Auditorium, I think I told you several times to keep calling to your, beloved I am presence, for its hidden wealth from the secret places that it knows would never bring you discord, from the secret channels of its own supply. The hidden riches from the secret channels of its own supply. Thus you swing the door open, precious ones, and allow many avenues of supply to be open to you from avenues that you do not even know exist tonight. In doing this, after a few times you will feel nearer and nearer to your presence. Discourse V. 119. Now your higher mental body abides, ordinarily, when you are harmonious, from 12 to 15 feet above the physical body. But when you ask it to come closer, and you hold the harmony and pour it your love, it will come closer. 
When you ask it to come into the condition, then as it comes into the condition, from the inner level, could you see it? It would be like a sun of light coming into the energy of the problem. And then there would come to the outer intellect, in this greater light which would enfold you as well as the problem, will come the ideas of handling the problem in the most wonderful way, and by which in the solution of the problem. You would glorify that presence with greater love and greater obedience. There would be greater harmony out here, for every time you hold the harmony and send the love to your presence, you glorify it and you glorify the universe around you. Therefore, in the solving of your problems, in the release of your supply, precious hearts, nothing will ever take the place of your love to your presence and your presence love to you. It is that swing of the energy to your presence, and then you ask the presence to come into you and into the problem. It is the great activity of life that ever draws the 120 The I Am Discourses on Supply Perfection from within the presence into outer manifestation commands it to expand its happiness to all, and in the expansion it pours more light to the presence. And the next wave of love draws back to you your greater freedom. It is so wonderful. It is so true. It is so real. It is so all-powerful, that I long for that hour when the instantaneous action of your call brings you the happiness and the release that will astonish both you and your fellow men. For I tell you, when the law begins to act instantly for you in the solution of your problems, the outer self takes quite a while before it gets over the astonishment. And that is because it has accepted the element of time and space so long through the centuries, and it has felt that, as part of the race consciousness, that when things act instantly, it is always more or less of a shock and a surprise to the outer self that it really worked so fast. But you know you have entered the age of speed, haven't you? You've all desired speed, you know, in one way or another, especially with your automobiles. You have just loved that speed, haven't you? Well, why not love your blessed I am presence, until the speed of its action in instantaneous release enters into your problems and you go on your way and you arrive more quickly. Isn't that reasonable? Discourse V. 121. Isn't that what you are supposed to do? Aren't you supposed to pick up speed and get going, you know, in all things in the physical world? You don't have any trouble egging people on to drive faster, do you sometimes, if the way is clear? Then why should we have any trouble drawing you on to greater speed in the fulfillment of your call? I am doing this tonight to show you that you can have the money and the supply more quickly. Now this will bring you very great joy as you practice it. And it is not difficult to practice it, precious ones. If you want your supply in a hurry, is it difficult to want it? Don't you want it in a hurry? Think this through, now. If you need it in a hurry, don't you want it in a hurry? You do. You know you do. All right then, the formula, may I say, of getting it in a hurry is to turn to the presence first and ask its speed of action, the feeling of its instantaneous action, to come into yourselves, and then ask the presence to come with you into the problem. It's just as mechanical, it's just as absolute, it's just as real as you are. I am determined, with your cooperation, to bring you into more instantaneous release of the supply you require to do these things in the outer that need to be done because they are right, and ought to be done. 122 The I Am Discourses on Supply Therefore, anything that ought to be done, that is right to do, should have instantaneous action in the doing. But if you will just form the habit the moment the outer self wants something, in just saying, Oh, mighty I am presence, give me this, and, mighty I am presence, give me that, instead of that, if you just form the habit of sending love to the presence first. And then asking your presence to make you feel itself in the outer self, to make you feel its feeling of its presence with you, its feeling of instantaneous answer to your call. Then you take the hand of your presence, and then, as you go into the solution of your problem, there comes the right prompting, and your presence will draw the right people or the right conditions together to help you solve the problem more quickly. Now when you need money quickly, you have often said, Mighty I am presence, give me this money for which I call. Give me this money quickly. Well now, preceding that, if you'll just turn, Mighty I am presence, I love you. Charge your feeling of your nearness and your presence into me, and then come with me and draw to me this which I require. And then you see that I fulfill your divine plan here, that I may glorify you with more love. 
then everything you do in the outer, you do to the glory of that presence. Discourse V. 123. Precious ones, how could your presence fail to glorify you if you glorify it? What you send out comes back, and if you glorify your presence, it will glorify you with more of everything your heart can desire. Now then, we have given you many, many, many ways and means of drawing to yourselves the supply you require, and we have done that so everyone will find something that just clicks, as you say, and works always and instantly. Beloved ones, we have given you this great volume of the instruction because we have to keep flooding you with the reminder of it all the time, until it comes to the point of saturation, and you reach up and you make it your own. And as surely as you feel your oneness with this which we give you, will you find the very oneness is the action of your presence, in your affairs to produce your victory always. I am determined, with your cooperation, to see that there comes into your hands and use more of every good thing to give you freedom to go forward and expand this light, and produce perfection in this world. Because part of the carrying of this light is to build perfection into your outer world conditions that can be made imperishable and self-luminous as an eternal part of this world, when we come forth or you ascend. 124 The, I am, discourses on supply. If you have done a magnificent thing here, wouldn't you like, when you come into your ascension, to turn back into it the greater perfection and raise it into that which is eternal, and then leave it in the world as your gift to life? That's the great joy of existence then everything that you leave in this world becomes a magnet of light to draw the rest of mankind up until they make the same effort, by which the world becomes eventually transformed into the ascended master's octave of perfection. You take it little by little, and place something eternal here that is like our octave, and then when you come to us, then you turn back into this world and expand that which you built, until all mankind redeem the earth which they have desecrated. This earth in the beginning was beautiful and magnificent to behold. Therefore it is mankind's duty to redeem the earth and, this time, fill it with ascended master perfection that is eternal. So when I ask you to call to your presence, to make you feel its presence in you, make you feel its feeling of its solution of your problem, then when you have the feeling within, go into the problem, and, precious ones, you will find almost instantaneous action in the solution of. Discourse V. 125. Everything that you enter into in the outer world after you have sent your love to the presence and asked it to make you feel itself. It's only because you have felt the fear and the doubt and struggle of the discord of the outer world that you have problems. That is what has condensed into your problem. Now when you command the outer self to feel the feeling of your presence and draw that feeling into the outer, into your outer self and into your conditions, then your feeling, the feeling of your presence in you and into the condition will make the condition the perfection of your presence. Do I make myself clear? Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated? Now I have just one more thing to say. Your presence wants you to have an abundance of every good thing. I want you to have an abundance. Every ascended master and cosmic being wants you to have an abundance. All the life in our octave is surging to pour perfection into this world. You want abundance. Then why longer give this outer thing any more attention or acceptance? Every time the appearance of the limitation comes, say, be gone. And then turn your love to your presence and ask it to come. 126 The I Am discourses on supply. Into you with its own feeling, give you its hand, and then come into the problem and compel that problem to become the glory of its presence. And its love will transmute and supply everything. The love of your mighty I am presence in you, when you call it that way, poured out here, can become the supply, the money, the friends, the living things that you want in this world, because that love is the giver of everything. And when you ask it to come into the problem and be the perfection that glorifies itself, you will not know delay nor struggle nor limitation longer, because you have replaced the doubt and fear of the outer world, which is the problem, with the love of the presence, which has no problems. The presence never had a problem and never will, and its love is the dissolver of all problems, and it is instantaneous in its action. It doesn't take any time for the presence to send its love to you, and it shouldn't take any time for you to send your love to the presence. 
Well, since love is the supply of everything, well, it doesn't take the presence any time to put its love out here and draw whatever you require to fulfill your calls instantly. So let us go forward determined that whenever doubt and fear and delay appear, the love of the mighty I am presence will make you feel itself. Discourse V. 127. Here. And when it is in you, it is only a breath until it is manifested in your affairs and in the conditions that set you free. So let us go forward, determined to have the instantaneous action of all the supply you require, and all the protection, and all the friends, and all the expansion of this glorious, I am, activity, until mankind irresistibly turn to it and know once again the happiness that is their home of love. Tonight, feel the mantle of my heart's love clothing you all with the victory of its eternal supply and its invincible protection, until everything in your world honors your blessed I am presence and the ascended host. Because it has become love manifested in this physical world as an eternal part of the perfection that must come in and fill the earth, and hold command forever. Thank you. And I shall make you feel my feeling of my heart's love with you, and my presence, and my command to solve your every problem if you will do this and forever turn away from the doubt and the fear which are but the delay of your outer affairs. Love is instantaneous action, and I command it to forever hold command. Thank you so much. Record SG 1915 Discourse 6 Beloved Godfra June 2, 1955 Denver, Colorado Dear Hearts of Denver, may I bring to you tonight the love I have for your blessed city for to me it is almost like a second home. Of course, the world is our home, and to do good our religion, but Denver is always and always has been and always will be very close to my heart because of the magnificent experiences that were, mine in this locality, and which today are still expanding their blessings to me, and will forever carry their blessing throughout creation. You know, it's a wonderful thing to live so close to God, the, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host that whatever good is given, continually expands, and wherever you go in the universe, it goes with you in ever-expanding victory. That is the joy we want you. 128. Discourse 6. 129. To experience. It is the power that the world must have in order to raise it out of the shadows of its distress. Tonight I wish to say something about the action of the cosmic law of energy so that it will bring the illumination to you that I trust will always be a guard about you and give you the strength to overcome all that, is wrong. In the use of energy, my dear ones, when selfishness takes command of the individual and is allowed to increase through many embodiments, or even one, that selfishness is a drawing of energy and a condensation of energy in and around the physical body of the individual, first of all, of course. Within the mental body, and then within the emotional body, your feeling world. If selfishness is allowed to continue to increase, the energy condenses to the point where it solidifies in the mental and emotional world of the individual, and even in the atmosphere about that one, and the longer it's continued. The less the finer qualities and the constructive thoughts and feelings from the higher mental body are allowed to come into the intellect, or the energy of the outer self. Now when after a period of time, that selfishness will not let the great divine plan be fulfilled through. 130 The, I am, discourses on supply. The outer self, so that its substance and energy is not held to the constructive way of life, then there comes the hour when the individual must face the second death. And that is the necessity for shattering the condensation of the energy that has been charged with selfishness, and the purifying of it, and the removing of the outer identity of the personal self completely from existence. That is why selfishness is the most dangerous of all feelings, all qualities in the outer self, because it condenses the energy of the individual's own life, as well as that in the atmosphere about the physical body. Into a hardened condition that will not let that energy of life be used for a constructive purpose. And so it's a very serious warning which I bring, because you've heard the expression, money is the root of all evil. Well, it's not. Money in itself is no more a cause of evil than the energy in the atmosphere. It is the selfishness that is the root of all evil, because the feeling and the desire and the action of the outer self to take the gifts of life, the energy of life and the substance of the universe, and simply hold those activities in the use of the outer self for the gratification of its own desires, is the condensation of those activities that 
Discourse 6. 131. Eventually cause the blasting of the outer identity. There is nothing in the universe so dangerous as selfishness. So tonight, in offering you my assistance to overcome these conditions in the physical world that are everywhere about you, I offer this solution. If you will charge yourselves with the Ascended Master's victory of obedience, then, since the Ascended Masters obey the law of their octave or any realm in which they work or are active, when you call their obedience into the energy of your own life stream, you will find your struggle will cease. And I want to bring you that relief tonight. Thank you, precious ones. Now I know many of you have tried so sincerely to overcome things that you knew were wrong within yourself, and you made every effort under sometimes very strenuous conditions, but you have so often felt that the outer self was the door. And that is taking the energy away from the presence, and you have not acknowledged the presence as the master power over the wrong. But I guarantee you from tonight, with your cooperation, this call for the victory of ascended master obedience in everything in your world will bring you the relief that you have sought. 132 The I Am Discourses on Supply You may think, well, why didn't you give us that a long time ago? We have, in various ways, but only after you make certain conscious effort of the outer self and try to give obedience does the cosmic law permit us to come, and may I say, take you on the last lap of the journey. You know it's like a race, and on the very last round of that race on the track, it's the most exciting of all, isn't it? Did you ever attend a race? You know they go around the track so many times, but the last time is the thrill, isn't it? That's when the excitement is pretty tense. Well, your excitement isn't what we want right now. We want the thrill of your feeling of release that comes from attainment. Now when you begin to charge all the energy in and around you with the Ascended Master's victory of obedience, you'll have it. We don't have to wait centuries to give you the victory from the Ascended Master's octave. You've called for Ascended Master Consciousness, and you've used a great deal of it, and it has brought you many blessings and miracles. But from now on, whatever quality you want from the Ascended Master's octave to come into outer use of the physical, personal self, always acknowledge the victory of that special quality. And then, why? Discourse 6 133 it's just like you threw a door wide open and in rushes everything that you require to manifest your victory. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, it is, if you'll quit looking at human beings in the outer world. You know the old saying, look at people and trouble grows. Look at God and trouble goes. And when you look at the troubles of the world, and you look at the faults of other people, then you have shut out your presence, and you have shut out the ascended master's help. You cannot serve two masters, and if you'll take me at my word tonight, you will give me the opportunity not only to strengthen each one of you and give you your victory, but it will enable us to anchor into your city powers that we direct. But with which you are not concerned except to be the open door through which the call sets those powers into action. When you want to overcome distress that is produced by selfishness or hatred or all the discord of the outer world, you must give conscious acknowledgement and use of the word, victory. If you want victory over a thing, you have got to say, victory, haven't you? Then if you want our protection, then demand that everything. 134 The I Am Discourses on Supply In your being and world be charged with the victory, ascended master victory of ascended master protection of everything in your being and world. Well, that means everything constructive, because we are not going to protect something destructive. But when you want these things, my dear ones, your acknowledgement of the victory is the completion of all the energy you require to produce the manifestation. It's a pressure, so to speak, that compels it to be finished and brought into your outer use. Supposing we apply this to your supply. You know, that's a very popular subject. I can get your attention on supply when you won't give it to me any other time. Strange thing, but nevertheless true. All right, now you want supply released, don't you? Right? Then keep charging your purse or your business or your home or your affairs with the victory of your boundless supply released into physical use. Now you call for the victory, and I'll turn on the pressure. Isn't that a good partnership in business? Thank you, precious ones. Now let us call for the victory of the supply you require to do this, 
the victory of the supply release that you require to do something else, and then go right down on. Discourse 6. 135. Your various requirements, and demand the victory of that supply released for this definite thing. Then you take up the next definite thing. Now then, the safeguard of this is that when you call for the ascended master's victory of your boundless supply released, it not only brings the more instantaneous action of the energy of your outer self into a condition to perfect it and release the supply. But if you call for ascended master victory, remember it carries protection. And I assure you, no matter what you want to manifest in this world, if I were you, I would never ask for a thing that did not automatically carry invincible protection. You can just as well charge these qualities, precious ones, into your decrees, or what you want released, that carry protection and completion of a thing, as to do it piecemeal. There are two things you should always connect with every call you make. One is invincible protection, and the other is invincible victory, ascended master victory. Now if you will charge these things into your everyday affairs many times a day, whether you think you need it or not, just call forth the Ascended Master's invincible protection of all under this radiation, the Ascended Master's. 136 The, I am, discourses on supply. Invincible victory of that protection, the Ascended Master's invincible victory of invincible supply to you all. Now that supply covers everything. Its energy. Its friends. Its opportunity. Its substance. Its consciousness. It's money. It could be anything. Supply, the Ascended Master's invincible, victorious supply, contains everything from the heart of God. Now then, since the world is taking its initiation in this great cosmic love that is required to purify and harmonize things, then those of you who understand this law can demand the Ascended Master's invincible victory of the love that solves every problem. Now I am charging this to you tonight, into your energy, into your life, your world. Thank you so much. Now supposing you want to solve your problems and be rid of the struggle, or whatever is required. Keep calling the Ascended Master's invincible victory into the condition, and then once you charge that into it and ask for the Ascended Master's invincible love to bring it to pass, then don't mull it over again and take it out of the hands of your presence or the Ascended Host. And cover it over with a lot of doubt and fear and wondering if this person is going to do that, or somebody else is going to do something else. You must let it alone once you. Discourse 6. 137. Put it into the heart of love, and if people will only let other people alone, you could have heaven on earth in no time. Whether you believe me tonight or not, matters very little, except to you. I know I am telling you the truth. I know I am stating the law that acts a million times out of a million. And so when turmoil comes, take your mind off of people, and put it back into the heart of your own, blessed I am presence, just as if you arose into the heart flame of your, mighty I am presence, and say, here I am, come, into the invincible victory of your heart, and here I stay. Until your sacred fire has handled that condition. Now when you feel your oneness with that heart flame of your, mighty I am presence, it will be a very short time that your decrees will begin to take on instantaneous fulfillment. This acknowledgement of the Ascended Master's invincible victory of the fulfillment of your call, these things are needed, my dear ones, because you must specify as you go along the pathway of mastery. You must specify what you require. You can't take anything for granted, because you are becoming a master of creation, and therefore, you have to design what you want, command energy and substance to come into that form, and you have to. 138 The, I am, discord, design it. And then you give it your life by love, by which it lives. There is nothing can live in your world unless you give it your life, either through your calls or your feeling or your action. Now then, let us apply that to the sanctuary here and demand the ascended master's victory of such perfection of the sacred love from the heart of the, mighty I am presence, that it becomes a sun, a magnet which can reach out its light rays and draw those life streams here who are ready for this light at this time, and that opens the door for the higher mental bodies of those life streams to bring into the use of this light, teach them the use of this light for the protection of America. Now the people are the government of the land under the constitution, and therefore, if the will of the people does not exert its God authority and power and will of feeling to demand God control of the government. 
How are you going to remove from office or from outer channels those who are doing wrong, will you tell me? Now then, when you want the victory of God's government in America, then you've got to issue those commands. My dear ones, you're doing this all the time in your daily life. If you go into the restaurant, you have to say what you want to eat for your meal, don't you? Discourse 6 Well, there's boundless supply of everything in the atmosphere about you and in the Ascended Master's octave. There are all powerful beings in this universe greater than all mankind's creation of discord, and therefore, your call, mark you, to their heart flames for the victory of the Ascended Masters here, brings heaven on earth. You've got to charge this into your homes, into your business, into yourselves, into each other. How much do you want other people to win their victory? Now I am not just speaking of your relatives. I am speaking of your friends and sometimes your enemy. How much do you want your enemies to win the victory of God? Have you ever faced that? Do you want your enemies to be free from their wrong and become the victory of God? Thank you, precious ones. Now we're gaining ground. Now sometimes when people do wrong and they are very unpleasant to deal with, if you can make this call for the victory of the ascended masters to take command of them and keep your world locked against their wrong, then before you go to bed at night, when you say, I am, the ascended master's law of forgiveness and consuming flame of all inharmonious action and human. Consciousness. Mighty I am presence, forgive all mankind's wrong and take it out of the universe tonight. Now you just try this. It will bring you a tremendous release, and it will give to us a little more energy every day, until a certain proportion of it reaches the concentration by which the sacred fire comes into outer conditions to act more quickly. You see, no matter what is wrong in the world, some part of life has to give some action of the sacred fire into that wrong in order to stop it. So if the beings directing that sacred fire do not give it, then how is the wrong ever to be consumed? Now then, the use of the sacred fire must be understood by mankind, and the more you can realize that every call for the sacred fire released into physical conditions is the victory of the ascended masters, love in this world, you will find the fulfillment of the law is at hand. And then when you want yourselves to give obedience, and you charge yourselves with the victory of ascended master obedience to the law, to your mighty I am presence and the ascended host, who are the law to this system of worlds, then there comes a rush, as it were, of the love and the sacred fire and the directing intelligence that changes things, my. Discourse 6. 1. Dear ones, overnight, that lifts the shadows and dissolves the struggle, and the solution of problems appears and you wonder why in the world you didn't know that solution before. When you begin to charge the outer self with the victory of ascended master obedience, you'll find one thing after another clearing. The mind will be clear, the feelings at ease, the conditions around you will be more harmonious, and the pressure and the struggle that has seemed almost insurmountable, you will find dissolving and dropping away. Now the day that you are determined to keep charging forth the victory, invincible victory of ascended master obedience in yourselves, you will be so occupied with loving your presence and receiving the victory of that perfection. You will scarcely know that other people around you have any imperfection. Doesn't that sound like magic? Well, try it. Thank you, precious ones. Anybody that challenges the truth I have told and the truth beloved Saint Germain has given, I say to you. I challenge you to try it and prove me wrong. Anybody that doesn't believe the truth of what we say can prove that truth fast enough if they really will apply the law. We. 142 The. Are not concerned. We are free. But if there is that feeling of doubt and fear and rebellion and irritation against that which is right, I challenge them to use this call and see whether or not I tell the truth. Mankind have been so encased in the discord of their own selfishness that they doubt the very power of life that beats their hearts, and I am determined to shatter that which has bound them through the centuries. Thank you so much, precious ones. Now if you will go forward and try this, I assure you, you're not left alone a second. There isn't a human being under this radiation who will sincerely try this many times a day, who will not have the most amazing assistance and the most victorious, marvelous results. And then miracles will become your natural way of life, and the ascended master's heaven descends to earth to enfold you, at least. And then as you go forward, its radiation spreads and you can give its blessings to life wherever you abide. And that is the glory of the victory of God's heart. 
I have called you, dear hearts of the light, haven't I, a long time. Even since the shrine days, I have called you, dear hearts of the sacred fire, because that has been my blessing of love to you. Discourse 6. 104. And it shall ever abide until your victory of that love of the sacred fire has consumed everything around you that has ever cast a shadow, of struggle upon your life stream. And I am your friend for eternity, as is every ascended master and cosmic being. And when the mighty master Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, he gave the promise of his love. He has poured the flame of that love from his heart around every life stream that has come onto this earth since he gave that vow, and so have others of the ascended host. Stream. And I am your friend for eternity, as is every ascended master and cosmic being. And when the mighty master Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, he gave the promise of his love. He has poured the flame of that love from his heart around every life stream that has come onto this earth since he gave that vow, and so have others of the ascended host. I wonder if mankind understand what it means to have the love of the ascended host, but for which they would have long ago gone to the second death by their own discord. If it were not for the retreats of the ascended masters throughout the world, whose radiation of the sacred fire focused in each retreat continually pours forth its purifying love into that locality, mankind would long ago have been destroyed by their own creation. So people better accept the love of the ascended host. They better learn that we exist. They better reach up to the only channel on earth or in heaven that can help them. So, when age after age, great cosmic beings have come and poured their love to mankind. 144 The, I am, discourses on supply. To try to turn them away from their selfishness and discord, these cosmic beings had better be remembered and loved and called to, if they are going to survive their own creation of destruction. The ascended masters and the cosmic law have offered this assistance to mankind century after century. You, for nearly 25 years, have been carried in the heart of love, and powers without limit have been offered for your use. And if you will take your stand now for the victory of Ascended Master obedience, the victory of the Ascended Master's love to the earth, it will protect and redeem you as it has others of the past. And so when I have called you, dear hearts of the light, dear hearts of the sacred fire, it is not idly that I have given you that name. Now, precious ones, I ask you to call the Ascended Master's invincible victory of eternal love to your city that blessed me with these experiences, and my heart's love shall ever stand your guard. Until the light becomes so bright that everything that enters into it becomes raised into the heaven of the Ascended Master's way of life. You have a great responsibility in this city because you have had great blessing here, and I shall, may I say, be a resident of this city. Thank you, precious ones. Discourse 6 145 Since certain governmental activities have been anchored and will be anchored here, and since I am interested in the victory of God's government for America, I assure you. I will be a resident here to bring the God government that my heart once gave and my heart still guards and my heart will compel to be victorious. Thank you, precious ones. So tonight, I take you into the heart of that ascended master victory and love from the ascended master's octave that makes you victorious. And may you ever feel its flame about you, and use it to forever repel the shadows if they ever attempt to approach. So I raise you and forever hold your hand until the Ascended Master's victory and their miracle love are the government of the land, and the raising power and resurrection of the people into the freedom that beloved Saint Germain's heart is giving and will forever give. Until the earth itself stands a blazing sun, eternally free, and mankind have become the Ascended Masters of perfection forever. Thank you with all my heart, and won't you be seated. Record CD 1741 Discourse 7 Beloved Lady Master Nada January 7, 1958 Chicago, Illinois Beloved ones of my heart, let us enter tonight as deeply as possible into the comprehension of what the sacred fire means and is and can do for you all. You consider the fire element in the outer a physical manifestation, and yet it is part and parcel of the sacred fire. Now the sacred fire is all constructive activities of the fire element because the sacred fire cannot be used to produce any destructive activity for any reason. Therefore, since you use physical fire to consume the debris of the physical world, 
substance that is no longer of use is returned to the universal through that fire element. It is purified and returned, where it can be used over again. The sacred fire is the same activity that goes on within your mental and feeling world in the substance of your inner bodies. 146. Discourse 7. 147. That whatever accumulation has been imposed upon them by discord can be dissolved and consumed, the substance purified and returned to the universal to be used over again, because there is this great economy in the great scheme of life everywhere. No matter what activity of life is manifesting anywhere in infinite space, there's always the divine economy that holds things purified and in divine order and divine balance. Therefore, the student should understand the necessity of watching the outer self in its use of energy, that it does not waste energy doing unnecessary, or indulging in activity that is useless. Now mankind is bound by their own energy. There isn't a thing manifesting in anybody's world that is of discord that isn't attached to the individual's own life stream and energy, because the individual, through the attention, either created it or opened the outer self and connected with it. Therefore, when you realize how long the mighty I am presence, through hundreds and thousands of embodiments in which it has supplied energy to individuals, and yet the individuals do not attain the ascension, you can see why human creation is so heavily energized. And why it seems difficult to free the outer self from its accumulation, because. 148 The I am discourses on supply. Everybody's human accumulation is far more heavily energized than anybody understands until you come into the ascended state, and see what mankind has created through the centuries. The useless use of energy, the waste of energy, and in addition to the deliberate misqualification of it, there is so much that is absolutely useless to the mighty I am presence or the ascended host. Therefore, if people have created things that are useless, well then, it's just like a barnacle to a ship. Someday it's got to be dissolved and consumed and taken away from the individual if freedom is to be attained. Now these are the things that produce more illness than people realize. Since one of my main channels of assistance to mankind is healing, I am bringing this to your attention, that we may assist you to be healed more quickly, permanently, and perfectly. So whenever discord appears, demand that all energy you've ever used in the past be compelled to be purified now. And if you will demand this, much habit in the mental and feeling world that goes on creating discord, much of that habit will be consumed. And you will just naturally keep your attention into an activity with which you are concerned that raises you and the rest of life into, greater purity and greater perfection also. Discourse 7. 149. But you must demand your freedom from your own habits of discord. I know, often you say, my human creation. We all have watched this, but if you will set to work to demand, by your mighty I am presence, blazing sacred fire, the violet consuming flame, demand your freedom from every habit that limits you or is destructive in any way. Now habits are far more heavily energized than you understand, and the focus of that whirl of energy is in the emotional body as well as in the mind. The habit of letting the attention run free as a little wild dog has to be broken, my dear ones. You've got to leash your attention and absolutely forbid it to be held on anything, that is going to drag you down into more limitation or discord. Therefore, tonight I hope I may assist you to control the attention by giving you something so wonderful to think about that nothing else has any pull, upon you. Now that's one way to get you off the ground and into the air. Thank you so much. My principal thought tonight to help you do this is that, when you find outer things pulling too heavily upon you. You turn your attention not only back to the glorious beauty and perfection and 150 the I am discourses on supply. Glorious light and power of the sacred fire which your beloved mighty I am presence is, but you look into our octave and ask to be shown the temples of the sacred fire, the magnificence and the beauty that is there. And that you have a right to call into manifestation down here to begin to make this world like our octave. Now if you will do this, many magnificent things will come into your outer experience. Much blessing will come to you that you may bless others. And the power that you will draw into yourselves by keeping your attention upon the beauty, and the power that is in our octave will just simply amaze you with the blessings it will bring into your outer use. So every time a habit disturbs you, use your own divine authority, and you can say, through the sacred fire authority of I am, that, I am, which I am. 
I command that to stand aside, and be annihilated from the universe while I enter into my permanent association with the perfection of the ascended master's octave, of life. And I demand that perfection come into me and fill my world, that its light may forever lead all light, all life into the greater light and out of the distress of this world forever. Discourse 7 151. Now I have many reasons for putting this to you this way tonight. This is a powerful raising activity, and when your love goes to the great central sun magnet, which is the raising activity within life, the raising activity of the sacred fire, it not only will raise your attention to this greater power of perfection, but it will raise the vibratory action of everything in yourself and your world. And the moment you raise its vibratory action, it produces more perfection for you. This is a mechanical thing, pure and simple, but you must be master of your attention, and you have to command that attention just as certainly as an officer has to command an army. You have got to command your attention. Now the average person doesn't do that, even the student body. You find your attention on something, then you try to make the mind go to something else. But if you'll issue the command at night before you go to sleep and in the morning when you wake up, my beloved mighty I am presence with your power of the sacred fire, I demand my attention this next day be held on the perfection of your world, and I demand your perfection blaze in, through, and around me and fill my world, and with your love and power of. 152 The, I am, discourses on supply. The sacred fire, I do this thing. Don't say, I will do. Say, I do. The minute you say, I will do, you put it off into the future you'll have some amazing experiences. If you don't have all the explanation you want in the mind, demand the illumination that tells you the truth of what you need to know next. Don't let the mind go wool-gathering, and the attention go here, and wonder who's there, and what your last embodiments were or something else that gets you into trouble. You don't do that. The minute you find your attention wandering on things that the sinister force wants to keep your attention upon until it can take your attention away from your presence, you will have to command your attention to give obedience to your higher mental body, and forbid it to do anything else. You've got to command it, my dear ones. You can be the biggest dictator in the world to yourself on this. Now people that like to boss somebody else around and just manage everybody, this is one of the most wonderful outlets for that desire, and it will give other people a rest, too. So, blessed ones, thank you, precious ones. Now this is a very powerful healing activity. That's the reason I explain it to you tonight, because distress. Discourse 7 153 In the atomic structure of the body is the result of destructive habit in the past, and the destructive habit was created by allowing the attention to go to something that was not constructive. So habits, whether they be in the mind or the feeling world, matters not. If through destructive habit there have been creations of discord imposed upon the etheric body or the emotional body, the mental body, by destructive pictures in the mind, someday, sometime, somewhere, you've got to demand their annihilation by conscious command. I want to say, in regard to the use of the law of forgiveness, watch out that the intellect doesn't put the responsibility on just speaking the words. Many people say, I call on the law of forgiveness, and they think that's all that's necessary, and that's not it at all. You speak the word of command, I am, the ascended master's law of forgiveness and the consuming flame of all inharmonious action. My beloved mighty I am presence, blaze enough violet consuming flame there to wipe out what is wrong, replace it by what is right, and fulfill your divine plan. Because everything, my dear ones, that the human has done in the misuse of. 154 The, I am, discourses on supply. Energy is an interference with the fulfillment of that divine plan. You've got to have that divine plan fulfilled in you if you are going to be healed permanently. The healing is not just a matter of the control of the atomic structure of the flesh, because the cause of discord is in the emotional body, the etheric body, and the mind. So, blessed ones, I bring this to your attention, that when you are aware of destructive or careless habits limiting you, turn back with fierce determination and demand whatever sacred fire concentration is necessary to wipe those habits out of you completely and unconditionally. 
Now when you want that and demand it enough, it can be done in one flash, and therefore, if the habit does not disappear, then each time you have got to go back to the higher mental body and demand it with more fierce determination. Not until you are completely free from all destructive habits will you understand how you have been bound, because I tell you, precious ones, and sometimes, if we could become discouraged, we would weep if we could when we see people staying in limitation from which they could be free. Just because they are contented to stay, they are contented to stay in their limitation. Discourse 7 155 now watch out that you cut yourselves free from the whole race consciousness that, oh, we've got to always accept some evil with all good. If there ever was a lot of nonsense, that's it. That's taught everywhere in the outer world. Oh, well, if you have something good, some evil always has to go with it. Well, if God has to have evil, it's a funny kind of a God. So I want you to be free from that which has bound you and limited you simply for no reason on earth except that it's a barnacle that you accumulated and you could, in one mighty determination and demand, you could drop that accumulation away from you as if you threw off an old garment. That is why the beloved divine director said to you, my loved ones, if you only knew what your feelings could do for you, you would be free in a few hours, with your love and devotion to your presence, and your use of its sacred fire authority to command the end, complete and unconditional. Of every bit of habit that is a limitation of any kind in you or your world. My dear ones, I want you free. And if you will try this, let us see how much we can concentrate on it in the next few weeks especially, because I want. 156 The, I am, to, you to be free as quickly as possible, because we need to use more power through you for America, and what? To control what America is facing. Now this is a matter of national importance to you all. Thank you so much. I trust one haven't been too hard on you tonight. But when we are hoping so much to get people free from distress, that they may have greater use of the sacred fire, it is because your outer self, and that includes your inner bodies, must be purified and set free, and kept at ease up to a certain intensity before we can release more sacred fire through you that will enable you to do much greater service in your own activities and to the nation, because the intensity of the sacred fire that blazes in, through, and around you or your affairs is determined entirely by the purity within your own inner vehicles, because we cannot shock you by intensifying too suddenly the action of the sacred fire within. It has to be governed and regulated to the atomic structure, the cohesive power of the atomic structure of your bodies. Therefore, if you demand your freedom from every destructive habit, then you will find the violet consuming flame will act very much more rapidly in your outer affairs. Discourse 7. 100. So, blessed ones, in the fullness of all of our heart's love, we want you free. And we want to help mankind in the healing activities to be assisted as powerfully as possible, because when we heal individuals, if we cannot bring illumination to the mind, then there is a reaction. If we lift the penalty from an individual who will not learn a lesson, we may not lift that penalty without reaction which we do not care to impose upon the individual. Only when illumination comes to the mind through an experience, can discord be set aside and wiped out of the universe, and when the individual has the illumination, then there is the willingness to make restitution for the discord created. Now we deal with the mass of mankind, and we have healed and healed and healed down through the centuries, and yet mankind goes on desecrating and destroying one body after another. We are hoping to raise the whole student body out of that condition as rapidly as possible and the speed of your accomplishment depends on the determination that is aroused within you to make this application to free yourselves, from every destructive habit. I hope I may have the privilege and the joy, with the beloved mighty. Saint German, of helping you to put an end to every destructive habit as soon as possible. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. I won't hold you long, but I just want to say one more thing which I am sure you will remember. You have no idea what habits there are in your intellect, in your speech, and in your feelings about your shortage of money or supply, which is, to a very large degree, a race consciousness in all mankind. I want you to break these habits so you may be disconnected from the race acceptance of lack or limitation of any kind. The race acceptance is due to fear and doubt. So, blessed ones, if you will take your stand that you demand the breaking of every habit of thought, feeling, 
and spoken word that accepts any lack or limitation in you or your world. I will try to be a reminder to you so that you go to work on this with a fierce determination to free yourselves as rapidly as possible. The more harmonious you keep yourselves, the quicker can supply come to you. But if you will, every time you use supply in the outer world, you hold the picture and train the mind to receive a larger supply from the hand of 100. Your mighty I am presence into yourselves, into your affairs. Just the training of the intellect to hold the picture, to speak the word. And to have the feeling that from here comes the supply, you will put your presence first as the channel of supply instead of something in the outer world here that you feel you can touch and feel as a channel from which you could get the supply. What I am trying to set is a habit within you of the placing of the presence first and an acknowledgement of the presence as the giver, and not the outer world as a channel of supply. If the presence wants to use it from the outer world and it puts its hand out there and draws to you the conditions which bring supply, that is its own business, but your feeling of security must come from placing your presence first, and that is a matter of setting the habit. So whenever supply goes out from you and you use it in the outer world, send it forth to bless and fulfill the divine plan, and immediately, when you send it out, turn back to your presence and ask the presence to supply you with ten times more or a thousand times more, whatever you want. Now the same thing is true of your health. After you have used your energy, and you do. 160 The, I am, discourses on supply. Use energy, you know, all the time, waking and sleeping. You're using energy to breathe and move about. But if you will form the habit of turning back to your, beloved I am presence, and asking it to keep you supplied with more than you can ever use, more than it knows you are going to need. You again form the habit in the outer intellect of placing the presence first and acknowledging that that is the source of supply. Therefore, as you think upon this, if it doesn't seem clear to you or if you don't remember it often enough, call to me and I will be your divine memory for a while until we get the habit set, and then I'll leave you on your own. Thank you so much, precious ones. Now then, if you'll love your mighty I am presence and thank your beloved I am presence for all the love that has come to you down through the centuries since you left the great central sun, because everything good you have ever had in your beings and worlds has been the gift of some power and activity of love. Therefore if you are grateful for that, and you thank your mighty I am presence and the ascended host for all that their love has done for you down through the ages, my dear ones, it will throw the door wide open for. Discourse 7 160. Your boundless blessings to come into your outer use and set you free from the limitations of outer world conditions. May my love prove that to you by its enfolding mantle of sacred fire power, an invincible victory over all the limitations of this world. I commend you to your freedom through this which I have drawn to your attention tonight, and which I will help to stand the guard to protect you until your new habits take the place of those that have been your limitations. And we will all go forward to the greater happiness that lifts the rest of life to happiness also. So in the fullness of the action of the great cosmic law may we ever be grateful for all that love does through life and for life, and may the love of the sacred fire become so overwhelming to you in your world that it does fill you and all you contact with its happiness, for eternity. And your boundless supply is released, forever to grow greater in your outer use. Never may you know discord or lack or limitation again. I shall prod you and prod you and prod you until you remember my love that wants you to be free. Thank you with all my heart. Record CD 4, Discourse 8 Blessed, Mighty Lord Moha Chohan July 2, 1961 Santa Fe, New Mexico Blessed Ones of the Sacred Fire I wish to give you help this hour, and to draw in and around you our cosmic comprehending intelligence and consciousness that contains within it the fiery truth and the great cosmic light from the great central sun that is all perfection. And is the power within life to draw forth that perfection into outer action everywhere. I wish to remind you that life contains within it, the life in human beings contains within it all powers of action from the great central sun which are within the great central sun. You are a sun presence, a sun focus of those sacred fire powers localized in your own heart in the outer self, projected to you by your, beloved I am presence, and higher mental body. Discourse 8. 106. The life that is loaned to you to use through this outer form contains within it all the qualities and activities and powers of life, the life in the great central sun. 
I trust one may make clear to you in your feeling this hour that the life which you think is your own, is only loaned to you from the great central sun. And it contains within it the great central sun magnet's power to draw these magnificent powers of life's great creative activity, into your outer use for one purpose only, to expand the perfection and the love from the great central sun into the life by which you are surrounded and into that life which has served you by allowing you to use the blessings that are focused into this world to produce perfection only. Mankind, in the terrific selfishness of the centuries, has held to the outer self these magnificent activities of creation that were placed in this world to be used to create greater perfection, greater happiness, and greater blessings to all life that passes the way of earth. And there is nothing so stifling to the freedom of the individual as selfishness. If the attention, the feeling, the desire, and the activity of the outer self are only concerned with what the body wants and what the individual wants for himself or herself, there is nothing ahead but distress and limitation and destruction. The light, unless every heart flame embodied in this world understands the truth of this law, and lives to expand all the perfection of that sacred fire to glorify the mighty I am presence, and flood to every particle of life all the greater blessings of life, unless the individual lives for that. The light does not expand through that individual's life stream. The expansion of the light from within the unfed flame in the heart is the action of perfection, and it must give of itself if it is to have more from the ascended master's octave to produce greater perfection within itself. Mastery and freedom can only come to the individual who is willing to give his life, or her life into the ever-expanding perfection that fills the universe around the individual, for all perfection of manifestation has been drawn into existence by the great central sun magnet's love which has given its own life into the use of the individual with free will who says, I am, and is the focus of the great creative activities of the central sun. Discord and distress, suffering, and limitation have only existed because of the rebellion in the feeling of the individual that does not want to give that love, and that perfection from the great central sun through the outer self to bless the world around it with greater perfection. 100. And there is nothing so stifling on this earth as selfishness. Dear ones, you can see everywhere in the world around you the action and reaction of this law. If those who raise your crops, if they do not put the seed in the ground, if they do not give of that which they have, whether it be the seed into the ground or the energy of the muscles to cultivate the food that is planted, how are you going to have food produced? Therefore, every individual in this world who eats the food grown by nature, the powers of nature and forces of the elements, Every individual who eats that food is obligated under the law of balance to give back to the life that grows that food, love, blessing, light. And the command from the mighty I am presence and the great central sun that ever blesses it with happiness and greater perfection. The individual who will not do that will come into poverty again and again and again, and only suffering lies ahead. Now since it is my privilege, and I have given it a long time to give my love to the powers of nature and forces of the elements by the love which I have given. I am the controller of the life in the plant life of this world that has manifested the perfection of my love's command, to grow that which blesses the rest of life, and allows mankind to embody here and use those blessings to attain the ascension. So when I refer to the power of the great central sun magnet, it is the power within your own heart's flame, within your own life to draw to the life around you the great powers and blessings and miracles and love and light and power, without limit from the great central sun to bless and bless and bless and bless the life in the world around you, whether that life be in the plant life, whether it be in the minerals that grow in the ground you walk upon, whether it be the life in the air you breathe, whether it be the life in the water you drink, whether it be the life in other individuals who are pouring forth constructive activities, matters not. The life by which you are surrounded is entitled to your love, your blessing, your victory, and your ability to call to the mighty I am presence in the great central sun to draw here the love and the purity which blesses all life with greater good, forever expanding. There isn't a human being on the earth who will lack for any good thing if the outer self will make it a habit to just bless and be grateful for everything by which the world around the individual is filled and action takes place. Discourse 160 do not take for granted the blessings of modern civilization and imagine that they cannot disappear, because they can. When mankind becomes so selfish that individuals are only concerned with their own personal gratification, the blessings of nature disappear. The blessings of love disappear. And why do they disappear? 
because the selfishness does not allow the great central sun magnet's love, and all the powers of light which are within it, to expand through the individual those blessings that help the rest of life to raise into the ascended master's octave. And unless an individual's life is used to raise the outer self into the ascension, and unless that life is allowed to pour forth through the outer self to lift the rest of mankind and the rest of life into the ascended master's octave, the divine plan is not being fulfilled. Beloved ones, it has been my experience to watch mankind two and a half million years create one destructive activity after another, simply by selfishness. Selfishness stagnates the expanding flow of life's perfection and boundless gifts from the great central sun through its manifestation through all worlds. The world today is in the throes of frightful, destructive conditions for no, when the life from the central, 168 the, I am, conditions for no reason at all except selfishness. When the life from the central sun that is loaned to the outer self to gain the ascension, and in that gaining, Help the rest of life to ascend, if that life is not used to lift the rest of life into greater perfection, then the blessings of the great central sun magnet cease to flow. Because they are not allowed an opening through which to expand their blessings to the rest of the universe, and fill it with light until each individual becomes a sun. You are in reality a sun presence, each of you. Your, beloved mighty I am presence, the electronic body, is a blazing sun presence. The causal body is a sun presence. The higher mental body is a sun presence, and the outer self should be a sun presence. So until the light of our love is allowed to expand in this world the greater perfection from our octave, the divine plan is not being fulfilled. You cannot live to yourselves alone. It is impossible. The individual who is self-centered and not concerned about giving to the rest of life the blessings life bestows and loans the outer self, the individual who will not be concerned about giving good to the world around it is in darkness indeed and that darkness is selfishness. Discord. 1. We, who have given everything from our octave, until the light about us becomes so bright that we must close that off slightly when we dwell with you, should realize to what extent the individual can draw forth from the great central sun the illumining presence of the love that is the treasure house of all. I could take every human being on this earth that is poverty-stricken or lacks any good thing, and I can pour the love of my life, my heart, upon that individual and those conditions, and I can hold that there until they become luminous, and when they become luminous, every supply of every good thing will manifest. That is what love can do. And when people lack, whether it be finance, health, strength, conditions, matter not, enough love to the, beloved I am presence. Enough love and gratitude to every particle of life in infinite space for all that it is and all that it manifests, of the consciousness from the great central sun, will flow to bless the individual who loves it. There is no power greater anywhere in existence. There is no intelligence greater. There is no fiery truth greater. There is no power greater than the love of the great central sun which brings its life here, loans it to individuals, and opens the way for the ascension to be attained, that, as an ascended being, a sun being, it may create other suns and systems of worlds. How much energy do you imagine in the outer world today, can the great cosmic presence, the mighty I am, and the ascended host, and the great cosmic law, which is embodied in them, can use for the ascension of mankind or the earth? How much of the energy mankind is using every day in the outer world this hour do you think can be used to attain the ascension? There isn't one tenth of one percent, not one. In fact, it's much less than that. Unless the energy of this world is qualified with light and commanded to manifest the perfection of light. Commanded to manifest the perfection of the love from the great central sun that gives it, and expects to expand perfection through it to fill this world with happiness, unless the life and the energy of life are used to manifest that, the divine plan cannot exist in the experience of human beings. The outer world is stifling with its selfishness and its determination to blight the rest of the life streams embodied in this world. Do you not think they need our love? Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. 100. Now every one of you who will let the light of our love, and the command of our sacred fire mastery go forth from you into conditions around you to manifest the boundless supply of thee. Ascended Master's octave that is invincible against misuse everywhere forever, you. 
if you will just let this go forth to bless the rest of life, you must of necessity be abundantly supplied, because as we flood it through you to the life around you, we will fill you with itself first. And then our ascended master supply, ever expanding in and through you, fills your world with all of the blessings, the manifestations, and the wealth of our world. Will you join me today and help me to release our wealth in, through, and around the, I am, student body, that at least where you abide, our world will abide with you? Thank you so much, precious ones. I shall try the experiment. The individual who each day uses the energy of the outer self to let the higher mental body pour forth its blessing of love and light, and goodwill to every other part of life, will allow the continual flow, not only from the higher mental body, but from our ascended master octave. Enfolding and amplifying that, it will let a river of that blessing flow in and around you to be a blessing to all. One second the rest of what lives around you. And since life everywhere must expand perfection as time goes on, the more you help it to accept perfection now and live in the expanding consciousness of our ascended master octave, the more every good thing in your world will expand. Won't you try to use our ascended master expanding consciousness in yourselves to expand everything good in you and the world around you? Just expand it flood it and expand it and leave the results with us. Then you could not lack for any good thing. If people would only be interested and look up and be concerned with the life and the consciousness and the love, and the power of energy that fills the heavens with such magnificent manifestations, such beauty that you see in the sunset or a sunrise, such beauty as you see in a clear sky or the clouds or the powers of nature. When you see that, pour your love to it, and ask your, beloved I am presence, to bless it with everything that the great central sun contains to produce perfection, invincible and ever-expanding. If you fill your mind, your sight, your feeling, your consciousness, your atmosphere, and the world about you with your love and gratitude for 100 all the good that is in manifestation, and you call for greater blessings to expand that good and fill it with the ascended master's octave of perfection, my dear ones, you cannot give that to life without having greater blessings flood in and around you from our octave, because as you let it flow, each wave becomes greater. And sometimes when I see people in poverty, which I so much do not want to see, and I know that within life is the power to just pour enough light, and love of that light, poured into the condition, to cause supply and blessings and beauty to manifest there. My heart longs to fill the world and every particle of life in it with all the perfection and blessings from our octave. But I may not rob you of opportunity, for you can only gain your mastery by the expansion of your own heart's flame, by letting the light of its love go before you, fill the world around you and you recognize only the boundless supply of perfection which is within life. Which is our octave of existence, which is flowing constantly everywhere without limit. Let it flood everything in your beings and worlds with its boundless supply of perfection. Did you ever think of perfection as supply? When, 174 the, I am, you call to your, beloved I am presence, or us to fill everything in your beings and worlds with our boundless supply of perfection, the perfection of our life contains everything and only the divine plan in action could ever manifest in, through, and around, and to you all. Try to remember to call the ascended master's boundless supply of perfection, invincible forever, to come in and around you all. And give it, just give it to all life everywhere you go like the sun gives light to the earth. It gives and gives and gives of its own life. And do you know what will happen? The sun, the physical sun, in the giving of its life, which is the love of the great beings who have created it as that life and light are given to the people in this world and to this world, as it is given to the planets of the system, its own great sacred fire presence grows greater. And the light and the love which it gives, one day, makes every planet in this system a sun. That is what I am trying to bring to your consciousness this hour, that everything that is of perfection in life, no matter where it manifests, is ever expanding and giving the opulence of its perfection to the infinite manifestations by which it is surrounded and that is why all life is one. Discord, one. Therefore, the perfection of the ascended master's octave, if allowed to come through human beings, would make every human being an ascended being, would make all in this world the perfection of the ascended master's octave, which, I assure you, is a sun realm of life in which no discord can come. In which no distress or lack or limitation could ever manifest. Someday this world must be like that. 
and it only becomes like that by those who become ascended from this world, for as they become the sun presence, their life pours its blessing to the earth until it becomes self-luminous and a sun also. You are really a sun being from the heart of the great central Sunday. Your destiny is to become an ascended being who is a sun being. Your duty while here is to draw forth the blessings and the perfection of the great central sun through yourselves, to make your atmosphere and your world wherever you abide the sun realm of life, and I assure you, you cannot lack for any good thing. Only the love from the great central sun, which is the light of infinite space, contains all of everything, and that light is the gift of love from the sacred fire heart presence of the great central sun. You are an individualized son of that presence. You have all of the powers within life to manifest as a Sunday. Your destiny is the ascension, when you become a sun presence in manifestation for eternity. So if you will help me illumine the world by blazing the light of your love wherever you abide, and you call the ascended master's opulence of perfection to ever fill you and all you contact. And you command the sun manifestations from the ascended master's octave to fill you in your world with our ever-expanding perfection your very recognition and acknowledgement of a sun presence, will make you accept a certain activity of the light that becomes eternal in and around you. And where light is, lack cannot be, because light contains all of everything and is the radiation of the love from the sacred fire. So if you acknowledge yourselves as a sun presence of the ascended master's perfection of sacred fire love, and its mastery over all that is of the shadows, you will soon find you are the presence of the light that casts no shadow and into which a shadow cannot come. You can be the sun presence of, the light of God that never fails, to blaze its perfection everywhere without limit, and into which no evil can live or ever come. Discord 1. So if you will live in this recognition, if you'll dwell within the love which our light is, if you want the opulence of our perfection, if you care for the protection of our sacred fire mastery. Keep acknowledging everything in your beings and worlds as the victory sun presence of anything and everything that is constructive and you know not yet what blessings would come to you from the seven mighty Elohim of creation who are the seven mighty builders of the manifested universe in which you dwell. When you command everything in your beings and worlds to be the Elohim sun presence and the victory of their ever-expanding perfection, and let their love have a chance to pour forth through you the greater powers of their great realms of life, my dear ones. You will be so occupied calling into existence their almighty creation of perfection, you will forget to look at human creation except to be the expanding sun presence that consumes it, and lifts it from all life wherever you abide. So if you will come into our realm of life, our heart realm of life, and using the great heart command of life, demand our great sacred fire sun presence to flood everything in your beings and worlds with the supply of our perfection, we. 178 The, I am, discord, will supply it if you will open the door, give us the opportunity, and stand within it until you, too become the presence of its victory forever. Our heart realm of life is the most comfortable place to abide, and, in it, only the happiness of all eternity can ever exist. If you want to be happy, there is where you may come for eternity, and I assure you, you will never have any regrets. If you abide with us, become the sun presence, let us pour a sun presence through you to all that lives, you can only be the happiness of our love. And the greatest happiness in the universe is to give the love that illumines all things, and as it expands, raises all into that love and that happiness also. I am the giver of that sun presence of life, and I will enfold you in its blazing victory if you care to help me bring into this world the sun presence of our life's love, an ever-expanding supply of perfection. May you go forward and experiment with this and use the power. Let it teach you of itself. And then as we watch you manifest it, we can always abide with you, and you will know no such thing as lack or limitation or distress ever again. Just see the sun presence of our love, and call its light into everything until there are no more shadows, and. Discourse 8. 179. You never again contact anything that is of distress. Our world is the world of light. Our love is the sun presence of its victory and the glorifying supply of perfection ever expands the universe around you with its greater light and greater glory, and greater freedom of eternal happiness. Thank you with all my heart's love forever. Record CD 927 Discourse 9 Beloved Messenger Number 1 from the Secret Love Star August 14, 1962 Shasta Springs, California Beloved Ones of My Heart 
Tonight let us enter into the deep realization of the great effort life goes to in the sustaining of a world and life upon it. To enable mankind to make conscious effort to become the ascended being, by which not only is freedom eternal, but the limitless ability to use all that is in the universe for the creation of perfection comes forth through the individual to manifest the fulfillment of the divine plan and keep all life manifesting eternal happiness. As you enter into the use of these greater powers of the sacred fire and understand what effort life goes to, to enable manifestation to come forth and let humanity have the experiences in this world that enable mastery to express, then you will begin. One Discourse 100 To understand something of what the infinite power of life is, in not only this world, but in all worlds and in all manifestation. The mass of mankind is completely unaware of the great effort that life pours forth through the love of cosmic beings, to bring into this world the divine plan's fulfillment for the happiness of all. The majority of people in the world use the blessings and the wealth, and the manifestations of this world to do whatever the outer self wants to do, with almost no recognition that the gifts that are created here, and are sustained in their blessing to life, are some great being's life. And the love of that life to this world, that mankind may raise into the great mastery of the fulfillment of the divine plan and become a co creator of systems of worlds. Day after day mankind uses the blessings and powers of nature without one wave of love, and gratitude to the great beings whose life sustains the powers of nature upon this planet. If it were not for the love of the great cosmic beings who constantly guard the life of this world, there would be nothing here to sustain mankind that the experiences might be attained and the powers used by which the individual becomes an ascended being. 1. I hope to bring forth into outer explanation, perhaps on the radio, the realization that this world and all upon it belongs to the cosmic beings whose life created it, and whose life sustains it, and whose life and love supply the blessings of nature to the mankind of this world. The reason I am driving at this is because, knowing what I do of what is coming, I know that if those who are constructive are going to have supply in the immediate future, there must come more love and more gratitude to the beloved I am presence, and the ascended host in order to let the powers of nature draw into the outer use of the individual the wealth and the activities of supply, which enable the individual to exist and render the service that fulfills the divine plan. There is only one thing that keeps mankind in lack or limitation of any kind. There is only one thing that shuts off supply, and that is lack of love to the beloved I am presence. And that which causes the outer self to forget to love the presence is the discord of human selfishness. When mankind does not realize, and will not take time enough from outer world activities to be grateful for all the supply that is poured to the whole world by the love of great, cosmic beings of whom mankind knows nothing unless human beings awaken to. This one that, they go on century after century in poverty, in degradation, in the creation of destruction that ultimately destroys them. Now I challenge everyone who understands this law to pour love, first of all, to the, beloved I am presence, and all the ascended host who have created and sustained this system of worlds, to all the beings and powers of nature, and to the other planets of the system, and the cosmic beings who have poured their love to this world throughout the eons of time past. I challenge any human being and all put together, to turn the attention to this great divine source that gives all, and pouring love and gratitude there, remember that from there comes the life by which you live. From there comes the life by which the planet lives. From there comes the life by which the powers of nature live, and give their blessings to mankind for use in the creation of the perfection that manifests the divine plan in this world. And that divine plan fulfilled can never produce anything but happiness, not only for the individual but for all life everywhere forever. This is why the mighty Saint Germain said long ago in the beginning of this instruction, in the fullness of the presence, is the love that you require. In the fullness of the presence are the things that you desire. Now the intellect may say to you, well, there isn't an automobile in the presence. The idea, the picture, the divine pattern, the substance, the energy, the intelligence by which an automobile is created, came from the presence. It did not come from mankind's discord. So the beginning of the automobile did come from the presence. And it is this lack of understanding and lack of gratitude in the feeling of the outer self of human beings that causes the selfishness, the discord, and the distress, the limitation that produces lack in this world, no matter what kind of lack it is, 
because all supply of everything, all energy that is contained in this world and the powers of nature, all energy comes from the mighty I am presence, and the cosmic beings who are the great God presence of the manifested universe from the great central sun. If you will follow me and if you care to experiment with this, you will open the door to boundless supply. You will give me an opportunity to pour the substance and the love from the secret love star in concentrated action into your world and your use. We are pouring it completely to cover the earth at this time. We are enfolding the whole world. This 100 in the rays of light and the love of the life of the secret love star to bring here the love, wisdom, and power, the supply and the miracles and victories and blessings of life which the secret love star gives to manifestation. This has been enfolding the entire earth, but you, as individuals who understand this law, can have an intensified, constantly increasing, concentrated, individual outpouring and stream of those blessings into yourselves and into the world around you by your own conscious command, and by your love to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host and the secret love star first. It is because this is the law of life, it is because it is the giving of the great love presence of the universe, the sacred fire, that mankind has been told down through the ages, call unto me and I will answer thee. Prove me now if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing until there is not room to receive it. That is eternal truth. That is eternal law. That is eternal action of life. I hope you are one with it thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, and please just remain so. The mass of mankind struggle in the outer under all kinds of distress to gain a pittance of a living when, from above, with enough love to that, presence, would come the avalanche of every good thing in existence, that it would be poured into the use of the outer self so long as the harmony was maintained. And harmony means purity, and so long as the purity and harmony are maintained, there is no obstruction to the constant flow that is the ever-expanding action of life everywhere in the universe. There is no obstruction, there is no obstruction to the flow of energy between great systems of worlds. And in the planets of a system, there is no interruption with the flow of energy. That is the life that sustains those planets in a system. There is no interruption of the flow of light from the physical sun of this world except the shadows in this world, and the substance in this world of discord. There is no limitation in the sun. There's no limitation in the great central sun. The light is continually pouring forth. That light is life. Life is continually giving. Life is continually expanding. Life is continually, continually, continually supplying from the great central sun the boundless gifts of eternity. The secret love star is constantly pouring throughout the whole atmosphere of earth, and into the structure. 108. Of earth itself, great rivers of life, the love, the life, the substance, the harmony, the supply, the miracles, and the blessings and which are the outpouring from the secret love star. And that outpouring, if it were withdrawn, mankind would be in total chaos until annihilation took place. This is the great gift and the blessing of the love of the, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to every system of worlds, to all systems, to all that is in infinite space, and it includes you in this world, this city, your home, your individual activities. There is no such thing as the shutting off of the supply of life's boundless, ever-expanding blessings of love from the, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host. The mighty Saint German once said to these messengers, it wouldn't make any difference if the worst person on earth, the person that had the most terrible, destructive activity, if that individual made the call for light, the cosmic law would have to answer and release that light. That is the love from whence you proceed. That is the love you may use in this world to overcome everything that has ever caused distress to life. What greater gift could there be than the infinite life of the universe that offers its boundless love? That is the supply of everything your hearts could desire and is the supply of everything that can produce a civilization of perfection. The flow of these boundless gifts has built one civilization after another in this world has created one golden age after another in this world in which the magnificent master powers of life were loaned to mankind, and they were used through human beings over thousands of years. What then think you is the cause of the shadows of today's distress? What think you has created the chaos in the governments of the world? 
What think you is the creation of the sinister force that is in a mad onrush to pauperize this nation and to produce destruction everywhere? That does not come from the great beings whose life sustains the world, the great beings who possess the world, the great beings who own this world. The great beings who create the powers of nature upon this world still possess this world and own this world, and will yet purify and perfect this world and take it forward to its destiny as a sun. You are privileged to pass this way, use the boundless gifts that have been provided here, and draw forth the master powers from your, beloved I am presence, use them through the outer. 100. Physical self, provided you produce perfection out here that gives love and blessing to the rest of life like the sun gives light to the earth. And anyone who will accept that and give obedience to that action will be provided for. Because the very love that you pour to the next octave to your, beloved I am presence, or the ascended host is the energy from the physical self that the, presence, and the ascended ones take up and charge into it the fulfillment of your call. But you, the authority of your own energy, you must command perfection manifest. You must command the blessings of the universe to go forth to the rest of the life in this world to fulfill the divine plan, and produce the happiness that is the illumining presence. The happiness of your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host is a light. The love of the life of your, mighty I am presence, is a light. It creates light. It is light. It expands light. It compels light to flow everywhere. And light is your supply and the sustaining power within that supply, for if you withdraw light, you have nothing. Light is the manifested universe, and without the expansion of light there is no love comes forth from the, mighty I am. 1. Presence and the Ascended Host. There is no opportunity for the sacred fire to flow into outer creation and reveal the perfection of the Ascended Host, and hold that sustained in its ever-expanding blessing to the infinite life around it. So, beloved ones, now tonight I give you a secret. I cannot use it for you. All I can do is enfold you in my love and my feeling of not only its reality, but of its action. And that is this, when you lack for things in this world, take time away from the demands of the outer world and, just for a few seconds, send the flame of love from your heart up to your, presence and the ascended host. And that flame of love, just one wave of that, when you ask your, presence, to give you in your outer use what it wants you to have from the channel it wants you to have it, invincible against all evil forever, let it flow and demand its own divine plan fulfilled, manifest its heaven on earth your home, your realm of perfection, and permanent harmony, your realm of eternal protection. When your love goes to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host, when your love comes to the secret love star and those who abide there and pour their life to the earth, when the love of your life comes to us and our life joins yours in the outpouring of its perfection and blessing and happiness to the rest of life. You move forward then in the greater accomplishment that is our manifestation of the secret love star. Now maybe you do not quite understand what I mean, but when you take a drop of water, it is only capable of doing so much by itself, it can only move at a certain rate. But when that drop joins the ocean, it can go as fast as the current in the ocean. Therefore, when the outer self is ready and willing and takes the time to pour the wave of love and gratitude to the beloved mighty I am presence and the ascended host, and asks for the greater love from the manifested universe to concentrate in and around outer world conditions, when you take time to do it, that greater life, that greater love, that greater light will not say you, no. The secret love star has boundless blessings to give if you can draw a concentration of its outpouring of its life, its light, its substance, its miracles, its powers to produce perfection and blessing without limit, because there is no discord there and never will be. There is no discord on the planet Venus and never will be. And so it is with the great realm of life's perfection. Now this same thing is true of the seven mighty Elohim of creation. There is no discord, no lack, no limitation of any kind in the world, the realm of the seven mighty Elohim of creation. There is no limitation to their life, the life of the seven mighty Elohim. There is no limitation to their love. There is no limitation to their substance. There is no limitation to their energy. There is no limitation to their supply of light or whatever you want in manifestation. Then if you care to join the world of these cosmic beings who are the realm of perfection, who are the happiness of heaven on earth, who are the divine plan fulfilled, if you care to join them and feel your oneness with their life. 
their ascended master consciousness and manifestations will flood into you and your world, and bring their world into you and your world, that you, too, may abide as they do in the great, magnificent perfection of the sun of everlasting freedom. So, beloved ones, it is well worth anyone's effort to make the experiment. Now tonight I give you the assistance to call for the cosmic, fiery Christ illumining love from the secret love star to be made alive in all the energy of your world and all that you do in your daily. Discourse 1. Activities. And let us show you what can change the conditions in the world around you until they yield you perfection, because there cannot come anything from the life in the secret love star but that which produces perfection. So if you love perfection enough, you pour your love to your presence and the secret love star, if you ask our love, and the oneness of our love with all perfection in this world to come in and around you and manifest the secret love star's perfection here, you can have this victory if you want it. And I know you do want it thank you so much. When you contact Discord in the outer world, remember, love is not there. If you want the love from the Ascended Master's octave, you must use the Ascended Master's consciousness, for it is all the love which none can misuse, none can ever change, none can ever contaminate. Since the Ascended Ones offered you the use of their Ascended Master consciousness long ago, the Ascended Master's consciousness is the victory of love. It's the mastery of the perfection which our love has created in our realm of life. Therefore, if you are going to create perfection here, you are going to have to have the love from the Ascended Master's octave. Now don't let your intellect say, well, isn't my mighty I am presence all-powerful? Yes. It is, certainly it is. But it's one with that love from the great central sun. It has brought its life here, that it may pour its love through the outer self to produce perfection here, and that love is one with our realm. Don't ever let your intellect, and your feeling especially, more important than your intellect even, say, have the feeling, well, isn't my mighty I am presence all I need? You've had it. Yes, it's all you need. You've had it from the beginning, but you forgot you had it. You didn't use its love. You forgot it so completely that the darkness covered over it and its light was not allowed to rule your world, else you would never have experienced discord in the past. And when unascended beings think they can get along without the ascended masters, they are in darkness indeed. Since the ascended masters have created this world, and the cosmic beings have created it, since their life is daily poured to it to sustain it, since their life produces the powers of nature and the blessings which feed mankind, and they sustain that. It seems to me you need the ascended masters and the cosmic beings and the angelic host. When you really need them, you. 100. Will remember they exist, and you will feel and pour to them the love that makes you aware of the oneness of the sacred fire love of life that produces perfection everywhere, whether it be in the ascended masters octave or in this world or in systems of worlds. Mankind is in the darkness today of the outer world because they don't remember the ascended masters. They don't give cooperation with that greater life that owns the earth and all upon it. It's no wonder destruction exists. You who are awake have boundless opportunities to draw this love into the physical world, and govern the conditions around you and forbid the shadows of mankind's concepts and consciousness and feeling from ever touching your life, your affairs, your activities, or anybody or anything you contact. If I can arouse you to this use of the powers from the secret love star that are coming to earth to help create and sustain the incoming perfection, if I can assist you to that, you will draw forth its blessings ahead of time, and you may enjoy them a century ahead of the rest of mankind. So, blessed ones, I have come to help you make progress more rapidly. I have come to give you the greater love of our life, and I have come to give you the perfection and the assistance that allows the greater flow of the life from the secret love star to come in, through you to the earth, that we may bless the earth more rapidly and more powerfully with that which the secret love star can give. So, blessed ones, whenever there is lack of anything in this world, lack of anything good in this world, before you try to correct it, turn your attention to your, beloved I am presence, first, and the ascended host, and ask for the quick descent, the cosmic onrush. Of whatever love the sacred fire can pour into conditions to bring them to perfection and close out for eternity all that is wrong. Here is this infinite life, the infinite love of the universe, the mighty I am presence, pouring its boundless light and energy to this system of worlds, the boundless light from the physical sun, the boundless blessings of the powers of nature, boundless. 
Boundless. Boundless. Ever expanding to the life in this world, and the outer self, in the feeling, refuses acceptance to it. Now you might not think you refuse it, but you do if you do not accept it. So from tonight, will you charge yourselves with the ascended master's feeling of the ascended? 109. Master's fiery acceptance of the instantaneous fulfillment of your calls. Charge yourselves with the ascended master's feeling of the fiery acceptance of all the love from the mighty I am presence, and the ascended host that compels conditions around you to be the perfection that manifests the divine plan. And to compel the blessing to the rest of life that holds purity in command forever. If you command this to come into the physical world, every power and being of light and perfection in the ascended master's octave is obligated under the cosmic law to answer you. So there is no such thing as failure or you refusing to accept that which produces perfection. So, blessed ones, there isn't a blessing you can't have from the ascended master's octave when you take your stand forever, and your decision must be eternal, that only the ascended master's eternal, purifying love from the great central sun is ever going to qualify anything of your life energy. Substance, or consciousness while yet unascended. You can clear your world. You can strengthen yourselves. You can expand your light. You can produce whatever manifestations are necessary to fulfill the divine plan, to assist your fellow man, to save your nation, to compel the illumination to the consciousness of the people within your borders that compels the prevention of everything wrong. And how are you going to prevent wrong if you do not have the light into which darkness can never come? The love which we offer is the light that is so bright, that which is of human creation can never behold it for it dissolves and consumes everything unlike itself. All must become the perfection which it is when it is called into outer, physical conditions. Blessed ones, now we enter into the use of it for healing. With mankind's minds and bodies and feelings in the condition they are in today, certainly some great love and mercy and forgiveness to life must come forth through some unascended beings if the help is to come to prevent further desecration of this nation or the homes of the people of the world. It is in the homes of mankind that this purification must take place, and here must come the power that says to everything of human creation, I am, the sacred, fiery Christ purity and eternal command for all that is wrong to cease to be. You must command it into annihilation. You must use your cosmic authority and your own free will to reach up to your presence, and 1. Pouring the love there that is calling to the greater love for more love to come into this world, the sacred love the violet flame love of the fiery Christ, to move into these conditions and force all things to be purified, and awaken mankind to the obedience that, after all, is the greatest joy of existence if mankind will but try it out. When we see civilization after civilization which we have designed and helped mankind to build and bring forth into outer existence, and we have poured our love, our energy, our life, our ideas, our feeling, our blessing through human beings to build that. And then after a few centuries the people forget we exist or think we are just a myth, and the civilization dies and dissolves and disappears. For I tell you truly, there is nothing constructive that can come into existence, be sustained, be protected, and expand without the conscious, not only awareness, the conscious command, authority, and power of the sacred fire love of the life of the mighty I am presence, and the ascended host that is the source of boundless supply of every good thing, no matter what it is. So if I may turn your attention there and hold it there until you experiment with it, you will find your supply comes from there and not from. So from tonight, 200 the, here. You may temporarily reach out and draw to yourself certain physical things, but you will find it is only temporary. The supply that comes from above is eternal and is all master over the discord that is lack and limitation. So from tonight, if you will call the sacred fire love from the secret love star that supplies, supplies, supplies every good thing in the universe, and concentrates it and gives it into the hands and use of the outer selves of the mankind under this radiation, human beings who understand this law, if you will call forth our boundless supply, it will have to come, because it cannot be otherwise. The love star's supply not only never runs out but has no obstruction. Where the love is called into action, it automatically supplies all good things. So if you care to feel yourselves one with all the life and sacred fire love of the secret love star, we can come very much closer to you.
the flow of supply can be continuous. It will be completely harmonious. It will be invincible. And we offer it as freely as the air you breathe. May you go forward, dwell within it, and know that when we offer you the love of our life to supply you down here with the perfection that gives you your freedom, surely you must realize that you. 200 are one with us. Then there is no obstruction. So if you command the outer self to feel your oneness with the love and its boundless supply from the secret love star, which will fulfill the divine plan of your beloved I am presence in this world, you can go forward free from the distress of outer world conditions. And on an even pathway you may build the perfection that is the great onrushing power and victory that takes you to your ascension, but leaves your blessing to this world to bless the rest of life until it, too, ascends into our octave and then you flood the world with our perfection for eternity. But you must feel yourselves one with our love, and our love is our life. Our life is light. If you call this in and around yourselves, the supply must automatically come to you. I hope you will go forward, and we will stand your guard and give every possible assistance if you make this effort to feel your oneness with the love of the secret love star. And the legions who are the outpouring of that sacred fire love ever move into outer world conditions the almighty mastery of the sacred fire. Go forward and feel your freedom as quickly as possible. Thank you with all my heart. Record CD 933AB. Discourse X. Beloved Queen of Light. September 18, 1963 Shasta Springs, California Beloved Ones of My Heart, Tonight, in that which we are bringing into the atmosphere of Earth for the strengthening and protection of that which is constructive, we wish you to feel very close to us. And feel that, when you want our assistance, or you are asking for it to come forth to the nation, feel the cosmic light substance from our octave entering into the atmosphere around you and compelling illumination to take place. We want you to understand that within the light, and we're speaking now of the cosmic light that fills interstellar space, there is that universal light substance that is immortally pure and perfect, and which none of mankind can requalify or ever use to produce destruction. Dis to that is what we have referred to as, the light of God that never fails, because that is the radiation of the sacred fire from the great central sun. That radiation is the love within life that has already designed perfection, and by the illumination and flow of that cosmic light, it takes its dominion in the world of manifestation and appears either in this world or this system of worlds, or any of the worlds in interstellar space. Everything that comes into manifestation that is constructive must come composed of the cosmic light substance from the ascended, master's octave or the outpouring of our love, which produces illumination in the atmosphere of your world and produces illumination in any substance where we direct it. This is the beginning of precipitation, because all precipitation must come out of the light. Light is the love of life, and therefore, it is the power of the great central sun magnet that draws together the substance of the cosmic light and molds it into the divine pattern, that the being wills into existence who is using the power of precipitation. Now whether that power is used for the individual or the creation of a world or a system of worlds, matters not, because the plan of creation is the same everywhere throughout. To infinity. The fundamental of all manifestation is a sphere, and within the sphere is the cross, which represents the currents of energy and the sacred fire that is drawn within the substance. And is the power that holds it together to produce anything that is what you call the things of the physical world, or manifestations in space anywhere. When you use the phrase, the light of God never fails, you have reference to this cosmic light substance that human creation can never contaminate. And when you use the phrase, the light of God never fails, or, the light of God that never fails, you always refer to the cosmic light substance in the ascended master's octave or that which fills interstellar space. Now to the scientific world who says, through some observations of astronomy, that there is darkness in interstellar space, that's only the human concept that it is darkness. It simply is because the universal light substance that is there is vibrating at a frequency that the human eye and the human instruments of this world, do not register because of its very rapid rate of vibration. But that is the activity of energy, those are the rates of vibration that never produce discord, and no one can ever use the cosmic light substance to ever create anything that is less than perfection. 
since we at times draw forth the cosmic concentration of this cosmic light substance into various places throughout the world to pour forth its illumination, that illumining presence is not only the cosmic light substance. It is the illumining consciousness that we charge forth into the mental and feeling world of mankind to be the strength within the individual to allow the light and the sacred fire from the higher mental body, the beloved mighty I am presence of each life stream. To expand within the outer self and release the powers of life that produce perfection, produce perfect manifestation. This is the source of the master powers of life. They all abide within the sacred fire and the cosmic light substance, and the individual who understands how to make the call to the mighty I am presence and the ascended host to charge into the outer self, or into outer world conditions. The cosmic light substance that cannot be requalified by any human feeling or any human consciousness. More and more of this can come into the physical octave of earth to be the strength and the protection in and around all that is constructive. And if mankind understood this and would call it into outer world physical conditions, then that which is constructive could be insulated in the substance from the ascended master's octave that the sinister force cannot requalify, cannot direct, and cannot use. The only energy the sinister force can use to produce discord is that which is in the atomic structure and the feeling world of the physical bodies of the mankind of this earth. So the sinister force is not master over the ascended master's octave, nor is it master over the cosmic light substance that fills infinite space everywhere. So when you use the phrase, the light of God never fails, it means far more than the intellect understands just at first. And as you think deeply on it and you keep calling into physical conditions, especially where you are creating that which is constructive, and you want to produce manifestation that is permanently constructive. Call the cosmic light substance into the substance of the physical world to be the immortal purity, and the constructive power and qualities that produce manifestation that is perfection, or that can be sustained to render service to mankind and to life everywhere it is allowed to go. Also, the phrase, the light of God never fails, is the distress call of the great white brotherhood, and I wish to explain something within that. Discourse Concerning it, because what mankind ordinarily knows of as the Great White Brotherhood, or organizations in the outer world who take that name, has nothing whatsoever to do with the immortal Great White Brotherhood that exists in the Ascended Master's octave, which no unascended being can control. The Great White Brotherhood to which we refer is the cosmic group of beings, Ascended Masters, cosmic beings, and the angelic host, who control this world and this system of worlds, and who are the masters of manifestation everywhere. We have given that use of the phrase, the light of God never fails, unto humanity throughout the centuries, so when the call goes forth, as it comes into our octave, there are always legions who can answer that on the moment. Because when the light flashes, the light responds, replies, and returns that light instantly to its source enfolded in the greater light from our octave. So when people use the word light, individuals should understand something of what it means. It doesn't just mean what you call physical light in this world or the light from the physical sun in this world. The light of God that never fails, to which we refer is the cosmic light substance. That is the radiation of the love from the sacred fire in the great central sun, and also from the heart flame of every ascended master and cosmic being. So this is of tremendous assistance to mankind and is the sustaining strength and energy and power of everything that is constructive in manifestation whether it be in this system of worlds or infinite systems of worlds. Everything that comes into manifestation that is constructive is composed of the cosmic light substance that is radiated, or created by the love from the sacred fire in the great central sun. When you want constructive qualities strengthened within yourselves or in others, you can always call forth the ascended master's illumining strength of the light, the cosmic light, into yourselves, into all the energy of the outer self, into your mental and feeling world and you can call it into the mental and feeling world of others. You can call it into the flesh body. You can call it into the atmosphere. You can call it into the powers of nature and forces of the elements. You can call it into the manifested world everywhere to create and protect that which is constructive, and to shed its radiance to repel that which is not constructive. 209. So the cosmic light substance has a very, very tremendous service to render to life and is part of the great, magnificent scheme of manifestation that forever is flowing forth from the great central sun to the planets of this system, and to all systems of worlds. 
when individuals realize that the energy that is in the outer self is electronic force of the light to which I refer, then each one should feel the responsibility in the use of the energy the outer self is allowed to have each day. As you put the body to sleep at night, and the higher mental body pours its life, which is its own electronic force, its own energy, which is the radiation from its own heart's flame, down into the outer self, when you awaken in the morning. If you could realize that the energy that has come into the body during the hours of rest, is a gift from the higher mental body to you to use its life for that day, to produce what fulfills the divine plan. Then in the use of the blessings and powers of nature and forces of the elements, if the outer intellect would only remember and understand that all the powers of nature and forces of the elements are the concentration of the cosmic light substance from the great central sun. Two, people would know more about what the blessings are that come from these great powers of nature, and the outer self of each individual would become not only aware of what it owes to life for the use of what has been placed here, but it would become aware of the privilege and the joy and the happiness that the outer self could have if it would only recognize that these infinite powers of light are the gifts from the great, central sun. They are loaned to the outer self for use to fulfill the divine plan, and bless the world into which you have embodied so that all parts of life absorb the greater perfection from the sacred fire that gives the, cosmic light substance for use in the world of manifestation. People rarely understand that everything, every action in the physical world upon which you depend and which you use every day. Every activity depends on the activity of the cosmic light from the great central sun that has been used to create this world. And everything you do in the physical octave, if it gives you freedom or constructive activity, must be composed of the cosmic light substance. Anything that is permanently constructive must be composed of cosmic light substance. 200 and so when you use that phrase, the light of God never fails, try to remember it is the gift, it's not only the gift of love but it is the love itself from the sacred fire in the great central sun. And every ascended master and cosmic being who precipitates anything into the physical world, whether it be the powers of nature or the blessings that mankind uses every day. Every being from the ascended master's octave who blesses this world draws the cosmic light substance into the substance of this world to allow constructive qualities and activities and the master blessings and powers of life to flow through the energy in this world and produce perfect. Manifestation. Now this has a tremendous application also in regard to the healing of the minds, the bodies, and the feeling of individuals. When healing takes place, there must come the cosmic light substance from the ascended master's octave or from the higher mental body of the life stream. It must come into the outer self and release the energy through the substance of the flesh. As the violet consuming flame purifies the substance, the cosmic light pours forth perfection through the cellular structure at the command of the higher mental body so that the healing takes place as harmoniously and quickly and perfectly as possible. If the attention is placed upon the light, beloved ones, your very attention and thought upon light will draw this light back into you. The moment you place your attention upon the cosmic light substance, and ask your higher mental body to draw the cosmic light substance into you that makes you the strength of the light to use the master powers of your own mighty I am presence in outer world activities to produce perfection. Your higher mental body will draw that into you for your use. That is why, if you are going to use the master powers from the ascended master's octave, the cosmic light must come first into the outer self, so that there is the constant flow of the love from the sacred fire to produce mastery out here. Produce the perfection that does hold control of physical conditions. I am explaining this tonight because in your use of your calls for the fiery Christ miracle mantle of love's mastery to come into the physical conditions and compel perfection and prevent what's wrong, this, the radiation from the fiery Christ is the cosmic light substance. We two have referred to this before as the inner essence of the strength of the light in the individual, to make the outer self strong enough to hold to the constructive way of life and to blaze enough of this light through the outer self to compel the Prevention of all wrong. This is the purpose of our love when we offer it to you and call your attention to the use of the inner essence from the ascended master's octave. And that is the gift of life provided by the cosmic law to be the power of the great central sun magnet, to draw the outer self up and into the vibratory action that is the ascended master's perfection. And that is the gift of the love from the ascended masters and the great beings in the great central sun. And everyone can have it without limit.
It simply needs this explanation brought to the intellect of man so mankind can use the gifts that are offered. We are offering, all the time, unlimited explanation of the law. We have given unlimited love from the sacred fire of our own life streams or our temples of the sacred fire. The great central sun is constantly pouring into all outer manifestation the cosmic light substance, the love from the sacred fire, for individuals to use in the great creative activities of the manifested world. 2. For every moment you exist, awake or asleep, you are creating something every instant. Every thought, feeling, spoken word, an act produces some kind of a manifestation because life is perpetual creation. And the great sacred fire of life is continually pouring forth its love, and cosmic light substance for the individuals whose heart flame comes from the great central sun, and in whom the will, the free will, is located. Those individuals are given the unlimited use of this great cosmic manifestation of the love from the sacred fire in the great, central Sunday. This is the source of perfection. This is the creation of perfection. This is the manifestation of perfection, and if unascended beings are going to produce manifestation and sustain it, they are going to have to understand it and use it. Otherwise it is not permanent. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please? Just remain so. Now anything that is constructive in this world that is going to be sustained must either be sustained by the cosmic light substance from the ascended master's octave or from the mighty I am presence of the individual's life stream. No constructive activity can be sustained and protected and used. This too throughout the centuries unless it be filled with the inner essence of the cosmic light substance. And the inner essence is the energy, the concentrated energy that holds constructive activities together sustains their radiation of perfection, and allows the sacred fire to expand its love through the outer manifestation. The sacred fire in the great central sun gives its love and produces the cosmic light substance to manifest the universe, and its ever-increasing creation in the manifested world must come forth by the expansion of its own love, for that is the life that permits it to exist. So now as we turn this to your daily experiences and your use in outer world conditions, regardless of what human beings are doing, Right or wrong, if you want to produce constructive manifestation, it must, first of all, the call must be from within your own heart flame, which is the sacred fire. For the cosmic light substance to come in and produce the perfection which is the divine plan fulfilled. That divine plan must be filled with the cosmic light substance. The cosmic light substance, charged with the perfection that is to render service to the rest of life, if it is to be sustained, must be protected. And so the sacred fire, the cosmic light substance, the love from the ascended host or the mighty I am presence, must all come into concentrated action within the thing manifested if it is to produce perfection and happiness, and fulfill the divine plan and be used by unascended beings. This referred to, this cosmic light substance which is created by the love from the great central sun is what has been referred to all through the years as the power, and the perfection of God's love, and that is why the statement has been made. Love always has and always will fulfill every human need. But people do not recognize that the light and the cosmic blessings that they are using all the time are the gifts, and the creation of the love from the sacred fire in the great central sun that has manifested this world and the powers of nature upon it. This is the most practical way to produce perfection, sustain it, and then let it be used to fulfill the divine plan that raises everything to greater perfection. So when you often hear people say, well, God's love will take care of it, those are just words. They are statements of an existence of the love of life, but the individual, if he or she is to produce definite manifestation, must to concentrate the cosmic light substance into the condition in order to produce the things that are in manifestation. Your tube of light is made of cosmic light substance, and when the Master Saint Germain gave that to you in the beginning for your protection, it was the gift of love of his own life that gave you the instruction. Your own, beloved mighty I am presence, calls forth this cosmic light substance, condenses it, and forms it into the tube of light around your physical bodies in order to insulate you against the destructive vibratory action of, the energy of the outer world. Mankind has been using all the gifts of love all through the centuries, and yet not giving recognition, except occasionally, to the magnificent cosmic law which is embodied in great cosmic beings who have created the earth and produced the powers of nature upon it.
but I am determined to bring you the illumining consciousness which we use to produce manifestation, that you may use it to produce perfect manifestation in your world, and wherever you abide, you beautify the universe around you, you sustain that which is constructive, and then you can draw it into yourselves to sustain yourselves in constructive action and make yourselves as strong as you want to be, because since this is the law of the universe, it takes only the use of these powers of life by the individual to make the outer self as strong, as it needs to be to produce the greater perfection here or render the service that gives protection to others. So I have many reasons for bringing this to you tonight, because it is the sustaining life of perfection and, therefore, fulfills the divine plan when individuals use it in the physical octave to protect what is constructive, and to forbid that which is not constructive to approach this can be charged with terrific power. The cosmic light substance can be condensed, concentrated to a point where it is just harder than steel on the outside of your tube of light. You can call the cosmic light substance within the brain structure and within your own feeling world to be the strength of the light, and be the constructive powers within you, or to hold control of the powers within you, so you only use them constructively. The cosmic light substance is that out of which systems of worlds are created, out of which everything was created, and is being created, in this world. So you, as the individual, must someday learn to use it as the ascended masters use it so. 2. Bless the universe. Bless the universe. When we offer it to you, we offer the use of the inner essence of the cosmic light, it is that you may draw its strength, or strengthen conditions of the outer world that are constructive and hold them protected so mankind's human creation cannot undo that which you create to render service. Bless the universe, and bring happiness to life. Therefore, in the use of the power of the cosmic light substance, do not fail to fill yourselves with the ascended master's unlimited power of the cosmic light substance that makes you the strength your, mighty I am presence, needs to have in the outer to use the master powers through you. To produce out here that which sustains your supply in the outer world, sustains your health sustains the things that you use in your daily experience, and sustains all the blessings of constructive action on this earth with which you come in contact. You must strengthen the outer self by filling it with the cosmic light substance of the ascended master's consciousness, feeling, and strength of the light that protects everything constructive, that builds only that which is constructive, and in the use of everything you have in the outer world. You will always fulfill the divine plan and bring boundless blessings and happiness to the life around you and those you contact. And this enables you to be in the world, but not of it. You live in a world of your own, and as you live, move, and have your being within a sun presence of the sacred fire, within that is always the cosmic light substance that produces the manifestations of the things you need to use in the physical octave, while you yet remain here. This has much to do with the sustaining of your supply. And if you want supply sustained in outer world physical conditions, then call forth the cosmic light substance, and the inner essence of the boundless supply from the ascended master's octave that will always produce perfection. And that boundless supply is forever charged with the vibratory action from the ascended master's octave that forever prevents the sinister force using it or desecrating it. This is your invincible protection. It is the sustaining of all constructive action. It is the use of the master powers of life, and it is your unlimited, never-ending supply of whatever you're going to require in the time ahead in that service you are to render to the nation and the world. When people struggle so for supply, for just a pittance here and a pittance there, when they too high could have this boundless supply if they would only recognize that the radiation of the love from the sacred fire creates this cosmic light substance. And that cosmic light substance can be drawn into outer world conditions to become whatever things you need to use in the fulfillment of the divine plan. So when people understand to call to the mighty I am presence and the ascended host, and beloved Saint Germain has said not to look to any human being for supply, as soon as the attention is taken off of the channels of limitation, and the attention goes to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host who wield the unlimited powers of life, they have unlimited supply that can come to you. And we hope you will accept it thank you. Now one more thing. When you call to your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to draw into your hands, and use the cosmic light substance of the unlimited supply that the sacred love of the sacred fire has already created, bring it into your outer use to fulfill the divine plan. And forever prevent all wrong, then as you accept that and look to the presence, to give it to you and draw it from our ascended master's octave, 
then, my dear ones, you are opening yourselves just like a funnel, this way, to the unlimited supply of the things that you are going to need in the physical octave. But so long as the attention is upon the channels of limitation which are your physical world's avenue of supply, then you have beginning and end to that supply. When you turn to the mighty I am presence and the ascended host, and you ask for the unlimited supply that the sacred love of the sacred fire gives to life, and its cosmic light substance comes into your hands and use, forever preventing all wrong, my dear ones. You can have whatever is necessary to fulfill the divine plan and go forward to greater and greater victorious accomplishment, and never know what lack is again if you care to accept the cosmic light substance that our love draws into this world. And then you'll find love does supply everything that you care to use, so long as you fulfill the divine plan and command everything to forever prevent all wrong. I am determined to make this clear to you, and I hope you won't object if I prod you sometimes into the use of it, until it reveals itself in a continuous flow so that you do not have limitation in the future. We want you to have unlimited. 2. Supply, and that supply charged with whatever compels the prevention of all wrong. Then, dear hearts, there is nothing you can't have. So when you want the unlimited, remember, it comes forth only from the sacred fire's love which is the ascended master's octave in the great central sun and each one's own, mighty I am presence. When individuals want supply to render a service that forever compels the prevention of all wrong, you have but to call to your, beloved I am presence, and to us. And your very willingness to give obedience, will automatically attune you and enable us to open the channels by which your supply can come to do that which needs to be done in the, world at this time. And that which needs to be done in the bringing in of the civilization that is to become the permanent, constructive activity to this nation and the world. It all depends on the limitless supply which our love of the sacred fire has already drawn into our octave. And now you must use your own, beloved I am presence, sacred fire love and our ascended master consciousness to concentrate into your outer use the unlimited supply of every good thing, forever charged with the ascended master's prevention of all wrong. And then you are one with our octave in the service that is to, to be rendered, and the channels in this world that are limited will give you what you need from time to time but you will always find the hand of your presence will provide for you what you are going to need in the future to fulfill its divine plan, so long as you keep demanding that everything in your being and world be forever charged with the ascended master's sacred fire, prevention of all wrong. Then your mighty I am presence knows it can trust you with the unlimited supply of every good thing to produce here what needs to be produced, of constructive activities, and those constructive activities continually repel and consume everything that is wrong. I know no greater blessing that can come to you than your awareness and use of this as you go forward, and demand the fulfillment of the divine plan in everything you do. But demand the ascended master's sacred fire prevention of all wrong. Then you can use our ascended master consciousness. You can use our sacred fire love. You can use our cosmic light substance, and it can be lowered down here without money, without price, so long as you stay true to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host in the understanding of what love. Discourse X has given and what your love will give to produce perfection that blesses all here, but which can never be used or desecrated by the hordes of darkness. It is your infallible supply, your invincible protection. And it is your obedience to your mighty I am presence that brings unlimited blessings into your outer use by your conscious direction. So long as your love goes to your presence, and the ascended master's octave and keeps demanding the sacred love of the sacred fire's cosmic light substance, and boundless supply of every good thing that forever produces perfection and forever prevents all wrong. I can offer you no greater help than this, if you will accept it. It's more valuable than all the money on the planet. Human beings can't take this away from you. Human law can't take this away from you. And each of you can have the unlimited, and still not take anything away from anyone else. It is your infallible source of boundless supply that can never bring you distress and which none in this world can misuse. It is the beginning of the manifested violet flame heaven on earth, for it will always be surrounded by the violet consuming flames purifying love, forgiveness, and mercy to life that will not let evil approach. So I have a blessing to it is part of the purification of the 226 so I have a blessing to give 
I hope you will use it, and I hope you want the unlimited in your outer use to, as quickly as possible, prevent all wrong in the world around you. It is part of the purification of the earth by the sacred fire's love, forgiveness, and mercy to life in the use of these greater powers of the ascended master's octave in this world, here and now, to prevent what the sinister force intends. So I offer you the supply for which you have called, supply that can never produce distress and which the outer world cannot desecrate and cannot use for destructive purposes. So, blessed ones, I hope you trust me enough tonight to experiment, at least, with the love I've offered, that your supply may become limitless for eternity. Thank you so much. Now one more thing. Since the cosmic light from the great central sun illumines this whole system of worlds with a sun presence, and it is great enough to supply light to this world, do you not think it can supply the energy, the light, and the substance to you that manifests in your outer use as the boundless supply that you need to fulfill the divine plan, and that is forever free from contact or contamination with that which is of evil. If the great central sun can supply light to this whole system of worlds, it certainly can supply you with whatever you require. But all of it depends on your own conscious call and understanding of what your presence is waiting to give you, what the ascended masters are waiting to give you, how you can draw it into your outer use, and your responsibility and obligation to fill the world around you with the cosmic light's perfection that manifests the divine plan fulfilled, and charged forever with whatever prevents all wrong. And you have a scepter of power second to none, and the sacred fire is the source again of everything of perfection. And love alone can give it. So when you love your presence and you love our octave and the ascended host and you love to give obedience to your presence, then you will find the cosmic light substance that love has created will flow without limit into your outer use to flood you with the world of love's perfection. Forever invincible against human creation. So may you go forward and live in it, and have your victory as quickly as possible regardless of all conditions in the world around you. And I assure you, when the things in your world are filled with and charged with the sacred fire. Toot. And cosmic lights. I hope you will use. 228 the. I. And cosmic light substance that forever prevent all wrong. Some of the plans of the destructive forces will not be able to impose their destruction upon you. And this is for more protection than you understand tonight. I hope you will use it with every power of your being and command and command and command the release of all the cosmic light substance and sacred fire's love in and around you wherever you go, with the fierce ascended master consciousness and command that forever prevents all wrong. And you cannot lack for any good thing, for love alone is the master presence of boundless supply and your eternal protection by its sacred fire, which is the fiery Christ miracle mantle of love's mastery for which you call and which you can have, can use, and which you are going to need. And if you will use it, I will ever be ready to give it to you at your call. So I will await the call, and I want your protection, so I shall remind you as often as possible so the call comes forth, that your protection may be invincible for eternity. Thank you with all my heart. Discourse 11 Beloved Godfra February 23, 1964 Chicago, Illinois Dear Hearts of the Light, as we come into the lower atmosphere of Earth and see that which needs to be consumed, we appreciate more greatly than you can understand, more deeply and more gratefully, every call that you send forth for the purification of the nation, the people within it, and everything and everywhere throughout the world. Every effort you make, every call you send forth, every desire within you for mankind's purification and freedom in the light is, at the moment you make the call or send forth that desire in your feeling, immediately the light of your own life stream expands. Now what do I mean by that? You ordinarily think of the light as passing through the body and being sustained. But when the life within you, your two own life stream, sends forth light and love and gratitude to some other part of the universe, it is not just a temporary expansion of the light. It is a permanent extension of the sacred fire's radiation or light through you and into the atmosphere around you, because once you let that expand, it enables the higher mental body to pour more strength of its perfection and more of the sacred fire of its own heart down into the outer self. As you fill yourselves with this and you allow it to hold its victory through you, you become more of the perfection of your higher mental body, because that becomes permanent in the feeling world of the outer self, permanent in your emotional body, permanent in your mental body. That expansion of the light is the greatest strength of your own life. 
It expands the light farther, and it holds that light. It doesn't just expand it and then fade out. It is the permanent strengthening of the light in the outer self to release its mastery over the conditions in this world. Therefore, every desire to help some part of life come up and out of human creation and receive the light that is the freedom of eternal harmony and happiness, the individual who will continue to do that continually strengthens the life. Streams perfection into the outer self. Every time that greater light comes from the higher mental body into the outer self, it extends more intensely into the atmosphere about the physical body, and it becomes the greater strength of every constructive quality within you. It strengthens every constructive quality in your feeling world. It strengthens it into the outer self. It pours that greater strength and greater light into the atmosphere about you. And as you continue to do this, this flows forth into your business affairs. It will flow forth into your family. It will flow forth into the atmosphere of earth, and it will also flow forth into the activities of the city and the nation wherein you abide. I am bringing this to your attention because when you desire the ascended master's eternal purity, and sacred fire love to come into this world to compel the purification that makes mankind's discord cease, you strengthen yourselves. Every time you make that call, the light in you is permanently brighter, permanently extends farther, and permanently strengthens every constructive quality within you. So you cannot give without receiving. And the more you receive from your beloved I am presence, or the enfolding sacred fire love of the two ascended masters or cosmic beings, the greater becomes the protection around the outer self, and the greater is the release of the power from your own mighty I am presence and higher mental body into the outer self to make it more perfect, to enable that perfection to go through, that remodels. Shall we say, the outer self into the eternal divine pattern of the higher mental body. So when you call to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host for the sacred love of the sacred fire to go forth and purify everything in this world, and compel the prevention of all wrong, my dear ones, as you use that decree, you are strengthening the light in yourselves. Each one of your physical bodies, every time you call forth the sacred fire purifying love to the rest of the life in this world, 60% of what you call forth is the greater strength and illumination and greater perfection of your own life in you. So this is why we want mankind to understand this law, so each individual can go forth and make the call for the purification of all mankind. Then those who are willing to send forth these calls, these decrees, by conscious command, are strengthening their own life streams. They are expanding their own light. They are filling themselves and their beings and worlds with greater perfection which is permanent, because nobody can take this away from you. This is the ever-raising vibratory action of our sacred fire love that brings perfection into manifestation, and makes you a being of the sacred fire that becomes invincible against all human discord. Those of mankind who are willing to give these decrees and make the call for the purification of the world and all upon it, are the greatest beneficiaries of every decree you give. Every decree you give for the purification and freedom of the rest of the life in this world blesses you as much as you bless the life, and half as much again. So unless mankind will awaken to the truth of this law and use it to strengthen the individual's own life streams, the individual does not raise higher and higher in a greater perfection of life nor become more and more powerful to fulfill the divine plan or exert the mastery over all discordant conditions in this world. You can only become the master presence, you can only exert the mastery of the sacred fire love in your own life streams by giving it, through your decrees and your radiation of peace and harmony and purity to the rest of life everywhere in the world. So I think I will be able to help you, through this, to not be concerned whether human beings or conditions in the world are worthy of your calls or not. All you want to do is to pour forth enough of the sacred fire purifying love to all life everywhere, and as you give it, you automatically raise yourselves into greater mastery. Your own light becomes greater. You become a sun presence of our sacred fire love, and that which has been the limitation of the past or the discord in the world around you just automatically drops away and is consumed. Because your light is the release of the sacred fire of our love into you to purify you and raise you to the ascension. Every slightest effort that you make in your calls for the purification and freedom of the nation, or the world is a powerful raising activity to you, individually, to be the greater strength and expansion of the light in you to raise you to the ascension. 
so you cannot give without receiving. You cannot receive the greater activities of the sacred fire's strength and perfection of life within yourselves without giving it, because if you do not let it expand to bless the rest of life, no more will come until you release what you have. And that is why selfishness is the root of all evil, because it 230 is the holding of things to the outer self that are simply an obstruction to the limitless supply that comes from the presence. Now you often think of supply as the things of the physical world, and please do not limit yourselves that way. Life is the supply you want, because life is what you must use all the time to do anything you want to do, good or otherwise. And when life is recognized, which is the release of the heart flame's power and light from the higher mental body into the outer self, that release takes place. It purifies, perfects, and raises everything through which it passes. Now since that is the greater purity and perfection and power of life, when you call it forth into yourselves to produce greater perfection, by the very radiation itself, it goes into your business, into your homes, into your association. And that greater life's greater perfection which we are, as we give it to you, becomes in you our mastery over all in this world. You might have all the things on this earth that you think you want or you need, and you would not have our mastery. Your mastery over the limitations of human creation, your supply of anything and everything constructive that you want, must come from the greater life of your own, beloved I am. Presence and higher if you don't have more, 236, presence and higher mental body and the greater life in the ascended master's octave. No matter what you want down here, if you want anything down here that you call supply, you are really wanting more of life. If you don't have more of life, you don't have more things. You don't have more wealth. You don't have more health unless you have more life. More life means more light, and more light means more of our love, and more of our love means more purity. Therefore, no matter what you want in the physical octave to compel perfection or fulfill the divine plan, in reality you want more of the life of the sacred fire from your beloved I am presence and the ascended master's octave. So when you think of supply or protection or the perfection of conditions around you, watch the intellect and watch your feeling, that you do not think of that always as things. Because what you actually need and want is the greater life that produces greater perfection in the things and the use of the things around you. That greater life comes from your higher mental body and the ascended master's octave. So poverty, distress, ill health, lack or limitation of any kind is, in reality a lack of enough life to fill the condition with perfection, because life within itself is perfection. 200. So whatever you lack in the outer is a lack of the greater life, the greater life flame in the heart of your higher mental body. When you have enough of that heart flame from the higher mental body into the outer self, you couldn't lack for anything, because it is the release of the fullness of all things. It manifests instantly. It doesn't have to stop and create something. It automatically is the release of the thing itself, because it is the sacred fire's full perfection of eternity, ever expanding whatever is commanded to manifest in the physical world. I trust from this hour you will have a new concept of supply, of mastery, of protection, and of every good thing from the ascended master's octave. And that is why, when we give you our ascended master consciousness, we are pouring into the brain structure, we are pouring into your nerves. We are pouring into your emotional bodies, we are pouring into the atmosphere about you more of the energy of our life. And that is the actual light from the sacred fire of our love. So when we wrap you in our miracle mantle of love's mastery, it's a far more tangible reality than you understand, and is a permanent enfoldment of your own life stream, including your physical body, by the sacred fire, I hope you understand, 238, your physical body, by the sacred fire from our octave. That miracle mantle is an actual flame and, in an emergency, can become a tangible garment of substance to manifest whatever power is necessary to give you protection or illumination or, victory over destructive forces. I hope you understand how glad we are to give it and if people will use it and understand what it is, we can give infinitely more into your outer use. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. I want you to realize today, dear hearts of the light, you've heard me call you that from the beginning, I want you to know how grateful and how happy life is to give you more of its sacred fire perfection into your outer use, more than you can use. 
this is the limitless supply that brings limitless sacred fire love, limitless harmony, limitless, terrific protection, limitless things that you might need in the outer use. This is the boundless, never-ending, overwhelming supply of every good thing, not only in your physical octave. This is the supply of every good thing in your mental and feeling world, in your physical activities while you are here, and it becomes the dis same limitless supply of every good thing in the ascended master's octave after your ascension takes place. If mankind understood how to call the greater life of immortal, all-purifying, sacred fire love into the energy of the feeling world, the emotional body, individuals would not be bound in selfishness nor limitation nor distress nor destruction of any kind. Try to realize, lack of anything in this world that is good, lack of any constructive condition, is a lack of life, and that means a lack of the light out of which physical things are made, because every manifestation in the physical world that is constructive is composed of cosmic light substance. Therefore, whatever you are going to need, whatever you want to do to fulfill the divine plan, produce perfection that blesses the rest of life with greater purity and greater harmony. And that will raise all the rest of life to the ascension, what you actually need is more of the life from the heart flame of your own, mighty I am presence, and higher mental body, and from the heart flames of the ascended masters. From the temples of the sacred fire in the ascended masters octave. No matter what you lack here, it is a lack of life if it does not produce perfection. Therefore, if you want perfection, call forth to the, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host for the heart flame supply of every good thing into your outer use. And let your higher mental body have a chance to fill the outer self with its own heart's flame of sacred fire love that pours into the outer, self the perfection of the higher mental body. If you call us to enfold you in our miracle mantle of love's mastery, our heart's flame can enfold the physical body. And that becomes for you the supply of whatever the outer self needs to produce harmony, purity, supply of every good thing, and to create perfection, protect it, expand it. And let it go forth to illumine the rest of life and serve the rest of life, into raising all in this world into the ascension. So please, when you think of lack or limitation from this hour, do not think of physical things. Think of your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host as the greater life which is the treasure house of eternity, infinite and forever expanding and flowing into the outer use of all who will use it constructively to fulfill the divine plan, and raise all into the ascension. The, presence, doesn't care how much life you use. All it asks you to do is use it constructively so. Dis, to, only harmony can manifest. And as that harmony ever expands, it automatically raises you into the next octave where you have more powers and more to use. I trust one have made this clear to you today, for I know you have never had just this concept of your boundless supply. I just hope you understand me. Thank you so much. This is why the mighty Saint Germain, the beloved Divine Director, mighty Victory, and myself, and all the ascended host have said repeatedly, when things become discordant, turn away from them and go back to the presence, the heart flame of the presence, which is the sacred fire love. And draw its greater light into yourselves to fill yourselves with the perfection which makes you master over the discord. Now doesn't it sound simple? And it is. If mankind would quit making things complex and mysterious, individuals would understand life more clearly and more truthfully. So, beloved ones, I am determined to take away everything that is of human concepts, everything that is of human feeling, everything that is of human limitation. And this is the reason the beloved Divine Director and beloved Saint Germain, from the beginning, gave you the decree, to acknowledge, I am, the Ascended Master's Law of Forgiveness. And mercy. I am, the Ascended Master's Law. I am, the Ascended Master's Sacred Fire Presence of the Love that is the greater life of the universe. I am, the Ascended Master's law of forgiveness and consuming flame of all inharmonious action and human consciousness. All of that is the calling forth into the outer self or into your conditions, of the heart flame from the higher mental body into the outer self to dissolve and consume the shadows by expanding the light, for the sacred fire love is a fire, a flame that sends forth illumination. And that illumination purifies the condition and consumes the darkness. Where that light is, darkness cannot be. Where the sacred fire is, impurity cannot be. Where our sacred fire love is, discord cannot be. 
So when you call forth the greater life from your higher mental body and the ascended master's octave, you give your beloved I am presence, even the electronic presence body a full, open way through which to give you more of its own life, which is more of its perfection. Because its perfection can never be covered over or qualified with anything of human discord. Human discord is only the manifestation of the radiation of the energy from the emotional body, the feeling world. Two so, beloved ones, if you want to call forth the ascended master's sacred fire feeling into yourselves of our mastery of life, it will allow your higher mental body to expand its own heart flame through you that will be the strength of every constructive thing within you. To hold dominion over conditions around you. I want you to get this because I want you to exert your mastery for your nation's freedom, and it is necessary, is the reason I am here today. Thank you so much. Now if there be no strength in the individuals within the nation, if the strength of the light is not in the people themselves, the nation dissolves. And therefore, just you in this room and those under this radiation, if every one of you will strengthen the light in yourselves by calling forth the ascended master's life into you, which our sacred love of the sacred fire is, you can demand the strength of the ascended master's sacred fire love to strengthen the American people, the people in the United States of America and make the strength of the light in them the ascended master's heart flame that prevents the desecration the hordes of darkness intend. We are working with everything the cosmic law permits to give you this which enables you to be. 2. The greater strength of the light in the American people to prevent what otherwise will be great, great distress. And if there is enough light, the distress cannot come because the sacred fire will consume it and prevent it. But the strength of the light must be the life, the greater life of our sacred fire life. Of our sacred fire love from our ascended master octave drawn into the people themselves, and within the nation, to be the presence of the mighty I am, that consumes the cause that produces the war and the desecration that the sinister force wants to impose upon the people and the conditions of this land. So when you say, save our nation, then call forth all the ascended master's sacred fire life of all purifying love to come into this nation and be the strength of everything constructive, enough to save it and prevent the discord that human selfishness has already generated. And will return upon mankind to take its toll if it is not consumed by the sacred fire love of the greater life, which we are. And that's why it is necessary for the people of this land to know of our presence, to know we are real, to know this mighty I am presence to know of the violet consuming flame, and to 200 Know the individual has the right to make the call. And in the call will go forth the heart desire of the outer self that will draw back the answer to the call. That's the reason mankind has been told from the beginning of embodiment in this world, call unto me and I will answer thee. The promise has been given from the beginning, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. What more can mankind want to get themselves out of this condition, get the people out? So, beloved ones, whenever you lack anything, from this hour, call forth the ascended master's sacred fire life of our heart flames love into yourselves, into conditions, into everybody and everything you meet, and demand the prevention of all wrong. And it will be fulfilled, certainly as you issue that command. As you feel that, as you are determined to have our greater life's perfection into you, it shall come to pass for I will fulfill the call which I ask you to give. Thank you so much. So from tonight, when you think of my miracle mantle of love's mastery, it is an actual flame of love from my heart that I can enlarge and enfold every physical body in it in a heart flame that. 246 is the shape, now from tonight, 246 is the shape of a heart. And as the wings of that heart go around you and hold my love about you, my life is master of what comes near you if you want it. Thank you so much. Now from tonight I am sure this will mean a great deal more to you than the words have meant in the past, and try to remember, the more you can feel the reality, the closeness, and the thrill, the light of our life in yourselves and around yourselves, the more can the flame come close to you. Pour into you and enfold you, go into your affairs and produce our perfection here. That is why the mighty victory gave you the statement, fill me with yourself, and make me the victory of yourself in action. When you turn to your, beloved I am presence, and to us and say, fill me with your greater ascended master life, and blaze your heart flame of invincible, sacred fire, all purifying love into me and prevent all wrong, it shall be done. 
Pour it into the conditions around the outer self, and it shall be done. Pour it into your nation, and it shall be accomplished. So unto this end have I come this hour to offer my gift, my greater life, my love for the nation of my heart, for my heart and beloved saint. German's heart is one heart. And it is one with your hearts. You are the heart of the world, and therefore, it can only be protected and sustained and saved by the sacred fire love from the ascended master's octave, which has created this world to begin with. And which gave of that heart flame to establish this nation in the beginning as the nation of freedom. And you are the children of freedom. You can be the heart flame of freedom. You can be the heart power of freedom. You can be the heart protection of freedom if you want to. Thank you. The heart desire in you that wants it is the feeling within you that wants it, and when your feeling wants it enough, it will get it. When your feeling wants this heart flame from the ascended master's octave, of our sacred fire love, and you want that intensely enough, no discord is going to come near you. But if you want discord and forget to call for our sacred fire love, then the discord comes in and rules you or your affairs. From this hour you are going to live from within our heart flame sacred fire love, and the greater life from the ascended master's octave is given to you for the redemption of the world. Thank you so much. So the heart of the world, which the United States of America is, must be filled with the heart flames from the ascended master's octave greater life, to bring the greater protection to God's freedom in this nation to protect it, and to illumine it by the purity from the ascended master's octave. Because nothing can contaminate the heart flame of the ascended master's octave or the heart flame of the mighty I am presence, that is the eternal, purifying, sacred love of the sacred fire's almighty heart presence of life. And its heart command to life brings into this world the ascended master's immortal perfection of eternity and is the greatest protection you can possibly have. So from this hour, go forth and feel yourselves clothed in the ascended master's sacred fire miracle mantle and heart flame of love's mastery, and love's command for evil to cease to be, and so shall your experiences bear out the fulfillment of the truth I bring you this hour. Thank you with all my heart. Thank you for every decree you have ever given. But now feel that our ascended master life of our heart's flame is lowering into the physical octave in, through, and around you to be the greater strength of the heart life from. Dis the ascended master's octave into this nation as the heart of the world, to expand our perfection and hold protection for that which is constructive everywhere. The protection you need is here in the greater life that we give, and our heart flames are the love this world needs to dissolve and consume the discord and impurity that has created the shadows and the darkness in which mankind has become enmeshed, and which you call war. So our greater life is necessary in this world to prevent that which the sinister force would like again to intrude upon the world, unless the cosmic law, through some unascended beings, releases enough sacred fire to consume and prevent the hatred that has been generated to destroy what God has created. So to this end do I call your assistance and my miracle mantle of love's mastery around you can become a living sun presence of our sacred fire love, and as more and more of that expands, the hordes of evil must be consumed, because we are the release of the sacred fire that can consume it and in one flash of the sacred fire of the fiery Christ from the ascended master's octave, can wipe out mankind's creation of discord that has been generated for centuries. But you must live as the heart flame of the consumed by the two fifty but you must live as the heart flame of the sacred fire love of the greater life from your own mighty I am presence, and higher mental body and the ascended master's octave, to be drawn into the physical world to take its dominion and issue the command for that which is wrong to be dissolved and consumed by the sacred fire. That is your authority, your privilege, the choice of your free will to issue that command until it is manifested everywhere around you, and as you command it for the whole world, that command must act for you inside of yourselves and in your affairs. I offer you, dear hearts of the light, the dear hearts flame of love, sacred fire love from the ascended master's octave, to come into this physical world and redeem this nation and the rest of mankind as you make this call, and let it flow to prevent the wrong that is intended. So I commend you to your victory, and the only victory of all eternity is the sacred fire heart flame of ascended master love drawn into this world to be master here, and let human creation understand it. I ask you to exert your mastery for your own protection, the protection of your loved ones, the protection of everything that is. 2. 
constructive within the nation, and for the saving of the constructive activities of the world from the desecration that the sinister force intends. So I do bring you the greater life from our octave that is the heart flame sacred fire love of eternal peace. The world prattles about peace and prepares all the time for destruction. We are bringing the heart flame of eternal love which is eternal peace. We offer it to you without price, without limitation, without any consideration at all except your acceptance and use of it, that our greater life may bring our perfection here. And then you will know what the messenger has meant when she has called forth the violet flame heaven on earth to fulfill the ascended masters, divine plan the ascended masters way. Let us go forward and hold you in the violet flame heaven of our heart's love of the sacred fire of our greater life. And it can only bring you perfection and happiness, and you and the nation and the world, the victory of the ascension. I commend you to your victory as you use this call and send it forth for the ascension of all. Thank you with all my heart. Record CD 1028. Discourse 12. Beloved Godfra. May 7, 1964 Los Angeles, California Blessed Hearts of Los Angeles, tonight as we are releasing through each of you, and to those under this radiation throughout the world, as much of the power of our love as you can stand from time to time, try to realize, every time you call to us for help. Whether that be for yourselves or the nation, there comes the release into the physical octave of either a light ray, the cosmic light substance, or some activity of the sacred fire. And regardless of what needs to be corrected in the physical world, bear this constantly in mind. Everything that is of discord creates a shadow, creates the density of substance that produces discord. Therefore, if you are to be released from either your problems or the world's problems or human creation anywhere, there must come the cosmic. Dis light substance from the ascended master's octave. There must come the constant outpouring of the light rays from the ascended master's octave and there must come more of the sacred fire's love to life through the humanity of this world in order to consume the discord mankind has created. Until you saw it from the ascended master's octave as we do, you could not possibly comprehend mankind's frightful misuse of the energy of life in this world, century after century, down through the various civilizations and the thousands of years that mankind has created discord. So regardless of what has to be corrected in the physical octave, remember this, that which life provides you with in order to correct a condition, is always some activity of the sacred fire, the cosmic light, and that outpouring of love that is the illumining presence of the universe. You do not realize, when you go out into the sunshine and see the heavens illumined by the light from the physical sun, you do not recognize that as love. You feel its physical light, but the intellect of man has forgotten that only love creates light. And after the experiment of the centuries with the misuse of life's energy to gratify human desire and produce conditions that hurt. 250. Some. Some. Are, when human beings of this world have gone on for centuries creating discord lifetime after lifetime that only darkens this world, and that which is upon it, then there must come from the great cosmic realms of light, the great central sun. When human beings of this world have gone on for centuries creating discord lifetime after lifetime that only darkens this world, and that which is upon it, then there must come from the great cosmic realms of light, the great central sun. Through the physical sun, there must come to this earth a concentration of the purifying love which illumines the darkness by consuming it. So in governing yourselves in your outer world activities, if you will keep the intellect reminded that everyone for centuries creating discord lifetime after lifetime that only darkens this world, and that which is upon it, then there must come from the great cosmic realms of light, the great central sun. Through the physical sun, there must come to this earth a concentration of the purifying love which illumines the darkness by consuming it. So in governing yourselves in your outer world activities, if you will keep the intellect reminded that every discordant feeling you send forth creates some kind of a shadow upon life creates the darkness which makes mankind stumble, which makes mankind forget the source that gives the light. When you see the intellect of man constantly in turmoil and the feeling of mankind constantly generating discord, which means constantly creating darkness, then you must understand that in order to protect yourselves against the destructive conditions that have been generated in the outer world, there must come light within you. There must come light. Dis 200 and around you. There must come light into your affairs if constructive activity is to be sustained and protected. And that is the reason you were given the statement in the beginning of this, I am, activity, 
the light of God never fails, because only the light can consume the darkness. Only the light, which is the purifying harmony of our love, can dissolve and consume the discord generated by human feeling. Therefore, understanding this, I hope you will recognize from now on that you, as the I am student body, are not only the carriers of the light from the ascended master's octave into the conditions of the physical world to produce that which is constructive and protect it. You must become the light yourselves. That means you must become the sacred fire love of our life, because mankind cannot set itself free from the discord it has generated without the sacred fire purifying love from the ascended master's octave, as well as from the beloved I am presence. Therefore, no matter what has to be done in the physical octave, if it's going to produce that which is constructive, if it's going to bring harmony and happiness and healing to you, if it's going to bring you supply, it's going to have to come out of the light. And if people won't give recognition to the light as the source, that's the reason they don't have it. It's the reason they have 256 light as the source and supply of every good thing, they won't have the supply. That's the reason they don't have it. It's the reason they haven't had it in the past. They won't have it in the future unless they give recognition to the fact that the light is the supply of life, and that life is our love, and that love is eternal purity. Therefore, if those who want the constructive way of life are to be supplied in the changing conditions of the outer world's darkness, then there must come the channel of light. Everything that is supplied to this world comes into existence on a light ray or comes out of the heart flame of love. And very few people are aware that the supply of the things of this world is the condensation of the life, the love, and the life, of the cosmic beings who have created this world, and whose life continually sustains it and whose life directs it and whose life possesses it. It's about time somebody woke up to the fact that the cosmic beings own this earth and all upon it. Therefore the hordes of evil that the sinister force has generated that have an idea they have a right to destroy or take anything they choose and go on without paying the penalty, is blindness indeed. So those of you who are to be supplied in the future must be awakened to the recognition that everything you get in this physical world is, the gift of the love of somebody's life from the ascended host. The powers of nature are created by the Lord Moha Chohan, the God of gold, the God of nature, and the great beings who direct the forces of the elements. Therefore the very supply of what sustains mankind in this world is the life and the gift, and the love of some one or more of the cosmic beings whose life sustains the planet, and the life of the beings who are great enough to create a world and produce the powers of nature upon it. You should certainly remember and recognize that that light is the love of that life which has chosen to manifest this world, that mankind may embody here and become ascended beings. So if you lack supply for any good thing, stop first and send your love to your beloved I am presence and thank it for the light that its love is in the universe. And when you put love first and recognize that the light of infinite space, the light from the physical sun to this world, is some activity of love from some one or more of the cosmic beings from the central sun, you will be. 258 The I am discord in right relationship to the boundless supply of the universe that is flowing constantly, and looking for an opening through which to pour its boundless love and its illumining presence into manifestation as whatever is required to produce perfection, to fulfill the divine plan. And to be the great central sun magnet that raises the life of the outer self out of the human and into the divine. Anytime there are problems or limitations or struggle or lack of any kind, any good thing, begin with the realization. It is the lack of some activity of love. Love is the illumination of the universe, and love is the activity of life, and therefore, Whatever manifestations are to come into this world begin with the love of the cosmic beings whose life is the world. I am bringing this to your attention tonight because I want you free from lack and limitation, if you will accomplish this which I have offered for your freedom when the rest of the world won't have it. I hope you understand me. Thank you so much. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. When we are, from our octave, compelled to observe, as we handle conditions in the physical world, Mankind's continual clawing for the things of this world. Discourse 12. 250. Sometimes it's difficult to wait until the cosmic law moves into action and shuts off the expanding darkness of human selfishness. So we bring this to your attention that you may form the habit of, whenever you want anything in this world, anything, and it doesn't make any difference what it is, so long as it be constructive, 
the moment you want anything that is right for you to have. Stop and remember that the life of your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host and the heart flame of love of your life is the illumination of the outer self. It is the illumination of your world out of which comes the things that you use in the physical world, with which you gain your experience, and which are the raising power. The things that are constructive are the raising energy of the light that takes you through to your ascension. You can't heal the bodies of this world without light. You can't see where you are going without light. You can't comprehend in the intellect the true understanding of life and the manifestations of this universe without light in the brain, and it is the point of light in every cell of your body that is the energy that causes the outer self to exist. So in remembering that to gain your mastery over. All in this world is the raising power that takes you to your ascension, that raising power is the light of our love. It is the light of the love of your mighty I am presence, it is the light of the physical sun, it is the light of the great central sun. It is the light from the heart flame of every ascended master and cosmic being, the angelic host, and every manifestation of life that is constructive. And all that raises mankind out of destructive conditions must be the magnetic pull of the love of light. When the light is not allowed to expand within the individual because of the selfishness and darkness, created by the discord of the outer self, then the outer self has less and less and less of the things of this world to use, until the outer self has to pass through the second death. There is only one thing shuts off light, and that is the darkness. And the darkness is discord. Even what you call the darkness of night is blue, it's not black. That blue is electronic force, and that blue is illumination in itself. So, beloved ones, you are coming to a point where, before you do anything in the physical world, your love should go to your presence, and offer its obedience there. Ask that the light. Discourse 12. Of the love of the, mighty I am presence, and the light of the love of the ascended host come in, through, and around you, and go into the conditions you have to handle in order to prevent the encroaching darkness of the outer world's violence from coming, into connection with you and your world. I am bringing this to your attention tonight, dear hearts, for your protection. Thank you so much. It is absolutely imperative that the light be increased within this nation from certain cosmic activities of the ascended masters, octave that we are waiting to not only draw into the lower atmosphere of earth, but we are waiting to anchor them into the physical structure of earth itself. And within the continent of North America some of this light has already been placed within the structure of the earth for your protection. Thank you so much. Now if it is necessary to protect the structure of the earth by the light of our love from our ascended master octave, and the power of control, the same thing is true of the individual. So we want to anchor in and around each of you a sun presence and a heart presence of as much of the cosmic light substance from the ascended. 262. Master's octave as we can draw in and around you and as much of those activities of the sacred fire that are necessary in and around you to not only repel destructive forces, but to release a power that consumes them. Now it's one thing to avoid destructive conditions of the outer world and hold your safety. And that has to be done first. Then after that is established around you, then the calls go forth for the consuming, the release to the earth of whatever sacred fire's purity is necessary to consume mankind's evil. This has a double purpose. It not only minimizes the activity of evil and begins to shut it off, but as the darkness is consumed by the light of the ascended master's love, as that human creation is consumed. The individual life streams are given more opportunity to let the light from the heart of each life stream expand through the outer self its constructive activities to raise the individual to greater and greater perfection. So in order to protect you against the discord that is whirling in the outer, there must come the tube of light, the violet consuming flame and the electronic circle. That insulates you from the discord of the outer world. But when there. Disc. Two. Moves into outer physical conditions a certain concentration of the cosmic light substance from the great central sun, and the great cosmic light rays and activities of the sacred fire that are to consume the evil in this world, then the, mighty I am presence of each life stream must have an opportunity to expand the light through the heart and release the desire, into the feeling, of wanting the constructive way of life. When discord has been generated too long, it crowds back the heart desire, and only the animal desires of the outer self are allowed to be gratified. And they, of course, do only that which destroys. 
but when the human creation is consumed, then the beloved I am presence of each life stream has an opportunity to expand the light through the heart flame. And that light, as it passes through the structure of the physical body and passes through the inner bodies of the individual, becomes the illumining consciousness, and it fills the outer self with the feeling that wants to do what is constructive. That's the only way you will ever purify mankind. That's the cosmic law's way of freeing every life stream from the darkness that has been generated by discord. So, beloved ones, when we come to bring this to your consciousness, it is that you may always, before you attempt to change outer world conditions, you, first of all, turn to your beloved I am presence and say, I love to obey you. Fill me with your own heart's flame. Expand your light through me to all things in this world, and release the light that forever prevents human creation from touching my being or world. When you make that call, you give authority to your beloved I am presence to control outer physical conditions. Many people don't want to let go of their human desires. When the outer self thinks it's going to lose the gratification of its outer desires, it isn't too much concerned about the light. And until the individual takes the stand with the beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to let the light of the heart desire expand through the outer self, so only that which is constructive goes forth or takes place in the affairs of the individual. Until that heart desire is given authority and allowed to expand its light, the outer self goes on creating the shadows of its own darkness by the gratification of the animal desires of the outer self, and the darkness becomes greater and greater. Until the individual cannot get free without the assistance of an ascended being. Dis When the ascended being gives the assistance, that being brings sacred fire to burn up the human darkness. So anything that is constructive that you desire is a release of the expansion of the light through the heart. And anything you desire that is not constructive is, but the animal creation of the outer self which carries penalty, until the light is allowed to hold control of all things of the outer self. And then you become an illumining being. Mankind's bodies in the beginning of embodiment in this world were luminous. Each of you illumined your own pathway in the two first million years of your embodiment. And the outer self is not luminous unless the heart flame is allowed to release its desires and blaze its light into the flesh structure, and into the outer world activities to produce only that which is constructive. So when you see the violence and the distress and the degradation and the filth that mankind has created and is creating in the outer world, Dear ones, there must come light from above into these conditions in order to consume them, and unless that light comes, they are not consumed. And that light is the forerunner of the sacred fire. The light comes first, then the light rays are more. Two six intense, there isn't anything in this, 266, intense action of that electronic force, and then comes the sacred fire's love that creates only perfection and illumined substance for eternity. There isn't anything in this world going to correct conditions permanently except the illumining love of the heart flame of the mighty I am presence and from the ascended master's octave, from the temples of the sacred fire, from the great central sun. And from the heart flames of the cosmic beings who are constantly giving their light to this system of worlds. Without light, what have you? You would cease to be. Then if your very existence is the existence of light, then whatever you want that is constructive must come out of the love which produces light. Love is the illumining presence of the universe. Love is the illumination of the earth. Love is the illumination of the individual, and that illumination is the light from the presence, and the ascended host by which all constructive activity is created, and without it, you don't have constructive activity. So if there is anything in your being and world that you want to manifest, so long as it be constructive, remember. It begins first of all with your love to your presence. It begins with that. Discourse 12. Obedience to the love of your presence, and it begins with your call for the light of its love to come in and around the outer self and fill your world with its constructive activities. But as you call this into outer existence, demand that that be so terrific that it forever prevents the shadows, forever prevents discord. You can do it. And after you have a few manifestations that are the fulfillment of your calls, 
You will begin to live in the light that is the radiation from the love flame of your own, mighty I am presence, heart and from the ascended master's octave. When you demand that everything in your being and world be, from this hour henceforth, a heart flame of the love from the mighty I am presence and the ascended host, you will find its illumining presence filling you and correcting conditions in the outer world under which you have struggled. And this will be the fulfillment of your call to be free from problems and struggle, from mistakes and limitations, and you can have it just as well as you can have air to breathe. I hope I haven't been too hard on you tonight. If I have, we'll shock away a little darkness, so it's all in a good purpose. It's all in. A good cause. There is only one thing the world needs. That's the light of the love from the mighty I am presence and the ascended host. So whatever lack exists in your beings or worlds, begin to go back to the presence. Say, I love to give you obedience. Fill me with the light of your love, but blaze it everywhere into the outer world and forbid darkness to exist, and no matter what you pour into me, blaze it with enough light to compel the prevention of all wrong. And just as certainly as you make that call will you have the answer to it in your physical conditions. I have given you this explanation tonight that you may set to work to prevent your problems, to prevent struggle. We want you free from these conditions, that your light may release more power into outer world conditions to protect what is constructive. It isn't just for your own convenience that we want you free, or that we want you free from problems or struggle. We want you free that there may be more light go into the nation to prevent the slaughter intended. So if you will give us this cooperation, we can give you the boundless blessings from our octave that cannot come to the rest of mankind for some centuries ahead. Discourse 200. You are the vanguard. You have been given the explanation of the law. We have taken away your human creation, or most of it. Some of you have gone out and created some more, but we have prepared you, that we may bring more light into this nation at the time when it's going to have to have the protection of our love or it won't be protected. If you love your nation and you love your freedom and you love your convenient way of life, your comfortable way of life, and you love the constructive activities of life, remember this, they can only be sustained and protected by somebody's love. That is the light from your beloved I am presence and the ascended host. To that love do I commend you. May you stay within a heart presence of its almighty cosmic action, and may you dwell within it and hold the harmony, so that wherever you abide, the darkness cannot enter into you nor your affairs, nor your world to prevent you having what we want you to have in order to make you powerful enough to render the service that needs to be given to your nation. So the nation must have the light of our love and the light of your love, because you are atoms in this nation. 2. I am pleading tonight for the protection of all that is constructive within your borders. And that protection can only come by the light of your I am presence and the light of the ascended master's octave. If that light becomes bright enough, the light within the American people itself will be the strength to throw off the destructive forces before they can accomplish what they intend, so it is for the protection of your nation. It is for the peace to you individually. It is for your boundless supply and your health that we have come and offered this tonight. If you will place the love to your presence first and ask for the light of its love to fill you and everything around you, to prevent anything wrong existing, we can amplify that without limit and the very harmony and purity you maintain will carry within it the boundless supply of the things you are going to require in order to produce the constructive conditions that fulfill the divine plan. And that raise you and the nation out of the clutches of the destructive forces until they are consumed. I commend you to the harmonious, permanent way for your supply, your health, your nation, and the protection of all that is constructive. And it will affect your loved ones just as well as your own. individual world. So, beloved ones, whenever you think of anything you need, think first of all of the heart flame of love from your presence, and its light in and around you. Command that light to expand and fill the conditions around you. Let it have its dominion, and ask us to come in and possess and control everything around you, and we will establish it, so long as you live within the heart flame of the love that is master of all. So I commend you to victory without limit, to everything that is constructive, and commend you to protection without limit that must come in order to lift you out of the connection with the limitations of the outer world, that are your problems and your struggle. 
if you will remember your love and obedience to your presence and to the heart flames of the ascended host, we can do for you that which we cannot do in any other way. So we enfold you, each of you, in a sun presence of our own heart's love to blaze our ascended master light around you, to disconnect the shadows that are your problems and struggle, and to make you strong enough to hold the victory of the light wherever you go. And you become the illumining presence to all you contact, and you are the peace controlling presence. You are the peace supplying presence, and you are the peace healing presence, and you are the illumining presence of our love to the earth. We hope you will accept it, use it without limit, feel yourselves clothed in its miracle mantle of eternal mastery, and go forward and let us consume the shadows as quickly as possible. Thank you with all my heart's love. Rec Discourse 13 Beloved Goddess of Liberty June 13, 1965 Santa Fe, New Mexico Beloved children of my heart, I trust one may bring to you this hour an assistance which, if you will cooperate with us, I am sure will bless you for eternity. It is that we may give you every possible help, and strengthen you in every way you need to be strengthened to stand against anything of the outer world, that would draw your attention from the light in your use of it to solve your problems and hold your protection and give you supply. When you heard us call your attention to the fulfillment of the divine plan, try to realize that every effort you make to fulfill the divine plan, you should call your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host into action to hold invincible. Eternal protection around every effort you make to outpicture the divine plan's fulfillment in order to give you the blessings which it can and will bring into the physical octave. As you make effort to fulfill the divine plan, each step of the way keep demanding eternal, indestructible protection around your individual fulfillment of the divine plan. Now this is necessary. It is just like the insulation of an electric wire. It keeps around you our release of the sacred fire from time to time that not only keeps repelled the discord that might interfere with you, but it keeps repelled the things of the outer world that want to draw your attention upon them so you don't have time to fulfill the divine plan. This is a very subtle way the sinister force keeps people from attaining their victory and reaching their goal. Every time the light expands within you to make you more capable of manifesting greater perfection in the fulfillment of the divine plan, and feeling your mastery, the human creation of the outer world will make every conceivable effort to take your attention away from the fulfillment of the divine plan, or the release of the light and the power or the harmony within you that would bring the fulfillment quickly, because the sinister force knows. As long as it can delay your fulfillment of the divine plan, it has another chance to entrap you in its discord. Discord. So don't give quarter to anything except the fulfillment of the divine plan the ascended master's way, because the ascended master's way does not contain delay, does not contain obstruction, does not contain mistakes, does not contain lack of any good thing. And this is the point. I am coming to help you have limitless supply and the protection you need to enable you to move forward, and have the blessings which the divine plan wants you to have for use in the physical world before you ascend. Let us do everything possible to make and keep you as independent as possible in your everyday activities, by keeping your attention and your efforts of the outer self so held within the divine plan's fulfillment that your harmony is maintained. When your attention is on the divine plan and its fulfillment, you are harmonious. When your attention is upon it and you demand the Ascended Master's indestructible protection of your fulfillment of your divine plan, you insulate yourself and your activity in a wave of the cosmic light or a flame of the sacred fire that gives you more strength in the outer. It keeps you untouched by delay or interference. It gives you the strength of the light to fulfill the divine plan. And you've got to have it you can't fulfill the divine plan without the light. Now let me show you how near that light is within you, how much of it is within you, how much you are always using, and you don't recognize it as light. The strength of the energy within you to do anything constructive is luminous. The actual electronic force within your nerves, within the body, is luminosity. Now many people don't exactly doubt that, but they just don't see how it can be. The messenger, many long, long years ago, many times, not too long ago has called your attention to the fact there is light within your body. There is light within the brain structure. There is light within your flesh, and long ago you were told, if you want to prove this to yourselves, as you close your eyes and touch the eyeballs slightly, you will begin to see sparks of light inside. 
and if there were not light inside of you, why would you see it? Now therefore, every constructive impulse within you will expand that light, and the expansion of that light is the strength, the more concentrated energy from the higher mental body as it flows into the outer self. And the same thing takes place when we enfold you in our own heart's love. When we send you a wave of feeling of encouragement or strength or protection or illumination, it is always a release of electronic force from the ascended. 200 Master, Ascended Master Body. It's from our octave. Sometimes it's from our own heart's flame, sometimes it's from our temples of the sacred fire. And we can project a flame of that to you, just the same as you can project any kind of a flame in the physical world. Therefore your progress, your strength, and your victory depend entirely upon your recognition of the light within you. It's the strength of the light within you that gives you the ability to do anything that is constructive. So when we ask you to call forth the Ascended Master's indestructible protection to your fulfillment of the Ascended Master's divine plan for you, for the nation, for mankind, and for the world, it is that you may be aware of the greater light within the flesh and the greater light and sacred fire that we send forth when our love comes forth to enfold you. When you have made the call for our miracle mantle of love's mastery to enfold you and prevent all wrong, there must come the substance of light from the Ascended Master's octave. There must come a projection of the sacred fire, the violet consuming flame or the gold flame or the pink flame or the blue flame, for whatever is needed at the time to enfold you in whatever power keeps the 278 the I am Outer Worlds You might feel this is a lesson, 278 Outer Worlds discord and interference, or pull upon your attention, from drawing your attention to the outer world and thereby delaying the fulfillment of your calls. You might feel this is a lesson, and it is. You are being instructed on the great law of life, that you may build and create that which is the divine plan's perfection for you. But after you have created something, dear hearts, you must either protect it or the outer world will take it away from you. Now you know as well as you live, the outer world is full of mankind's selfishness and discord, and every conceivable destructive activity to interfere or take away anything constructive that you create. Therefore, in order to have the enjoyment and the perfection of the divine plan fulfilled, that you may use it for your greater accomplishment or your greater service to others, you must understand that from the very beginning. You should demand the Ascended Master's sacred fire's indestructible protection of your fulfillment of your divine plan. If you will also call this forth to protect your attention, hold the Ascended Master's protection of your attention, you will be perfectly amazed. How you may pass through conditions and be perfectly oblivious to the destructive things that are there. It will help you to maintain the harmony. It will help you to maintain purity. It will help you to prevent interference and delay in the victory you wish to accomplish. So there are many, many blessings. Let us apply this to your supply. When you think you need money, do you? Are you so sure you need money? The cosmic beings don't have to have money to create this world, to sustain it. They don't have to buy the powers of nature. There is a way and means life has of creating, sustaining, expanding, producing the opulence of the universe without what you call money. Now when you think you need money, in reality you need the expansion of the flame in your own heart, and the light substance from the ascended master's octave, and the flow of the luminous energy from the great central sun magnet. Now this needs to come into your feeling world. You know why. To make you the magnet of attraction for what you need down here that is already created. If you knew, in the money world, when people seem to have a great accumulation of money, how? To it, much the consciousness, the attention has just been filled with the picture, and money. 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 That's the reason they attract it to them, because they love it. Now if you will pour your love to the presence and ask your mighty I am presence and the ascended host and the great central sun magnet to fill you with our luminous love, the great central sun magnet's love and the higher mental body and the ascended host. So they can draw to you by that love whatever there is in this physical world that can assist you to fulfill the divine plan, give you the convenience, give you the protection, give you the opulence you need to live harmoniously and constructively and invincibly protected at the same time. So somebody else can't come and take it away from you. The great central sun magnet can draw it to you. 
Our love can give it to you. Your own, mighty I am presence, and higher mental body can pour forth in and around you the love that automatically attracts it to you. But after you get it, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to let somebody else take it away? Are you going to let somebody else misuse it? Are you going to let human creation, after you made the effort to produce something constructive? Dis too are you going to let human creation come in and desecrate it? Whatever you create by your own love and your light, you are responsible for it. But if you will call forth the Ascended Master's fiery Christ blue lightning protection of whatever you call into your outer use, or into any manifestation of the physical world, our protection is a blue lightning charge of electrical force that can absolutely annihilate anything. Therefore you can have indestructible protection to anything, and everything you want to create in the physical world to fulfill your divine plan the Ascended Master's way, and to be a blessing to the rest of life wherever you abide. And you don't have to live in the fear and the destruction of individuals who as yet will not serve the light. Now this has much to do with your supply. Every time you think you don't have any supply, you do not hold the picture in your mind of the next wave of supply that you want. And try to remember this, it matters not what you lack. Whether it be strength in the body, whether it be things in your physical use, whether it be outer world conditions and opportunity, whatever you want that is constructive must have the light within it. It must be the light. It must be made. Of the light substance. It must be filled with the energy that is luminous, and it must be protected by the sacred fire love, which is fiery Christ blue lightning purity and protection. So, beloved ones, when you thoroughly understand this, when you feel your responsibility to protect anything for which you call, so long as you are calling for something that is constructive. If you will recognize that to fulfill the divine plan means that you must protect it so that you don't use your own creative powers to produce something in the physical world just to let the sinister force come along and misuse it, or use it destructively to injure some other part of life. You are responsible for everything that you create, good or otherwise, but you don't have to any longer be distressed by the dishonesty of human creation, by its interference, by its destruction, or by its deliberate, intentional interference with your fulfillment of your divine plan. So I hope I may set you free today from the limitations of your supply. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. Now many people are so terribly disturbed, and we know what it is all about. We have all been. Dis- 200. Through the same experience. You feel so helpless when you don't have supply. It isn't the supply that makes you feel helpless, or the lack of it. It's the lack of the light, because when your love goes to your presence, you allow the unfed flame in your heart to expand. Your presence pours back to you infinitely greater love than you can give. And therefore when you let the outer self be filled with the love of the presence and the love of the great central sun magnet, the very luminosity of that love within and around you will make you a magnet to draw to you anything and everything that is constructive. Just as certainly as you've got a head on your shoulders. Therefore, try to feel that it isn't the money that's the power. It's the love to the presence, and the love that the presence pours back into you, and your love to the great central sun magnet. Its love pouring back into you is the magnetic attraction for conditions in the physical world by which money can come, if it's money you require. The same thing is true of healing. The same thing is true of harmonious association. The same thing is true of your creation of the fulfillment of the great divine plan. So try, from here on, to remember that no matter what you want, begin. First with the feeling, not what you want here, but the desire in your heart to send love to your presence, and ask the presence, to fill you in your world with its love, that contains what fulfills the divine plan. You will find the limitless will be yours for use. Then when it comes into your outer use, you make your call for it to be charged with the ascended master's sacred fire prevention of all wrong. Then, my dear ones, it wouldn't make any difference if you needed a billion a minute, you would have fulfilled the requirements of the great divine law to let it act and come into your outer use. And we want you free. Otherwise your lack holds your attention so long that you don't have much freedom, or time or energy left to do the great things that reveal the divine plan's fulfillment in this world. Now I've given you your mother's penny lecture. Thank you so much. 
If when you think you need things in this world, you will say, Oh no. I obey the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So my love belongs to my presence first. Then when you send your love there, then ask your presence to pour forth back into you. Discourse 13. All the love it knows you need to draw to you in the physical world the things that enable you to fulfill the great divine plan. Have you ever thought of sending your love to the great central sun magnet? Try it. It's a magnetic attraction that draws to you whatever blessings are in the light, whatever blessings are in the sacred fire love from the heart of creation. But your love must go there first and unlock the door, so greater love can come here and pour into the outer world whatever action of life's energy enables what you need to be drawn to you. So I trust as you consciously remember this. Will you ask your beloved I am presence? and the ascended host to charge you and fill you with the fiery Christ truth of what your love to your presence, and your presence, love to you can do for you in the physical world to give you boundless supply. You ask your, I am presence, and the ascended host to tell you the fiery truth, to make you feel the fiery truth of what the light and the love of the presence can do in you and through you and around you, to draw to you the conditions, the supply, the protection. Whatever you need to fulfill the ascended master's divine plan and there won't be any happiness permanent for you except to since your beloved in the ascended master's divine plan fulfilled your own plans won't bring you permanent perfection nothing but the ascended master's octave will since your beloved mighty i am presence and higher mental body are one with us then the same law applies and whatever you want down here must either come the way of your beloved i am presence and the ascended master's way both ways of which are unlimited and eternal and invincibly protected against human creation. If you will use them, you will not know lack or limitation in the future. And we want to get you to that place as soon as possible, and we hope it's right now. Thank you so much, precious ones. You know, when we see people struggling so much from the physical side and needing the things that can so easily be supplied, sometimes it's very much more difficult for us to withhold the power to bring those things to you much more difficult than it is to give them to you. With a wave of our hands we can give you anything and everything on the instant. When we have that power and then have to withhold it because of your own effort, because of your own lack of light, do you not see, sometimes, how much we want to help you, how much we love you, how much we could give to you, and yet you won't let us do it. I think you will let us do a little bit more from today. We hope so. Thank you so much. Now will you tell me any reason in heaven or earth mankind should lack for any good thing under the action of the cosmic law, when the atmosphere is loaded with electronic force, energy, substance, intelligence, ideas. The great law of the universe provides everything in the atmosphere of your earth to be precipitated, either by the powers of nature or directly by the ascended host, into your outer use for your constructive use to fulfill your divine plan. Nature is lavishly supplying to mankind, and mankind wastes, wastes, wastes. And that is exactly why individuals lack, because somewhere in the past there has either been waste or there has been the discord that locked the door against the love, the light of the love which is the magnetic power of attraction to draw it to you. Whether it be from your mighty I am presence, from the ascended master's octave, or the great central sun magnet, matters not. You can only keep the door open to those three channels of supply by your love there first. And if you will give your love to your mighty. I am presence. The same thing is 288. I am presence. The love it pours back to you is infinitely greater. Therefore, no matter what your need is down here, your presence will always give you more than you need to draw to you from this world what fulfills the divine plan. The same thing is true of every ascended master and every ascended master's temple of the sacred fire. The same thing is true of the great central sun magnet, and I challenge every one of you in this, I am, activity to send your love to the great central sun magnet, and ask it to flood back into you and into your world whatever love draws to you in the physical octave. The lavish supply of every good thing to fulfill the divine plan and keep it invincible against human creation forever. I want you to try it out, and I am going to watch for the opportunity to assist you. Thank you so much. Now it doesn't make the least bit of difference what's wrong in this world. Whatever is wrong is a lack of light. 
Whatever is a lack of light is a lack of love. So if you will analyze this right back to the fundamental of life, you've got the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Discourse the two. When you understand that your love to your beloved I am presence, your love to the great central sun, your love to the ascended host, your love to the great central sun magnet, your love to the magnificent blessings of creation, that your love there is your first action to the infinite life to pour forth its infinite blessings and supply back to you. But you are the spark of the love that ignites into a flame the outpouring of the boundless supply of substance and energy and blessings and happiness, and the sacred fire from your own presence octave of life or the ascended master's octave or the great central sun. Beloved ones, please don't stay in lack and limitation longer. I want you free. But when you draw things into manifestation, don't fail to call forth for whatever ascended master fiery Christ blue lightning indestructible protection prevents them being used for any kind of human creation. And as soon as you are secure, we could flood your worlds with anything and everything. And then the next thing, when you accomplish this, is instantaneous precipitation by your own release of your own, mighty I am presence, powers of mastery through the outer self, as you deal with the higher activities that fulfill the divine plan and manifest here what gives you eternal freedom. Blessed ones, you have had these powers before. You have used the powers of precipitation and levitation and etherealization, and they have been in storage a long while. I think you have paid your bill now and they should release them to you. And your bill is only paid by love. So, blessed ones, when you love your presence enough, when you love the great central sun magnet enough, when you love the ascended master's octave of perfection and their divine plan fulfilled enough, the very intensity of your love will release the light and the light will be the magnet that draws them to you. I trust you may go forward encouraged from this hour. And if you think you need some more encouragement, if you call to me for my miracle mantle of love's mastery that contains within it the courage, the strength, the illumination, and the fiery Christ truth you need to fulfill the great divine plan, I trust, in my humble efforts. I may be of assistance to you all. And you do not need to stay in lack and limitation any longer than you reach up and set this into action to bring into you or your world what blesses all life, fulfills the divine plan, but is untouchable by human creation. 200. Then you are safe to use the limitless powers of life anywhere you go to build what you please, so long as human creation can never be allowed to create discord or touch it. So let us go forward. You can have this freedom. I want you to have it for many more reasons than you understand, because the outer world, the sinister force, wants only to deprive mankind of everything and deprave people so they lose the courage that is necessary to stand for that which is constructive, and be the victory of the light. So if you are going to be the victory of the light, you are going to have to be the victory of your love to your presence, first, the victory of your presence love to you, and the victory of the love from the ascended master's octave and the great central sun magnet, to draw in and around you whatever is necessary to make you victorious over human creation. And this is it. The great central sun sacred fire love, our sacred fire love, your own mighty I am presence sacred fire love, is victory over all lack and limitation, and it is the victory that brings the divine plan's fulfillment into the physical octave and blazes the light that annihilates the darkness. When the light of that love comes into the room, where has the darkness gone? When the light of our love brings boundless supply, where has lack and limitation gone? Don't you see what it means when that statement has been given you, that condition, that human creation, has no power because it has no light in it to sustain it? Therefore, when you want something constructive sustained, it's going to have to be the love of life's indestructible, protecting perfection. So, go forward. Think it through, and just try it out, and I will give you all the encouragement necessary. And just a few times of ruling conditions that seek only to distress you you will find you can enter into the powerhouse of love supreme. And that love is the great central sun magnet's heart flame that is the divine plan fulfilled everywhere you use it, everywhere you want it, everywhere you need it to bless the rest of life with that which is constructive, release your master powers. And go forward and take your freedom in the victory of the ascension. Beloved ones, the way is open before you, but nobody can love life for you. Nobody can love the universe for you. Nobody can love your mighty I am presence for you. You must do it. 200. 
yourself. There is no greater power anywhere in infinite space than your love to your presence, your presence love back to you, your love to us, and our love back to you, your love to the great central sun magnet, and its love back to you, to draw to you the infinite good of the infinite universe. Go forward and dwell in its heart, and you will know what it means to love the heart flame of the great central sun until your divine plan fulfilled reveals its indestructible, ever-expanding perfection everywhere you abide, and you never again know lack or limitation of any good thing. I commend you to your freedom, your mastery, and your victory by love alone. Thank you with all my heart. Beloved, Discourse 14 Beloved Great Cosmic Angel on whose crown blazes the word Union. July 11, 1965 Santa Fe, New Mexico Beloved Hearts of America, I trust one may bring you the help this afternoon that is required in the physical octave to enable us to release the concentration of power that leashes the destructive forces until they can be compelled into annihilation. I wish to give you the reminder today that no matter what you have to deal with in the outer conditions of the physical world, if it be not constructive, then it is some accumulation and concentration of the substance of darkness, which means the substance of discord which is the substance of impurity. Therefore, the only thing that is going to purify the conditions of the physical world, especially the mental and feeling world of mankind, and the animal creation of this world, the only possible thing that can give assistance to that which is constructive is the power of the cosmic light and the sacred fire. Therefore when you have to correct conditions in the physical world, start first of all with your realization that the violet consuming flame's indestructible purity must first pass through, and consume the discord and impurity that's already been created. Then call forth the cosmic light substance of indestructible eternal light which contains everything that is constructive, and fill the situation with whatever cosmic light substance concentrates the cosmic light with such force that that which produces a shadow, cannot come within because the light annihilates the shadows. If a condition has something constructive and something not constructive within it, before you can solve the problem, there must come, my dear ones, the violet consuming flames indestructible purity. And then draw or call forth the cosmic light substance of indestructible light, the cosmic light. It is the electronic force of eternal illumination that fills interstellar space everywhere throughout infinite manifestations. Therefore, no matter what you lack in the physical octave, if you're going to produce constructive manifestation, you're going to have to call forth the concentration of the cosmic light substance to become the thing that is eternal purity, therefore eternal fulfillment of your calls and eternal manifestation of that which overrules, annihilates, and prevents human creation being allowed existence. No matter what you lack in this world, you think you lack things. I tell you, you lack the cosmic concentration of the cosmic light substance out of which constructive things are made and sustained, and qualified with eternal perfection, everything that is constructive. People go on lifetime after lifetime in the lack of many, many good things which they could easily have in their use in the physical embodiments in the physical world if they would only understand, this and do it. But if the individual checked himself or herself to see how many minutes or how many hours in a day the mind, and therefore, which is followed by the feeling, which is energy of your life, is qualified with the lack and the limitation and the thoughts and the pictures and the feeling of the problem instead of the cosmic light, that is the perfection you want, or the sacred fire that purifies. You would be utterly amazed if you knew how many minutes or how many hours in a day the mind just 200 wanders and rests on something destructive which again outpictures tomorrow, or some other time, as limitation. I refer you to the messenger's experience on their first trip to the west coast. When they came into Texas, one of the cities in Texas, and they received telegrams saying that the place which had been engaged for the classes, and the advertising, and all that was preparation for a class had been withdrawn and completely collapsed, and the individual responsible said, well, I can't handle it, the first thing they did was say, beloved mighty I am presence and the ascended host, turn this upside down. Bring it into a miracle of perfection. And the third day, the place was so full they had to get a larger place. Now, dear ones, it doesn't make any difference what it is that you lack. Whether it is money or things or energy or harmony or friends or assistance, no matter what you lack, if you will occupy the time and attention, every time the picture or the thought of the condition comes to you, 
if you will immediately reverse that and call forth billions of times. If need be, in order to overcome your acceptance of limitation, billions of times more cosmic light substance and violet flame love than you need. To fulfill the great divine plan, we, from the ascended master's octave, can place on the energy of your own life through your call, we can, just like you place a boat on a river and send it to its destination. We can place on the energy of your life the cosmic light substance from the ascended master's octave, and our sacred fire love that is a magnet to draw into your use the fulfillment of whatever the divine plan requires. Until the outer self is made to obey the cosmic law of replacing everything human by everything divine, unless that habit is established, the race consciousness. And I am speaking now of the habit of thought and feeling and spoken word in the life streams of all mankind down through the ages, that concentration of energy will come in and wreck anybody and anything if you do not call the cosmic light substance into it, and the violet consuming flame to purify. It. When you step into a room and it's dark and you need to find something, you turn on a light. If it isn't enough, you turn on more light. But you don't go around and turn out the light when you want to find something in the dark, do you? Then these habits of mind have got to be corrected. The habits of thought have got to be. 290. Corrected. The habit of feeling and of speech, those habits must all be corrected and replaced by the acknowledgement of the law, by the call of that which fulfills your requirement or your divine plan, and the command to your outer self to stop doing the thing that robs you of the fulfillment of your call. If you understood what power is in that one decree, the moment anything seems not to be the perfection you want, simply ask your beloved I am presence and the ascended host, who are so willing to send you enough love and light and sacred fire to perfect you for eternity, and call that into your physical conditions to turn everything that you contact into a miracle and victory of perfection. If you will acknowledge the fulfillment of the call, the miracle and the victory of perfection, Instead of constantly acknowledging that problem that is facing you, you will give us a greater opportunity to help the nation. So today I am bringing this to your attention that it may not only free you, but that it will release, or enable us to release into the nation, the sacred fire's indestructible purity and cosmic light substance that saves the nation. So I plead with you today to do this for the freedom of your land. Thank you so much. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. Now supposing in your own affairs there seems lack or limitation. Every time the thought of it comes to you, or the feeling of depression or disappointment or struggle or strain about it, if you will catch that thing on the first wave. Don't wait until your attention builds it into a momentum that comes back and tortures you for a week. Seize it on the very first intimation of its negative suggestion to you, and say with every fiber of your being to your, beloved I am presence and the ascended host, I don't care what created this. Mighty I am presence and all the ascended host, blaze whatever violet consuming flames purity, and cosmic light substance in cosmic concentration you know will annihilate this from the universe. Put your divine plan's fulfillment in its place, and lock the door of my consciousness, lock the door of my feeling, lock the door of my acceptance, lock the door of my being and world against the acceptance of anything except the God perfection to which I have a right, for which I call which is the divine plan fulfilled, and which makes me the all-Christ, indisruptible mastery over this condition. Disc. 3. You've got to do it, beloved ones. You can't just sit down and say, divine love always has and always will fulfill every human need. It always has, certainly it has. But just words. Just statements don't contain enough of the energy of the individual's life and enough of the magnetic pull of the higher mental body, and the great central sun magnet, to draw enough concentration into the condition to wipe it out instantly. Then you don't have to go on days and weeks and months struggling under these conditions that seem, while you're in them, insurmountable. Now beloved ones, you understand this law. It's master over all human creation and you must someday come to the place where the light within you and the cosmic light substance around you and the fiery Christ blue lightning purity, or violet consuming flame within and around you, are concentrated enough to be your insulation that has enough repelling force to keep any human creation from connecting with you. You have to do this if you are going to move in this world and be master of it. We come into the physical octave of earth, but we don't take on the conditions that mankind has generated. 
when we walk into a destructive condition to compel its annihilation. The blue lightning goes before us and consumes it before we approach, and it knows better than to come near. I want to charge you with this sense of mastery today. I want to charge you with our feeling of mastery. And when you begin to use the term, through my beloved mighty I am presence and all the ascended host, I am the all Christ, indestructible mastery over every human condition wherever I abide, you will not need to use that but a short time, because I assure you, you can build a momentum of its power within and around you in the most amazing perfection and speed that you can imagine. And you can have all the miracles you want to when you begin to say and acknowledge, through your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host, you are the all Christ, indisruptible mastery over all in this world. I am saying this for every one of you this afternoon and all under this radiation. Thank you so much. Now the reason I must generate this power and force within and around you is because the destructive forces generated by mankind's discord are being increased every day through the warring conditions of the world. The sinister force is 300 constantly increasing that pressure of discord within and around individuals until the cosmic law says, thus far, and no farther, and the fiat goes forth, the lightning blazes, and everything destructive ceases existence right then. You can just as well issue these fiats now and compel destructive conditions within and around you to cease their existence, as to wait for the cosmic law to purify the entire earth until mankind awakens and desires purity. When you want purity, you will not tolerate impurity. When you want supply, you will not tolerate lack. When you want the light, you will not tolerate the darkness. So the decision is entirely within you. In your more harmonious moments, you say, yes, I don't want anything but what's right. But there isn't enough repelling force in the emotional body to generate a powerful surge from the higher mental body to drive into destructive forces around you the fiery Christ blue lightning purity that annihilates them. So everyone, if you are going to reach your mastery, if you are going to have your ascension, if you are going to control conditions in which you must live or want to live or will have to abide, it's much more comfortable, my dear ones, to furnish your world, shall I say, furnish your world with enough cosmic light substance to be the supply of the things that you need to fulfill the divine plan, that you need to use to give assistance to others, you need to use to keep your world protected from the lack and limitation of the outer world. So I bring this to you to help you have boundless supply of every good thing. And it doesn't just mean money. It can be the supply of your health, the supply of conditions of perfection where the human cannot torture you. So, blessed ones, please try to feel that you must furnish your world with the cosmic light substance that brings the things from our octave into your outer use. I hope you read between the lines. I hope you know what I mean. If you gain a momentum of this, the cosmic law can fulfill it, for every ascended master can supply it. But if the outer world robs you of the things that you ought to have to manifest the divine plan's fulfillment, and its activity to bless the rest of life, if the outer world is going to rob you of those things, how can you fulfill the divine plan? We are ready to supply them. The outer world will figure out all kinds of ways to take them from you. So if you are going to have the supply of what we know you're going to need, if I were you. 300. I would furnish my world with the cosmic light substance and the great central sun magnet's love that draws into my outer use that which my presence and the ascended host knows I am going to need to be untouched by the things of the outer world that are destructive. Or by the conditions mankind has generated in the outer world that seek only to take everything away from everybody that is constructive. This has much to do with your supply. And this is quite a new expression in your decrees, when you ask your, beloved mighty I am presence, and the ascended host to furnish your world with the things from the ascended master's octave that are indestructible and untouchable by, human creation. I am not talking in riddles. I am telling you an eternal truth. I am giving you the scepter of freedom. I want you to use it I hope you understand me. Thank you so much. The reason for this, is it will enable you to give others assistance whom we may bring to you, or whom, under the action of the cosmic law, automatically will come to you because of the light you carry. But you do not need to go down under the conditions of the outer world that the Antichrist has generated in order to discourage, destroy, and desecrate anything and everything in this world, and try to destroy the life streams that have thus far tried to hold to the light. 
this has many blessings, and if you understand me, you will not forget to do it. It has many blessings, and it is part of your indestructible protection, because in an hour of emergency, if you have a momentum of this acknowledgement, we could precipitate into your hands and use whatever might be necessary in a crisis. I am not talking in riddles. I hope you understand me. So, beloved ones, it is our privilege. We have power. We can do it. We are master. You are going to need it. But I hope with all my being that the conditions of the outer world may be purified another way, and prevented any longer imposing threatened destruction upon this nation or those who carry the light in any nation. When we come with the cosmic fiat, that if necessary for the protection of America, the jewel in the heart of God, then the light of a thousand suns must descend into the earth and dissolve and consume all human selfishness and discord from the planet. And when you call cosmic light substance in, through, and around yourselves to dissolve and consume human creations, I assure you, it will. Because it is a substance that is so. 3. Bright and a substance that is indestructible and a substance that is indestructibly pure, there won't any human creation get into it. And the Antichrist won't seek to use it, I assure you of that. It's part of the prevention flame. It is part of your indisruptible mastery over all in this world. So if you care to furnish your world with the cosmic light substance of indisruptible purity, and the things the ascended masters know you're going to need, indisruptible forever, we can bring into your outer use that which will bless you, enable you to bless others. It will fulfill your calls for the supply of every good thing, and it will keep you out of the clutches of the outer world's changing conditions that will try to impose lack or limitation of any kind upon this nation or the world. So, blessed ones, this is the treasure house of existence. It exists within our ascended master octave. It is boundless. It is eternal. It's invincible against human discord or human impurity. None of the destructive forces can control it. Therefore, it comes into your hands and use as an eternal focus of ever-expanding perfection, ever-expanding protection ever-expanding control of physical conditions. And you can live in a world of your own, be in the world but not of it, and yet establish. Here is an eternal part of this world some of the perfection that must come from the Ascended Master's octave, as this world is purified and raised into the fulfillment of the great divine plan that makes it a sun in space, and everything upon the planet harmonious, pure, indestructible, and filled with Ascended Master perfection. So don't go down under these conditions of the outer world. We are ready to give you everything. There isn't a thing we'll withhold, but when your attention is held on the shadows, they build around you that which will not let our love come through until you, of your own free will, demand your world be furnished with our love. Our indestructible love that has everything in the universe to give, and nothing that can ever cause distress. And we are waiting. 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 We have waited for centuries for mankind to wake up and reach up and let us fulfill the great divine plan by bringing our perfection here, filling you with it, training you to make the call to fill the rest of the world with that same perfection. And making you able to assist everybody, and everything you contact by calling whatever cosmic light substance is so bright in and around individuals that the human creation cannot stay there. This must come into your nation in order to be the strength of the light to protect and help those who want the constructive way of life, but know not this law. You are very, very fortunate, precious ones. You are the most fortunate people on the face of the globe. You have the divinest gift that can ever be given to life in all eternity throughout infinite space, no matter where you go where life is, and life is everywhere. You are the most fortunate people on earth. There's no one in the universe can give you a greater gift than this light. And we want you to have more of it. We want you to call forth this cosmic light substance from the ascended master's octave that fills everything in your beings and worlds with, our indestructible harmony, indestructible protection, indestructible illumination, and supply of every good thing, and gives you that which makes you master. If you want mastery over your problems and the discordant things in this world, then call forth the mighty I am presence, and the ascended masters all Christ, indestructible mastery over every condition, and prevent all wrong. There is no greater call you could have. Your beloved I am presence is ready. We are ready. 
We are all powerful. The mighty I am presence is all powerful. The angelic host are all powerful. But there must come forth into these physical conditions a light that mankind cannot put out. Now there's a vast difference between the cosmic light substance from the great central sun and the light that your presence gives you and you take up and cover over with something discordant. Not so with the cosmic light. There's no one can shut off that light. That is indisruptible, eternal illumination wherever you abide. And in it is the supply of every good thing. We want to prepare you, so, if need be, we could armor you or enfold you in certain powers that we could draw in and around you for the protection and supply of others as well as yourselves, and to hold the light from the ascended master's octave, the cosmic light substance. Right into the structure of earth itself for the protection of where you walk. That's what I am here for today, to give you the protection if you'll make this call with me. Thank you so much. Therefore, take your stand, beloved mighty I am presence and the ascended host, clothe me with and armor me with the cosmic light substance that is so bright it is indisruptible protection for eternity, indisruptible illumination. 3. Indisruptible love and supply of every good thing, and indisruptible power to accomplish anything and everything that reveals the mastery over the human creation in this world. And that makes this body, wherever I go, the indisruptible, all illumining presence that illumines everything. And no human creation can survive. You can have it just as easily as you can breathe. Here is our octave of light filled with everything that is the mastery, the perfection, the indisruptible glory of life. And we beg and beg and beg through the centuries for mankind to turn away from the shadows that torture them. We are making a final effort to bring this cosmic light substance into the physical octave of this nation, in and around as many people as will accept it, and as will use it, and as will draw it forth for the protection of that which is constructive within the nation and the world. It is a gift we give as free as the air you breathe. It never will contain a discord. It never can produce anything that doesn't bring happiness to all. And I must wait and wait and wait until people are ready to call it into action. I said long ago, over a hundred years ago, in fact, almost two hundred years ago I sent forth this call for the protection and freedom and destiny of this nation. And now we are hoping we may fulfill it through you. So I bring it to your attention. We stand ready to release it. The nation must have it in order to survive. And you must have it if you are going to have protection and supply. So from this hour, will you remember me with this call that gives me the opening to draw within and around you the strengthening, the cosmic light's indisruptible substance that strengthens everything that is constructive within your borders. Holds protection for the people that are trying to do that which is right, and enables you to be held invincible against the hordes of the shadows that know not the light. Were you to call forth the all-Christ illumination of the cosmic light in its mightiest? Concentrated action in and around yourselves to hold the victory for your nation, you could not be refused. Therefore, from this hour we offer you the outpouring of the cosmic light substance from the great central sun. And if you care to call it into the physical conditions around you to make everything in your beings and worlds indestructibly pure, imperishable, and self-luminous with the perfection of the ascended master's octave, we can establish that for you. And that becomes your armor of protection. It becomes your victory over destructive forces. It becomes the indisruptible mastery over all in this world. I cannot give you more. It is love's supreme, love's divinest gift, love's majesty of creation, love's indisruptible, protecting perfection, ever expanding wherever you will give it an opportunity to come into the physical conditions of this world, and establish perfection for eternity. It is the life of our hearts from the ascended master's octave. And we give it that you may live in the world of our light and be through with the experiences of the distress of the shadows. I trust one may be privileged to release this light in and around you, the cosmic light substance that is so bright no human quality can live within it. And it is forever your indisruptible mastery over every bit of human creation. I offer it. I stand ready. I shall listen, and I hope I may hear your call. Until that hour when the earth itself must become luminous with the immortal purity of the ascended master's octave, I hope I may hear you call. Thank you so much. Only enough light will save this world. 
Only enough love can generate that light, and it comes from our ascended master octave. Because unascended mankind cannot generate enough love yet to master the conditions in the world. But we can. So I give you the divinest gift that love can bestow. I give you safety in the midst of danger. I give you protection in the midst of human distress. And there is not one thing of perfection that this cannot bring to you and into this world and into this nation, to fulfill the great divine plan wherein the cosmic law for eternity purifies the earth and forbids mankind of the future to create discord. If you care to live within our world of indisruptible cosmic light so bright human creation cannot live, then we can come closer and closer to you, until that hour when there are no more veils between and our world has entered into your world to raise it into our perfection for eternity. So you are part of the raising process of the world until the hour of the ascension, wherein never again do you have to look upon the shadows. Come into the light of our heart's love. Be the majesty and the victory of our indisruptible mastery over all in this world. And know the all-Christ love within your hearts and the all-Christ love from the ascended master's octave is power enough to overcome. Disc 3 Everything in this world if you stand steady, make the call, and let our world pour forth its blessings in and around you, to make you the strength of the ascended master's octave to issue the command for all human creation to forever cease existence. We will give and give and give whenever you call. And may this world quickly be filled with the purity that is the ascension for all. I commend you to your cosmic victory. Our love is the pathway, and there, shadows can never again come. May you enter in now and use the mightiest power of indisruptible mastery over all in this world. And it is the cosmic light of the ascended master's octave, and our sacred fire, indisruptible purity that you can have without limit. And you, issuing the fiat of the great command, free yourselves and all you contact by our ascended master consciousness, our love our life, our almighty victory over all in this world. May you feel it may you see it may you use it without limit. And may, of your own free will, you call it here to save your nation and the world. Thank you with all my heart. Discourse 15 Blessed Goddess of Justice January 6, 1966 Chicago, Illinois Beloved of my heart, I trust one may bring to you tonight an activity of the great love of creation the mighty source of the heart flame of sacred fire love that will help you in every way possible to hold balance in your worlds. When you understand divine justice as the balance of all constructive activities, you will realize that to fill yourselves with the sacred fire balancing activity of the heart flame of love's control of life. And fill everything in your beings and worlds with what the ascended masters know is the perfect balance, inner and outer of every activity of life, you'll begin to realize that unless you charge this into outer world conditions, there is not enough harmony and purity in the outer world to compel conditions around you to pour. 316. 307. Back the balance and the divine justice for which you call, and which you expect from outer world conditions. So when you understand divine justice as the perfect balance, inner and outer, of all constructive activities. To hold that balance within your own feeling world at all times allows your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to pour through you into outer world conditions whatever purifying activity of the sacred fire's love that clears the way, purifies and harmonizes conditions around you. So that those conditions may pour back to you that which you call divine justice, that which you feel fulfills your divine plan. Therefore, when you want divine justice from outer world activities, you must first pour into those activities the sacred fire's purity from your own, beloved I am presence, and the ascended master's sacred fire power of control of outer world conditions. Then the purity of the sacred fire love from your own, beloved mighty I am presence, and the ascended master's purifying sacred fire love that is master over every condition in the outer world, you will find, will set things into divine order so the outer world can pour back to you that which keeps balance in your world and enables you to keep the balance in your dealings with the people of the outer world. Mankind's selfishness has caused so much of the blessings and the good that the great cosmic law has placed in this world to be thrown out of balance, that mankind everywhere not only feels the pressure of that discord which unbalance is, but it generates the resentment and the rebellion against conditions that have imposed upon individuals the destructive activities down through the ages. Selfishness is the root of all evil. You might think individuals are the cause of evil, and so they are. 
but it's the selfishness within those individuals that produces the discord, and the discord is substance and energy out of balance. So until people want to give a balance to life, until the outer self has the feeling and the desire which the ascended masters have, within the life stream, to want to pour back to the universe only the great. Purifying love and the perfection that the sacred fire is constantly pouring to the manifestations everywhere in infinite space, there is no hope for mankind to be permanently released from. The destructive conditions of this world that are nothing on earth but energy and substance out of balance because they've been charged with discord. So, blessed ones, when you understand divine justice as the balance of every quality and activity, all the energy, and substance, and your feeling in the outer self hold perfect balance, so that your, beloved I am presence balance can come into you, and fill you with the light of its own heart. Fill you with the sacred fire of its own love, and fill you with the consciousness, the ideas, and the feeling that the outer self needs to hold balance within itself. Until you do that, you do not have balance in the outer self. Therefore, everything that you want of divine justice, everything of right and justice that you want the rest of the world to pour to you. You must hold the door open in your own world for your, beloved I am presence, to hold divine justice and balance within you in order to keep the door open so that divine justice, and balance that you desire can be drawn in and around you by your, beloved I am presence, and by the sacred fire love. Of the ascended host, who are constantly giving all the love and the blessings, the substance. And the, and the energy and the ma- So when there is a lack, 320, and the energy and the manifestations that, if held in perfect balance, would always produce the fulfillment of the divine plan. So when there is a lack of anything in your being and world, don't fight against conditions in the outer world and stir up more turmoil to delay the supply we want you to have, but demand the violet consuming flames purifying love that is all balance. Every power of the sacred fire and the cosmic light in existence is at all times the perfect balance of love, wisdom, and power. When you call to your, beloved I am presence, to fill you with its own heart's flame, fill you with its cosmic, eternal balance of everything it has, into the outer self, to hold perfect balance in your mental and feeling world, that perfect balance is permanent harmony. When you fill yourselves with the perfect balance of permanent harmony, you become the sun presence of boundless supply, because your, presence, can keep pouring forth through you at any moment, the great central sun can pour forth around you at any moment and is pouring all the time the boundless blessings, and gifts of life to keep mankind supplied with what is necessary to be used in the outer activities in order to fulfill the great, divine plan that brings balance everywhere. Now the reason for the chaos in the world today, or one of the reasons, and perhaps the most important, is because of the chaos and discord in the outer world which is a result of selfishness. When mankind's selfishness, which is discord, creates chaos in the outer world, the balanced supply of everything that mankind requires to continue in constructive action, that supply is interfered with by the discord and the unbalance of human selfishness. And with all the supply there is on this earth of every good thing, one nation after another is in debt. Now what's right about it? That's out of balance. And until enough purifying love, which the violet consuming flame is, and the fiery Christ blue lightning purity, is poured into outer physical world conditions. Which means energy and substance and consciousness, unless that is filled with the ascended master's indestructible purity so as to consume that discord, how can mankind have continual supply? It's no wonder that millions of people on the earth are starving and in chaos and in war, all of which is generated by mankind's selfishness. So if you are to be cut free from the mass condition mankind is enslaved in at the present moment, go back to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended masters, and ask your, presence, and us to fill you with our sacred fire balance, our sacred fire purifying love, our sacred fire purifying wisdom, our sacred fire purifying power, our sacred fire purifying balance that will not let selfishness exist within you and will not let the outer self send it forth to cause discord or unbalance in the conditions of the world around you. When you are filled with our sun presence of indestructible ascended master balance within you, and you demand it hold eternal control of everything in your beings and worlds, the very balance for which you call will be permanent harmony. It will be permanent purity. It will be permanent protection, 
and, automatically, it will be permanent health and permanent supply. In the eternal balance of love, wisdom, and power, which the sacred fire is, which every activity of the cosmic light substance is, abides the boundless supply of every good thing, and more than that. If you fill yourselves with and hold your, beloved I am presence and the ascended masters indestructible, eternal balance within you, there will automatically flow to you the next wave of supply of what your, presence. Discourse 15. And we know you're going to require in order to produce the divine plan fulfilled in outer world physical action. So, blessed ones, your supply depends on, I am speaking of permanent supply, depends on your, beloved I am presence, sacred fire purifying love and that from the ascended masters and cosmic beings, inside of you, holding perfect balance of everything that is within your consciousness. That's why this emotionalism of the outer world has only created more and more destruction, and always will. And the people who do not want to be a part of that destruction are either going to be filled with the beloved I am presence, and the ascended host's indestructible balance of love, wisdom, and power, indestructible sacred fire purity, indestructible sacred fire love and cosmic light substance. And hold that within in absolute, perfect balance, or there is not going to be permanent supply to any individual who will not hold that. Certain individuals accumulate a great deal of wealth, and then it goes. You have had unbounded wealth down through the ages in lifetime after lifetime, and if you are to be cut free from the constant selfishness of the chaos and destruction of war and the conditions of the outer world, then your freedom is the eternal divine justice of indestructible, purifying love within you that keeps perfect balance of everything within you and your world. The individual who's got the backbone to stand up and do that and insist on it and feel it fill everything in the being and world of the outer self will automatically have supply permanently for eternity. Thank you so much. Won't you be seated, please? Just remain so. Now when mankind will use the things in this world constructively, they will not be out of balance, and mankind will not lack for any good thing. Therefore, the individual who is ready and willing to set his or her outer self in divine order and insist on the love the sacred fire love and purity, which are one, from the, mighty I am presence, and fill the outer self with the demand that it hold absolute perfect balance. And then the ascended master's sacred fire purifying love that will hold perfect balance, then when you ask for indestructible divine justice, indestructible, ever-expanding supply of every good thing, so long as you hold that within yourselves. The actual flow of the supply of life uninterrupted by discord will automatically place in your hands and use, from. 300. Within yourselves and in the world around you, the boundless blessings that come here and are created by the powers of nature and forces of the elements, and by the gifts from the ascended master's octave. So your freedom from the limitation and the lack and the discord, and the selfishness of the outer world conditions depends entirely upon your own determination to turn back to your, beloved I am presence, and demand it fill you with, and keep you filled with, its own heart's flame, indestructible. Purifying love and indestructible, purifying balance. Then call to me, or call to the ascended host, to fill you with the ascended master's sacred fire indestructible balance, indestructible divine justice, hold the protection around you that is indestructible protection. And then as you abide within this and you call forth whatever is necessary to fulfill the great divine plan. Automatically will the, presence, or the ascended host draw to you from outer world conditions the next thing. You are going to require to keep that balance in operation and control of the conditions that you are going to contact. When you hold balance within and our sacred fire love enfolds you in our heart's flame of. 326 The, the balance from our ascended master octave, automatically there is drawn to you the supply of whatever you are going to require to manifest the divine plan fulfilled. My dear ones, there isn't a problem on the face of the earth today that can't be solved by that call. Thank you so much. Now when people are more interested in hurting someone else and destroying the powers of nature and forces of the elements, desecrating them, using the energy that is within them to create discord to be imposed upon some other part of life, how can there be anything but destruction? Selfishness is what throws everything out of balance, and selfishness is filth. And until mankind wants purity, the sacred fire does not come into outer world conditions until the intellectual consciousness makes the call and the desire is within the feeling for the purity from above to come in and fill the outer self with the purity that is balance. 
Eternal purity is balance. Eternal divine justice is balance. Eternal sacred fire love is balance. The ascended master's divine plan fulfilled is perfect balance. But when people want to hurt life, they do not want justice nor balance. Only the animal hurts, and the animal is the savage. So, blessed ones, you are dealing with life every moment. Be careful what you impose upon. 3. Life. And if you want to be free from limiting conditions in the outer world, ask your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to fill you with such sacred fire, purifying love that it at all times holds perfect balance. And that pressure from within will repel the discord in the world around you, and as you hold that indestructible harmony, automatically life brings to you the next things you are going to require. Your higher mental body knows what you are going to require. The ascended masters know what's going to be required. The angelic hosts know what is going to be required. Until mankind wants purity within, it does not want balance. Because if the outer self wants the impurity of discord to hurt life, there is no sacred fire love, by which balance can be maintained. So, blessed ones, I am quite sure you have a different concept of divine justice tonight. And I might come to you many other times, and every time I come, I'll give you another concept. But it will always be the fiery Christ truth. Thank you so much. Now then, when you want to protect that which is constructive, you want to protect it against discord, in reality your desire is to protect it against injustice. All discord is injustice to the, beloved. Mighty I am presence, that has given the energy into the use of the outer self. The, mighty I am presence, has given life into the outer self, it has given substance and things into the use of the outer self. And when the outer self wants to create discord in some other part of life, or even within itself, it does not want justice. And only the animal consciousness creates chaos, destruction, discord, and injustice, for I assure you, the heart flame of eternal purity and love from the mighty I am presence does not create it. The ascended masters do not create it. The cosmic beings do not create it. The angelic host does not create it. So, beloved ones, when you think that sometimes people are mistreating you and you demand divine justice for yourself. Be first of all aware of your need to call to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to fill you with whatever sacred fire indisruptible purity and purifying love is divine justice to the, mighty I am presence, that gives you life and gives you its love. Or to the ascended masters that give you their life and their love and their use of their ascended master consciousness. So if you want divine justice and balance from the outer world, balance your account with life back to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host. And you do that by love, the sacred fire, purifying love of eternity. There is nothing in the whole world and all of it put together that you can love your mighty I am presence and the ascended host whenever you want to. You have free will to do it. There is nothing in the whole world and all of it put together that is a balance for the life your, beloved I am presence, gives you, or is a balance for the love the ascended masters and cosmic beings have poured to the people who embodied in this world down through the ages. There is no balance anywhere in the universe except love back to life for all that life gives into the use of the outer self to let it have a chance to produce perfection of eternal happiness and mastery out here. So, beloved ones, wherever possible, if you can, bring this consciousness to some individuals. Sometimes they are in distress. I would not explain it in words, but I would call it forth by your own silent call to your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to charge into mankind everywhere whatever cosmic fiery Christ illumining consciousness teaches mankind to, desire divine balance, first of all, purity. And then divine balance and justice back to the source that gives existence. Blessed ones, for your own protection of your supply, in order to keep the door open for boundless supply to come to you in the future to do the unlimited things you want to do that fulfill the divine plan. It is imperative that you keep calling to your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to keep this outer self filled with whatever sacred fire indestructible purity and indestructible, purifying love holds perfect balance within the outer self. That the presence and the ascended host can draw into your outer use the unlimited blessings to manifest here the fulfillment of the divine plan.
So when you want justice, first of all, think of your obligation to give that balance back to your beloved I am presence, for the love it has given you. Did you ever realize how much love your mighty I am presence has given you? It has given you its life and embodiment, the substance, the opportunities, the things. It has let you go on and use and use and use anything and everything that came into your hands and use. By your own free will you use the blessings of this world, and not once has the presence ever reprimanded you. It takes a great deal of love to do that, beloved ones. 300. So when you begin to realize how much love your beloved I am presence has given to you down through embodiment after embodiment, when you want divine justice, stop just a minute and realize that what you want out here must begin up there. If you want divine justice and balance here, then the outer self's energy and life must go there and make a balance back to the beloved I am presence for the love its heart has poured into this outer self for use in the world of things. Blessed ones, now we come to the solution of this problem besides your call. When you move in outer world conditions that are decidedly unjust because they are discordant, and all discord is injustice to life, then when you turn back to your beloved I am presence, and to us, you ask us to enfold you, any one or more of the ascended host. After you've called to your presence, first, to enfold you in the mighty I am, miracle mantle of love's eternal divine justice and balance. If you ask your beloved I am presence to clothe you in that love, if you ask any ascended master to clothe you in that love, you will find the sacred fire heart's flame of indestructible, purifying love in, through, and around you, will hold the balance. Then you will Then you will use all, and will remind you from whence comes the love that is divine justice to life, the love that is eternal purity to life. Then you will use all of the ascended master's qualities and activities in the sacred fire and the cosmic light to pour into yourselves our ascended master, eternal divine justice and balance. When you have filled yourselves with its heart flame, then call to us to control conditions around you, and when you use the violet consuming flame to consume the discord, you will have cleared the way for the hand of the presence or the ascended host to reach into this world and bring to you many, many, many things that you have longed to have, many things you want to use in the future and many things you could so easily have permanently if eternal balance within is held by the sacred fire love's eternal purity. So, blessed ones, it is power without limit. It is illumination without limit. It is protection without limit. It is victory without limit. It is freedom from human distress, and it is boundless supply without limit. And that is divine justice back to your, I am presence, and the ascended host, to bring into this world the eternal purity. Discord. That will not let mankind's impurity and discord be allowed to any longer exist in outer world, physical conditions. Fill yourselves with your own, beloved I am presence, heart flames indestructible, purifying love, and demand it hold absolute balance of everything within you. This will bring you health, my dear ones, sustained and indestructible. Then if you clothe yourselves in our ascended master miracle mantle of the sacred fire loves indestructible, Purifying balance and divine justice, the very radiance about you will purify all things you contact. And the increasing purity will allow the blessings of the outer world to seek you instead of you seeking them. And when they seek you, they come to receive a blessing. So when they come, bless them with the purifying sacred fire love of eternal divine justice and balance. Then you will find them sustained, ever expanding and never will there be a discord created by the things that come to you to be used to fulfill the great divine plan. So, blessed ones, go forward and be free, please. We plead and plead and plead. We give love without limit. We have consumed again and again and again mankind's discord and impurity. Please take this which we offer tonight and hold your freedom as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. This helps to hold your nation out of the clutches of the selfishness of the hordes of evil that seek only to destroy it, so it has much to do with the saving of your nation, the protection of all that is constructive, and the fulfillment of the great divine plan that frees the earth from mankind's discord forever. Please do not forget your beloved I am presence, and the ascended master's miracle mantle of the sacred fire loves indestructible purity, victory and divine justice to hold balance wherever you abide, and it shall bless and bless and bless all you do.
and clear the way ahead of you for the victory that sets all free for eternity in the attainment of the ascension. So I commend you to its marvelous blessings, its mighty reality, and its eternal victory over everything of human creation. Go forward and take your freedom from tonight. And we will be with you, closer than breathing and nearer than hands and feet, for we love you. Thank you with all my heart. Rec Discourse 16 Beloved Mighty Victory June 28, 1966 Chicago, Illinois Beloved of my heart, we are very grateful at this time for your presence here, for the decrees that are being given, and for your service to the light. And I trust as you receive more of the outpouring from the Royal Teton, as you come to receive our greater power in outer physical conditions, that you will very tangibly be aware of the increase in power to hold victory for everything that is constructive in your own individual experience as you call it forth for the city, the nation, and the world. There must come the cosmic release, and it is coming regardless of all destructive forces on the earth. There must come that from the great cosmic realms of eternal perfection, which the sacred fire is throughout creation. This concentration must come into the physical octave in order to prevent the complete desecration and destruction which the sinister force otherwise would impose upon this world. Therefore, when you call to us for assistance to yourselves, no matter what the problem is you are solving or trying to control, as you call forth our ascended master consciousness for the victory of yourself in your individual application, when you have received that, call it forth, when the manifestation is complete, or even before it is complete, at the time you call it forth for yourselves. Call forth the cosmic concentration of it for the city in which you abide, and then for the nation to which you belong, and then through the world. If you will do this, it will give us a certain cosmic expansion, by your own life stream's willingness to call cosmic power into the physical conditions that affect the entire world. This will have many, many blessings. It will help to purify the powers of nature that provide your food. It will bring to you, individually, many blessings from those channels that as yet you do not know are here. It will enable us to draw forth into outer manifestation, at least at certain places in the world, an increase of the blessings and perfection and supply that is to be sustained by the ascended. Host for that which is constructive in the physical octave. But this depends upon the willingness of the individual and each individual's own life streams call for its entire purifying supplying presence to go forth to the city or the nation in which you abide. Therefore, when your life stream is willing to call forth the cosmic purification and victory into the city where you abide, or into the nation in which you abide, this can be established as a continual flow, and your life stream, being one with that, automatically must receive the increase of this greater and greater release of supply to you individually. You see, when you call forth and use the cosmic powers of the sacred fire and all of its love, and blessings from the ascended master's octave as well as your beloved I am presence, there is an automatic expansion of those blessings in, through, and around you. Because you are the open door through which they must come into contact with the physical world around you. Then as we project them into conditions or localities or activities that affect the nation or your government or the world, that amplification comes from the ascended master's temples of the sacred fire and those are great streams, just like rivers of the sacred fire's purity, power, and perfection, and illumination. Therefore, as the greater light goes into a city or a nation, those of you who make the connection through the ascended master's octave must of necessity receive the miracle mantle of manifestation, an increase of the same mighty blessing to your own life stream. And we want you to feel this, because when you send love to your presence or to the ascended host, we pour back infinitely more than you can give. And so when your love is great enough to demand the purification of your city and your nation, as well as the world, your continual awareness of what the nation needs can be the reminder to you to call forth from our octave whatever wipes out of existence the human creation that would otherwise destroy the nation. And if it destroyed the nation, it would include you. Unless you are anchored firmly enough through your acceptance and love to the Ascended Master's octave to keep the sustaining light, supply, harmony, protection, and purity in and around your own life streams to disconnect you from the destructive forces of the world around you. Therefore, it is quite necessary that you understand this action of the law, that you may have its greater blessing, and in the use of these greater powers to purify the city or the nation. Discourse 6.
to which you belong, automatically, because our love is greater, that blessing would come into your own individual life streams and your world, individually, much more powerfully than it would to the mass of the people. So if you care to cooperate with us in this, it has much to do with your supply. It would have much to do with your healing, and it has everything to do with your protection. So when you call forth my ascended master sacred fire armor of protection or my sacred fire presence to enfold you, it naturally contains infinitely more of the blessings and power and protection than your outer self. Your presence will pour that in and around you, but we pour forth in and around you, also, whatever will insulate what your presence gives you, and whatever will cooperate with your presence in the service you must render to the city or the nation or the world. So when you pour any love to the mighty I am presence and the ascended host, be still a moment and remember that we will pour back to you infinitely more than that which you give. Now I am going to give you an opportunity to have an experience that I am sure will prove itself to you, and in doing that, it will automatically expand your own light. When you heard the messenger say repeatedly, reach your own heart's flame out and enfold one or more of the cosmic manifestations in the heavens. When you can send your love to the physical sun or the powers of nature or the forces of the elements, and all the blessings that the great law of life has placed in this world and placed in infinite space. When you train the outer self to take time and just feel the infed flame in your heart reach out, and pour its love to those channels that have blessed you so greatly since you first began embodiment in this world, because every one of those channels is pouring its life and love and blessing to you. Constantly, therefore, your recognition of the love and the blessing you have received will automatically at all times draw more to you. Now because of the expansion which it brings, if you care to experiment with taking just a few moments, sometime when you are outdoors and can see the sky, if you can feel the infed flame in your heart reach out and expand and enfold the sky. And pour your love there to infinite space and the infinite manifestations of perfection and power without limit that are there, there would have to come back into you, individually, into your life. 304. Stream, and more than that, individually into the world in which you move, into your affairs, the greater perfection of the love that is there. And there's a great deal more love in the sky than you understand. What is it in you? When you go outdoors and you see a beautiful sunset or a beautiful sky or manifestations in the sky or cloud formations, what is it in you that goes out there and says, oh, isn't that beautiful? Because you have felt the radiation of the love that has produced those manifestations. So you owe back to life some recognition for that. You owe back to life your own life's love in answer to that which is pouring to you its love all the time. Now this is one of the most powerful ways to protect you against any destructive activity of the powers of nature and forces of the elements, because the powers of nature and forces of the elements are everywhere in infinite space. They are everywhere in the atmosphere in which you move. You are receiving their blessing all the time, every time you eat a meal. The love of life has provided many, many infinite blessings for mankind by which it can embody in this world by which individuals can come into this embodiment in the physical world and use the things that have. So, been provided here in this world by a greater love and a greater life than yourself, or than the individuals who are embodying here. So the lesser, when it loves, learns to love the greater. And the finite learns to love the infinite. Your very connection through with your love of your life stream would automatically draw back into you the greater powers, the greater perfection, the greater protection, the greater illumination, and the greater mastery that is there. People are bound in limitation and poverty and problems and destruction, because the attention is down here where the discord is constantly acting between individuals who will not get along with each other. I am giving you a secret tonight to help you disconnect from the destructive forces of this world by the control of your attention and by placing it upon that which is the infinitely all-powerful life and love and perfection that fills infinite space everywhere. And you must do it through the definite control of your attention. If you understand what you can do by the master control of your attention, and through that, let the infed flame in your heart go forth on your attention to carry to that infinite life your love to infinite life, every being of perfection in infinite space would feel your systems of love and automatically would pour back to you infinitely greater love than you are aware of or can even comprehend, because that love is so much greater than what mankind understands is love in this world, that it contains only the perfection that sustains systems of worlds, systems of suns, 
systems of galaxies which are the creations of cosmic beings whose love is perfection, limitless, all-powerful, and eternal everywhere. There is this infinite manifestation of life above the people of this world. In it is the fullness of all that love can give. But when people are so concerned with making money and keeping down here tied to the things that are their limitations, which they did not bring into this world, which they cannot take out, which are only loaned to them for a time, the consciousness becomes clouded and bound and tied to the thing that creates the discord. If you want to be free from discord, stretch your mental muscles and think about the magnificent love that sustains the infinite manifestations of worlds and systems of worlds in perfect, divine order and balance. There is no chaos in interstellar space. There is infinite, eternal perfection in action, forever expanding. And the way and means by which it manifests is love supernal. If you care to take the time and do the exercise of feeling, for even only one full minute, the infed flame in your own heart reach up and give its love to infinite space, the infinite life and the infinite perfection and the infinite power that is there will pour its infinite blessings and supply back to you into your world for your use, to expand perfection here as it expands perfection there. So my victory means many things that as yet the mind of man has never comprehended. But I am determined it shall learn something of what victory means to the life that creates this world, sustains it, and gives mankind a magnificent, wonderful place to embody in. And in which human beings can learn to use the master powers of the universe to create perfection that brings only happiness and constructive activity to all that is. And you can begin that victory by your love to the sky above you, your love to the sun that gives you life. When you realize the beings that keep the physical sun sustained, that it may pour life to this entire planet and all mankind upon it, what would you do without it? How could you manifest? How could the powers of nature grow? How could you be supplied with what sustains you, until you draw forth the master powers of your own life stream to? 3. Produce the perfection here that enables your own light to expand and become the master presence of the control of all energy everywhere. So if you want to control manifestation, begin with the control of your attention, and the expansion of the infed flame of your own heart's love to reach up and thank all the life that is above you for the love it has poured to this world. Pour your love to the powers of nature and forces of the elements. Pour your love to that which creates beauty that enables you to contemplate that which is greater and more beautiful and more wonderful than what is in this world. Blessed ones, if you are interested in boundless supply, I am going to get your attention now, when you realize that the great law of the universe and its manifestation supplies all those systems of worlds and systems of suns, not only with life, but with manifestations of magnificent wonderful things that enable life everywhere to create perfection, forever expanding that blesses and carries its love to the rest of the universe, that supply, as you recognize that the supply that is there is produced there by the supreme love of the mighty I am presence of the great central. Sun, and the life that is, three, four, sun, the ascended masters and cosmic beings and the angelic host, when you pour your love there, they are aware of that love because it will come in through the atmosphere of earth and go to its destination and the life that is there that has produced that greater manifestation knows when love comes to the infinite, and the infinite love will come back to you. If you pour your love there, those who supply that love that sustains infinite manifestation would also pour back to you the supply that that love always is. And it is forever expanding. It is immortal. It can never create discord. It is never lacking of any good thing and it is the eternal freedom of boundless supply which none of mankind's discord can influence in any way or destroy, or prevent coming through when love opens the way and lets it come. Because it brings perfection into this world and makes this world the perfection of the ascended master's octave. So, blessed ones, it has much to do with your boundless supply, and that is why we come to the royal Teton twice a year to pour forth the light rays and the sacred fire of our love. We come to bring the great light rays of our love. We come to bring the substance of eternal purity which is. 3. Love. We come to give the outpouring at the royal Teton, that mankind may know the greater love that gives all of everything and forever creates perfection, sustains it forever, expands it without limit, and it is the master presence of creation. So when you understand what love can do for you from the great realms of life's greater perfection. 
surely you must realize that you must open the door from the physical side of life by the love of your own life stream. That goes through to make the connection to that which is greater and more magnificent and forever is the expanding perfection of the great command. So, blessed ones, once you begin to feel what that return current can do for you when you pour forth the love of your life stream with all the gratitude that you know how to feel and send to a manifestation, and of beings that can create systems of worlds that are so beautiful and so magnificent, when you begin to understand what love that is, you cannot help but adore it. Then you want to become it. And if you will pour it out as we have poured our love to you, as you pour your love to the infinite, the infinite love of perfection will flood its boundless supply into your outer use, and you cannot lack for any good thing. I come just to bring you the reminder of what we are going to pour forth at the Royal Teton, that more of its blazing sacred fire master presence may consume the hatred, and the filth that mankind has generated and imposed upon a world that was magnificent and beautiful and pure to begin with. And I think it's time enough of mankind understood this law to comprehend how much impurity human beings in this world have imposed upon that which was the love that created the world. So when we come to the Royal Teton this year, we shall pour the most intense action possible of the sacred fire's purifying love, and its almighty power to roll back the frightful conditions the hordes of evil have generated and imposed upon life. So we come to consume the unspeakable creation that mankind has generated in the misuse of life. If you care to use your own life through the control of your own attention, and let the unfed flame in your heart expand and reach out and love the love of infinity, you cannot lack for any good thing. And when you send your love there, be sure your motive is just one of gratitude. Don't give the love expecting just to get supply. Learn to give because it is the happiness and the perfection of. Eternity forever expanding. And when that infinite love has blessed you so greatly throughout the centuries, now if your life streams will return there your love and gratitude, and ask for the love that purifies the nation and sets it free, that it may fulfill its destiny and mankind understand the ascension, if that is the motive by which you send your love to the infinite life of the universe, you can have help without limit, power without limit, and you must, of necessity, be my victory. Victory, after all, is the love that is eternal purity which cannot create anything but perfection. And I trust you will accept what I give as you enter into the use of this element, or this activity of devotion to the greater life and the greater love, that there may come back through you its greater purity to help strengthen the light in the people of the nation. To hold enough purity to free it from that which otherwise would destroy it. So as we come to the Royal Teton to concentrate the greater activities of the Sacred Fire's purity this year, try to feel that as we render that service to the whole world, if you will pour this to manifestations of infinity and ask our purifying love to blaze through you what frees the nation. We must of necessity, as we pour our life's purifying love. Through you, it must carry into you and into all your affairs, into everything with which you come in contact, the purity and perfection from our octave, because we don't have anything else. And if people want this which we have become, it is here, asking the people to accept it. But we can't accept it for you. Thank you, thank you so much. Won't you be seated, please? Just remain so. The hatred that has been generated, that has desecrated so much of this world, now must be consumed. And those who are willing to do this which I have explained will automatically be used and by enfolding you in our purifying love and filling everything in you and your world with the victory of our purifying love, wherever you go. It will consume the hatred that has been charged into outer world conditions, including the powers of nature and forces of the elements. We give it to you and blaze it through you to help consume the hatred that otherwise will destroy everything that is good, and we must not allow that. So we are depending on your love to the greater love of life to produce the power and the perfection here that lets us take away the hatred that mankind has imposed upon life and which will take away from mankind everything and so, beloved, from mankind everything and will drive individuals to the second death unless the hate is consumed. So, beloved ones. It is far greater happiness to contemplate the purifying love from the ascended master's octave and its sacred fire presence, to consume the hatred that has been generated, than to experience that which hatred has produced and which can only take people to the second death. What we offer you is the immortality of the love and the light and the life of the universe and its infinite victory, power without limit, 
perfection for eternity, forever expanding. So when you let the unfed flame in your own heart expand to carry its blessing to the greater life, we can pour forth in and around you everything you could ever desire and make of you a sun presence wherever you abide. Our purifying love is immortal, and there is no such thing as destroying it or conquering it or, for any reason, misusing it. This is the eternal solution of every problem. It is the eternal correction of every mistake. It is the eternal prevention of all wrong. We trust we may welcome you to the Royal Teton this week. And understand that in that Royal Teton is the love that can save the nation and consume that which is not love. And that love, the pure Christ love of the universe, is forever the outpouring of my victory to the earth. I hope you will accept it and use it, and let me fill you and your world with my sacred fire enfolding presence that brings my victory of my love to forever give you, expanding perfection, and automatically carries with it eternal protection. We will welcome you and hope with all our beings that we can pour forth through you everything that the Ascended Master's octave can give to, compel the purification that is freedom for eternity. Come, and let us abide together and reveal what that sacred fire can do for life, until mankind understands the way back to the beloved I am presence and the Ascended Host and no longer looks to the human creation of this world, because the cosmic law will have consumed it for eternity. I hope you will be a part of my victory to do this which, I assure you, is much greater joy and much more permanent blessing to you than anything in this world. If you care to come my way of victory, you will never again know distress. So I welcome you to eternal victory if you care to accept our love and give it without limit to this world and wherever you abide, and I assure you, happiness is for eternity. Thank you with all my heart. Great Elohim of Peace. Discourse 17. Great Elohim of Peace. November 27, 1966 Chicago, Illinois Thank you, beloved ones, for your energy in your decrees and your calls to us. We shall come back to you with all that love can give, and we want you to know that when you think of us, in love, and send to us your calls for love, love will answer you. And our love is indisruptible victory for eternity. Our love is indisruptible purity. And now as we call forth into outer physical conditions that which the world calls peace, you will have to realize it must be the purity and the love that holds balance, because only when things are balanced and the energy of the universe is held in balanced control. Do you have peace or do you have safety or do you have anything that is constructive action? So sometimes when you think you want peace and you call it peace, stop a moment and ask. 350. Yourselves what it is that brings peace into you or your affairs or the atmosphere about you or to those you love. When the flow of your own life energy is not held in balanced control through the physical body and through the mental and feeling world, you do not have peace. Whenever there is obstruction or pressure or interference with the balanced control and balanced flow of the energy from your mighty I am presence and the ascended host, unless there is that balanced flow of your life energy, you do not feel peace in your emotional bodies. The same thing is true in the mind. Until the pictures in the mind are held within the purity that only love can give, until the pictures in the mind are all constructive and radiating a light that helps to bring ease and peace to the rest of life, you do not have peace. Therefore, the action of the mind must hold within itself the balanced control of every faculty of your intellect. It must hold balanced control in your consciousness of the feeling world. Your consciousness, your life, must be filled with the sacred fire's indisruptible purity and sacred fire love that is the controller of the substance and the energy in the flesh body. It is the controller of 300 the faculties of the mind, and the same thing applies to the atmosphere about you, to your affairs, and now to your supply. When conditions of the outer world seem to throw your channels of supply out of balance, then you must come back again to your own, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host and call forth from the heart flame of your mighty I am presence, the heart flames of the seven mighty Elohim, and the heart flames of the ascended masters and cosmic beings who are always so ready to help you. And until the attention goes to that heart flame of love's indisruptible purity, and calls it forth into outer physical conditions to hold the balanced flow of everything, your supply and your channels of supply are not permanent nor protected. So in bringing into this world that which we wish to establish as eternal peace, there must come first the purity. 
then there comes the sacred fire love that holds everything in balanced flow from the presence down into the outer self and filling the outer self. Let it flow into your affairs and conditions of the outer world to hold balanced control of the flow of the energy, the flow of the substance, the consciousness of the mind, and the pictures that you hold within the mind. When these are all constructive, you will automatically have the flow of supply from above, and also draw to yourselves the supply from the physical world that holds the balanced control from within and from the world around you. This is the secret of the ever-expanding, invincible, eternal supply of every good thing that life is always so ready to give, and of which there is a limitless, infinite amount of supply in the universe. So, blessed ones, when you come to understand just how necessary peace is within your feeling world, and the peace that comes into the mind when you only hold constructive pictures, you will find it will hold the balance within. And then you allow the great central sun magnet to blaze its sacred fire love into the world around you and draw to you the things that hold balance in the world around you. So when you want supply, go back to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host, and realize that if you will set your house in divine order by letting the heart flame sacred fire love's indestructible purity come into the physical self, fill up the crystal cup and hold the balance. As soon as everything is held in balanced action within yourselves, automatically your higher mental. 300 Body will reach into the world about you and draw that which balances your affairs, draw to you the supply that brings the balance that enables you to fulfill the great divine plan, and gives you the abundance by which you can help others to hold the balance also. In order to keep the flow from the inner activities of life into all outer physical channels in balanced action, this must begin with the peace within yourselves. Now when the world weighs heavily upon you and conditions of the outer world seem so unjust and so unconquerable sometimes, the more you hold your attention upon them, the more you interfere with the flow of supply from your own, beloved I am presence, and the ascended master's octave. If you will master your attention and command it to go back to your, beloved I am presence, and offer your love there, and then ask your, presence, to fill everything of the outer self, fill all your feeling, fill all your flesh. Fill everything in the atmosphere about you with its heart flame of sacred fire love's indestructible purity and your mind with indestructible, constructive pictures, and make you the victory of itself in action to hold balance within you. As soon as you have set your house into divine order, you will find your, mighty I am presence, can reach into the world around you and bring to you in a very short time, and sometimes almost on the instant. The boundless supply of every good thing that you will need to fulfill the great divine plan, that you may hold balanced action in the physical world, you may hold balanced action in the mental world, and your, Beloved I am presence will hold balanced action in the world of cause. And when you draw into the outer self the cause of balanced action, which sacred fire loves indestructible purity is and always will be, there will be the constant flow into your outer use of the supply of any good thing. Now let us apply this to the nation and the world. Is the world not out of order? Isn't there a great deal of disorder in the world, and impurity? Hasn't the flow been interfered with from the physical sun to the physical world, of the outpouring of all the blessings that hold balanced action in the powers of nature and forces of the elements? You only have to look into the world around you to see that even the powers of nature are disturbed by mankind's impurity and discord. 300 So, blessed ones, if you'll understand this deeply and enter right into the command and desire and determination to fill the outer self with the heart flames perfection of your, mighty I am presence, and higher mental body. Fill the outer self with its sacred fire indestructible purity and purifying love, you will soon become so occupied with constructive pictures within the mind, and I assure you, when you are contemplating something that is a magnificent, beautiful, wonderful, constructive thing, while your attention is upon that, your feeling is happy. Your love is radiating into that which is constructive while your attention is upon it. And while you hold that harmony and the balanced action goes on, your presence has an open pathway by which it can release into your outer use either the ability and the power to produce in the physical world what holds the balance. Or your presence can reach into the outer world and draw to you, into your outer use, the supply that is the boundless supply and the supply that always produces happiness for you, because that supply will be indestructible purity. If mankind would only understand this, there is an abundance of everything in the atmosphere of this world that can be lowered into mankind's outer use when, by the free will of the outer self, 
the individual will not longer create discord. Discord is but a disturbance of the natural flow of everything that produces perfection. So when peace is desired in the outer world, then the impurity must cease to be. Hatred must cease to be. And the balanced flow of the life from the mighty I am presence and the ascended host into outer physical bodies, into outer physical conditions, into the powers of nature and forces of the elements, when that flow is balanced, individuals have an abundance of every good thing. And none can want for any good thing. This is the wise way to live life, and this is the peaceful way to live life, and anyone who cares to experiment with it can be his or her own proof by the supply that comes. So it is to this end that I have come to offer you the purification that my love can give, and that purification will begin to hold balance in your world, that the great central sun magnet may draw into your outer use the boundless supply of every good thing, including your health, including your protection, including everything that is good. So, blessed ones, when you care to try it, if you care to understand it, if you care to use it, you can. Have peace for eternity. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please? Now, beloved ones, selfishness in the feeling, or selfishness that holds the attention of the intellect, produces discord. Selfishness will always throw something out of balance. Selfishness will always produce discord. Selfishness will always produce impurity. And these, but bind the individual to greater and greater distress until it destroys the body. The peace of which we are master, and of which I am the giver to the earth through the activities of the seven mighty Elohim, that peace is the eternal heart flame of the sacred fire love of the mighty I am presence and its indestructible purity. You can't have peace without purity. You can't have boundless supply, continuous and forever expanding, without purity. And as the world cries for peace, it is planning more destruction that destroys everything that would bring peace. And so when mankind, bound in the darkness of its own selfishness, is only occupied by throwing things out of balance, the suffering will go on until purification takes the place of impurity, and the heart flames sacred fire love of the seven mighty Elohim, as well as the beloved I am. Presence, will take the place of the hatred that is the darkness that destroys and forever prevents the balance that is peace. So, blessed ones, when you think of peace, think of other things that are deeply connected with that peace and from whence peace comes, because the peace that gives rest to the outer self, the peace of supply that brings ease to the mind, ease to the consciousness. The peace that brings healing to the body, the peace that brings divine order and success in the affairs of mankind. That peace which is permanent and invincible is, for eternity, indestructible purity of sacred fire love. So when you lack for any good thing, would you care to experiment with charging the lack with the heart flame sacred fire love of the seven mighty Elohim of creation? And see for yourselves where peace comes from and where supply comes from, and where the constructive ideas in the mind come from that will hold divine order and balance in the outer activities of the physical self. Until the world around you is set into divine order by the peace that only our purifying love can give. Your, beloved I am presence, is giving you its heart flame of love constantly. It is giving you. 3. Its purity. But if the outer self will not hold the balance by pouring sacred fire love to all life and letting its indestructible purity go. Fourth to create balance in the world about you, if the outer self will not do that, it will not have continuous supply, it will not have continuous health, it will not have continuous good. And then the disintegration takes place because balance has been destroyed. So when you think of peace, think of balance. When you think of peace, think of indestructible purity. And when you think of peace and know that the heart flames sacred fire love from the heart of your mighty I am presence, and the hearts of the ascended host, the hearts of the seven mighty Elohim, are constantly pouring that love to life. You can have all you want of our hearts sacred fire loves indisruptible purity and balance and peace and control of physical conditions, and this is why we have offered it to you, that you may be the master presence that holds control of physical manifestation exactly as we do. When you want to master conditions in this world, whether they be financial or that of health or success, if you would only realize that everything begins with the heart flame of the sacred fire. Love's indestructible purity and indestructible peace that holds balanced control of outer conditions, you would never know failure. 
You would never know delay. You would never know anything that would cause you distress. Peace, if it is to be eternal, must be the master presence within your own feeling world. And the peace in the mind keeps the attention on that which is constructive, and does not let the destructive things of the outer world intrude the pictures that would destroy and throw things out of balance. So when the nations of the world are ready to purify themselves, peace can come and be eternal, but peace cannot come to any part of life that is pouring hatred and destruction to some other part of life. It is the hatred and the irritation and the discord in the feeling that destroys peace, destroys supply, and would destroy the world if our love were not master. So when you want to insulate yourselves in our world of indisruptible mastery, call to your, beloved I am presence, and to us to hold you sealed within our heart world of the sacred fire love of our heart's indisruptible purity. Fill yourselves with it clothe yourselves with it pour it everywhere into your physical conditions. 3. Call it into all outer conditions wherever you abide, and you will find that you can be insulated against the conditions of the outer world. That will only destroy you if you do not protect yourselves against them. And our love, our ascended master Elohim love, sacred fire love of indisruptible purity, is a protecting presence around you which does create your mighty, magic electronic tube of cosmic light substance, and keeps you disconnected from the discord of the outer world and its lack and its limitation. So, beloved ones, we bring this to your attention this hour because we want you free. We want you financially free. We want you to be free in your health from anything that is not our peace. We want your minds free from all destructive pictures. We want your consciousness free from everything that is not ascended master consciousness. So when you have things to correct in the physical world, begin with the ascended master's consciousness of the heart flames love in your own, mighty I am presence and the ascended host, and that loves invincible, eternal, indisruptible purity. And when you say to your, beloved I am presence, fill me with. And then, and keep me filled with your own heart's flame of indisruptible purity, and your heart's love that holds balance, inner and outer, wherever I abide, and your consciousness in my mind that holds that which is worthy to be made eternal and invincible. And then blaze through me whatever Elohim power makes me master over manifestation and the controller of that manifestation by the, sacred fire loves eternal purity. Make me the peace of the heart flames of the seven mighty Elohim, and see for yourselves whether you want to dwell within our world or not. If you ever care to try to live in our heart world's peace and our heart's love and our heart's indestructible purity, you will find if you fill yourselves with that, those qualities automatically will put your world into divine order, and when your world is in balanced action, automatically the supply is flowing from your presence and from the world around you. But you must hold the picture in the mind of that which is constructive in order to design in outer world conditions that which will bring peace and purity and blessing to all life wherever you move. Then you will hold the balance wherever you abide, and the world will hold the balance back to you. So there is no substitute for indisruptible purity, and there is no substitute for the heart flame sacred fire love. Therefore, we offer you that which cannot be taken out of the universe. We offer you that which is eternal. And peace can come within and around you whenever you decide, of your own free will, that you want to live in our world all the time, and not just when you're short of supply. We are eternal safety. We are eternal security. And I assure you, there is no buy and sell in our business world. So it is a world of security, because there is no speculation. If you care to come into the security of our world and have its balanced control of physical conditions, there isn't any reason in the world you can't come and abide within it, have its blessings, become its mastery, and pour it forth to bless all that you contact. But you must do it by the control of your own attention. And your attention must go first to the heart flame of your mighty I am presence, to the heart flames of the seven mighty Elohim and then the heart flames of the ascended host, and ask that everything in the outer self, both the physical body, the feeling, and the outer consciousness, and then the world around, and then the world around, and let us make you the master, 360, and then the world around you, fill everything with our heart flames indisruptible purity of our love and our consciousness, and let us make you the master control of the conditions of the outer world, so wherever you abide, you are the balancing presence to others.
So long as you hold that and ask it to be made eternal, the perfection keeps flowing from your presence and from us. We have guarded you through the centuries, and now we hope you will live in our world of the heart, and let us blaze through you that which brings peace to the rest of mankind because you have become it. When you fill yourselves with our heart flames indisruptible purity and purifying love's perfect balance in everything in outer world conditions, you just become a sun presence of its blazing perfection. You let it flow, and wherever you abide, your sun presence illumines the world around you, and you can bring peace to blessed, suffering mankind. This is why the mighty, blessed Saint Germain said to you in the beginning to acknowledge, I am, the peace commanding presence. And I say to you, fill yourselves with our heart's flames, and be the sacred fire's indisruptible peace of. Discourse 369 Eternity, and give it to the rest of the world. Teach mankind to live in the sacred fire heart world of the mighty I am presence and the ascended host, especially the seven mighty Elohim, and you take the responsibility of holding whatever indisruptible purity is necessary to produce peace that blesses all who pass your way. What divine justice is there in discord? Peace can be made eternal. Peace can be made indisruptible. Peace can be made to hold absolute balance everywhere, and peace is the only divine justice there is to life. What divine justice is there in discord? Discord is injustice to your mighty I am presence that gives you life. Discord is injustice to the world around you which gives you the supplies of the powers of nature and forces of the elements. Discord is injustice to every particle of life. So if you are to come to the place of security, and if you are to be the master control of manifestation, there must come within you our heart's flames of absolute balanced control and that power is indisruptible purity of the sacred fire love from the heart of creation. Whether that comes into your mighty I am presence, or to us, or comes into the ascended host from the great central sun, matters not. There is only one thing in all of creation and all of infinite space, and that is the indisruptible, sacred fire love's indisruptible purity. And that is indisruptible balance and peace. So, blessed ones, if we can fill you with that, it will be easier to bring it into outer physical conditions through the channels of the outer world that, for the time being, try to hold peace and want peace enough to survive. Whether it be nations or the earth or individuals or groups of people, it matters not. The cosmic law is the same. But you can't have peace looking at the discord and destruction and injustice and unbalance of destructive forces. And you certainly cannot have peace within yourselves in either anger or hatred or any feeling that is not the indisruptible purity of our love. It is the master scepter of power, the master flame that controls all creation. It is the master presence that produces manifestation, and will hold control for eternity. So you can come to the point of eternal perfection, forever expanding, and mastery is that. Do you realize what the master Jesus held within himself, in his own feeling world, when he controlled the waves? He didn't hate. He wasn't discordant. He wasn't afraid. He didn't fight. He did 300 and didn't try to hold control by what the outer world calls physical force. The flame within his heart expanded the light of indisruptible purity and balance, and that light controlled all the energy in the water element. That's what I am talking about. It is that heart flame's sacred fire love and indisruptible purity. It is master over the powers of nature and forces of the elements. And it will never give you anything but the greatest blessings of all creation for all eternity, and it is perfection, all protecting, forever expanding. So may you accept it. I hope you will use it. We will try to remind you of it, that you may be the peace of our heart's love, to purify and bring balance in this world wherever you abide while you yet remain here and I trust we may count on your cooperation. Thank you. Now when the world weighs heavily upon you, if you should call for my miracle mantle of love's indisruptible peace to be wrapped around you to hold balance within and balance without, I assure you, it will bring purity within, enough to begin to set your house in divine order. And as you radiate that into outer world conditions, as you contact people of the outer world, the very peace in the love which our sacred fire will pour forth through you will. So it is very practical. Automatically harmonize other people around you, and in that greater harmony, 
they will give you greater cooperation. So it is very practical. It is always victorious. It is invincible. It is eternal. It is free as the air you breathe, and you cannot fail. I trust, if you will accept my Christmas gift of my miracle mantle of love's indisruptible purity, and the peace that surpasseth the understanding of the mind, because the peace is in the heart flame and in the feeling world, it can be forever the master control of everything you contact. So, beloved ones, we can help you to hold that balanced control within yourselves, that the radiation around you can hold balanced control wherever you abide and help others to hold that control just by your radiation, and just by your presence. If we may wrap our miracle mantle of indestructible, ever-expanding, all-powerful peace in and around you, you will be a blessing to everything, and when you contact the powers of nature and forces of the elements, you can be the peace of our love so great that those blessed beings will give you the best they have and will always be your friends, and your protectors where you abide. And that is quite necessary. The powers. Discourse 17. Of nature, if you have loved them enough can always be your protectors to help hold the balance and prevent destructive activities touching you. Our heart's love and indestructible purity can go forth to control the powers of nature and forces of the elements, make them your friends, hold balance everywhere, and let them give you the best they have to make you the greater peace that blesses the rest of the world. So my miracle mantle is awaiting your acceptance. And may the love which my peace is to life illumine the atmosphere about you, illumine the pathway before you, control everything you contact, and hold balance that helps the rest of life to come into the light and raise into our freedom in the victory of the ascension. For there must come the peace of our heart flames love to raise you into our eternal purity. As we enfold you in our miracle mantle of eternal peace, rest within it and let it bless you with all the gifts that it contains and protect you and take you forward into all the victory that it forever brings. May you abide within its almighty heart presence and be at peace for eternity. Thank you with all my heart. Record Discourse 18 Blessed Goddess of Justice September 9, 1967 Shasta Springs, California Beloved of my heart, I trust, tonight, as again we pour forth the various activities of the sacred fire we may bring into your outer use the greater powers from the Ascended Master's octave which you must draw forth, expand, and send to the rest of mankind until the earth and all upon it have been purified and are raised into the fulfillment of the great divine plan. This which I wish to bring to your attention tonight is the Ascended Master's comprehending consciousness, and fiery Christ truth of all that divine justice is, because the average person thinks of divine justice only as compelling people of the outer world to do what is right to the outer personal self. But such is not the case. Divine justice, first of all, means the returning of all the life and consciousness of the outer self and its substance into the management and into the control of the love of the mighty I am presence, instead of the intellectual consciousness and feeling of the outer self. Therefore, when you think of divine justice, whether it be in nations or individuals or business activities or families, or wherever you want divine justice to bring the perfection of life, you are in reality asking for the perfection of life, which is balance. Now the perfection of life is invincible, eternal purity, because that is eternal balance, and more than that, eternal purity is eternal protection. Eternal purity is eternal mastery. So when you want divine justice for yourself or your loved ones or your nation or the world, you must go back to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host and the I am presence of everyone embodied in this world and call to that source of unconquerable, limitless, invincible, victorious love, the sacred fire love of every life stream embodied in this world, the sacred fire love in the great central sun, the sacred fire love of the physical sun, the sacred fire love that keeps this world sustained, keeps it in its orbit keeps the powers of nature growing upon it the things that sustain you and by which you are enabled to embody here and manifest as a human being and draw forth the master powers of life into all outer activities to fulfill the great divine plan, which again is perfection, eternal, invincible, forever expanding. When you want divine justice for yourself, you must first of all give it to life. And that means you must give it, first of all, to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host, which means your attention there. That is divine justice. 
if you want perfection, then your attention must go to where perfection is or you will never have it. And if you want the perfection that is perfect balance, then your attention must go to your beloved I am presence, and call forth whatever sacred fire compels purity that holds divine balance. So divine justice isn't just getting what you want and when you want it, making everybody else do your way, not at all. In fact, that hasn't begun to be divine justice yet, never will be until it's consumed. People don't like to hear this, precious ones, but so long as people create discord by impurity, they are throwing something out of balance. And when things are out of balance, they will create discord, and discord is destruction. And destruction is the second death. There is no compromise. 3. The law is the law. Energy is energy. Vibration is vibration. And balance is balance, and balance is divine justice. So when you want it, you must give it, first of all, to your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host in order to call forth their power of the sacred fire, their consciousness, into your brain structure, and their heart flame feeling into the energy of your emotional bodies. In order to bring purity into the outer self that holds balance. And when you have filled yourselves with that, then as you make the call and hold perfectly steady and ask to be filled with that, you will ask your beloved I am present to pour forth into the condition that is wrong out here whatever sacred fire purity, love. And peace and forgiveness and mercy enables discord to be consumed, so divine love and order and peace can produce perfection that gives to you that which is constructive and helps to fulfill the great divine plan. People do not think deeply on these things, beloved ones. And if you want to understand what divine justice really is, ask your beloved I am presence, and the ascended host to tell you the ascended master's fiery Christ truth of what it is. For reality and eternity, and you could have all the divine justice you want when you will give divine justice to your beloved I am presence by placing your attention there first. And that's all of the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's divine justice. It's divine justice to the greater life in the universe that is giving you all of its love and perfection and blessings, and manifestations all the time through this system of worlds. When you want divine justice to come to you from the government of the land or from the people of the outer world, you start with divine justice to your beloved I am presence and the ascended host. And it's only because the attention was not kept there in the beginning, I mean at the end of the second golden age, that injustice began to be created, because only when the attention goes to the manifestation before it goes to the realm of cause, can discord be created. Now when you call for all of the ascended master's sacred fire love in the great great silence to fill everything in your being and world, so that you give your attention to the presence first and make your call there, and to the ascended host, to fill you with whatever is necessary to keep you. 3. Disconnected from the imperfection and injustice of the outer world against which you rebel, when you will insulate yourselves first by this call, then your presence and the ascended host can use unlimited power into any situation that is wrong to consume the mistakes, consume the impurity. Consume what you call injustice from other people, which is the discord and the destruction of human desire. Human desire is unjust to all life. And human, intellectual consciousness is unjust to all life in the universe, because it does not create perfection that is permanent and forever expanding. Now the mankind of this world can have all the divine justice they want if the people will turn their attention. And the mind of mankind of this world is interested in placing the mighty I am presence, and the ascended host first instead of placing the physical manifestation first. And then rebelling like fury because things do not bring back to the individual the happiness or the perfection which it expects. So, blessed ones, you have all power in the universe to have all the divine justice you want in your own being and world when you will keep your attention on your mighty I am presence and the ascended host first and make your 380 the I am call there for divine or by giving the divine justice of the outer self which is the attention to the control of your mighty I am presence and the ascended host. Instead of fastening it to conditions of the outer world and then letting the discord of the outer world control the energy of the physical body, especially your feeling world. I'm kind of hard on you, tonight, maybe, but if I could wake you up, you will be grateful for it one day. Thank you so much. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so.
Now I've called to your attention, in the beginning of the history of this nation, that when there was controversy about the constitution, and the setting of the laws into action that were to be the governing authority of the nation to hold divine law and order and justice, so the nation could exist. There was only controversy and discord so long as the human intellect ruled and held the attention, and tried to control the situation in the First Continental Congress. Not until Franklin said, let us ask God, and got down on his knees and put God first and asked God for help, did the controversy stop, and the divine law gave the constitution of this nation and your declaration of independence. The God. Dis law of the, mighty I am presence, of the blessed Saint German was given to this nation into outer channels by the, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host, which is the God consciousness that is freedom. It is the God consciousness that is divine law, order, and decency. It is the God consciousness that is purity enough to enable mankind to survive. And that God consciousness is eternal freedom. So when people want justice in this world, let them give it first, because that is the demand of life. When a farmer wants a crop of corn, he has to give corn into the ground first before the ground gives corn back to him, and you are no exception to that law. Neither is anything else in life anywhere in eternity. Even the ascended host constantly put the great central sun first before they create any kind of manifestation anywhere in infinite space. So when people want divine justice, turn them back to the very first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And anybody that has backbone enough to rule his or her attention and feeling world and compel this outer self to give obedience to that law, will have everything good in the universe, and you can lack for nothing, because divine justice doesn't contain lack. 382 The I They'll put their perfect 380 If you put your beloved I am presence first, and the ascended host, and put your attention there first, your presence, and the ascended host will put you first. They'll put their perfection into you first, and into your world first, and into the people you deal with first. And if you will put that in first, discord, coming second, will have to be consumed and prevented control of you and your world. So when you reverse your consciousness in the use of your attention and command it and compel it, because you can put it anywhere you desire, anywhere you will, anywhere you feel and want to do it, you can place your attention. Therefore, if you want divine justice, place your attention where it is, because, I assure you, your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host are invincible, eternal divine justice to life because they don't create any discord. Discord is injustice to life. Discord is injustice to everything that is the divine plan for mankind. And discord is injustice to happiness. So when you want freedom from injustice, turn to your, beloved I am presence, and ask your, I am presence, and the ascended host to give you freedom from your own habits of the past, in letting the human creation control the attention. 300. Instead of your, beloved I am presence, and the ascended host. Ask your, presence, to prevent your human desires holding your attention. And dear hearts, please believe me tonight. You can be free from habits and feeling and conditions that have tortured you for years or centuries or embodiments. If you want to be free from those human desires that have only created discord for you, and destruction down through the centuries, because when you turn your attention to your, beloved I am presence, and are just to it and to the ascended host, we don't want your human creation to remain. We don't want your world filled with that. We don't want you limited by it. We don't want you to experience discord. We don't want you to be short of money or supply of any good thing. We don't want you in distress and ill health. We don't want your life to experience anything but our love and our perfection and our eternal, divine justice to the rest of the universe, because discord is unjust to every bit of life that surrounds this world or the mankind embodied here. And if you can only realize that the ascended masters want divine justice for you, want love for you, and purity and peace and perfection for you, more than 384 the i am discourses on supply you want it for yourself in the outer self so the gift is eternal invincible almighty and free as the air you breathe whenever you go to sleep at night and awaken in the morning stop whenever you go to sleep at night and Whenever you go to sleep at night and awake. 
whenever you go to sleep at night and awaken in the morning, stop just a minute and say to this outer self, the mighty I am presence and the ascended host are first this might. We don't want you to experience discord. We don't want you to be short of money or supply of any good thing. We don't want you in distress and ill health. We don't want your life to experience anything but our love and our perfection and our eternal, divine justice to the rest of the universe, because discord is unjust to every bit of life that surrounds this world or the mankind embodied here. And if you can only realize that the Ascended Masters want divine justice for you, want love for you, and purity and peace and perfection for you, more than whenever you go to, you want it for yourself in the outer self. So the gift is eternal, invincible, almighty, and free as the air you breathe. Whenever you go to sleep at night and awaken in the morning, stop just a minute and say to this outer self, the mighty I am presence and the ascended host are first this day and forever. Place your attention there, first, the moment you awaken. Place your attention there, first, when you go to sleep. And you will find when you are divinely just to your blessed I am presence and the ascended host, who have only poured love to you throughout the ages, we have never given you one vibration of discord. Neither has your mighty I am presence nor higher mental body. We have never given you one wave of discord, not one. So when you are divinely just to your blessed I am presence and the ascended host by putting your attention there and ask to be filled with our ascended master indestructible purity and indestructible sacred fire love and peace by which we can fulfill the divine plan through you to the rest of life in this world and hold divine law, order and balance in action in the world around you. When you will let us fill you with that, your very willingness to form this habit and Discourse 18 300 Set it into action and let it have control of the outer self and its attention will enable us to give you the heaven on earth for which you've called. And there isn't one failure could ever be yours. You can never make another mistake if you will call for this and make it a habit. You will find the intellect will be flooded with the divine ideas of perfection from your higher mental body and from the ascended host. Your feeling will be flooded and filled with every vibration that is eternal purity and peace and balance and love. And it's much more comfortable to live in our light and illumination and our feeling of love than it is in your own feeling of discord and that of the world around you, by which you have been bound for centuries. We are much more comfortable to live with precious ones, than you are with each other. You're not even comfortable to live with yourself. I don't think I have to convince you of that. I think you're all aware of it. But we want your suffering to cease. We want you to be free from that more than you want your freedom. Otherwise I would not be here tonight offering you the way out and trying to take away from you the shadows that have held your attention. So when conditions of 386 THAM discourses on supply. The outer world become more and more destructive and people are in turmoil. There is only one place where you can be free from it. And that is in our ascended master consciousness, in our ascended master feeling. And you can't have that inside of yourselves unless you place your attention upon it. Now this seems like a crude illustration, but when you're hungry and you go into a restaurant for food, if you don't put your attention on the restaurant and hunt it up and put yourself into it, do you get your meal? You don't get what you want to eat unless you place your attention there. This is the most self-evident truth you could ever ask for. And I assure you, none will ever change it. It is eternal. It's the master way to live life. It is the fulfillment of the great divine plan. So, blessed ones, if I may leave you tonight enfolded in my ascended master consciousness and my sacred fire love and feeling of all that divine justice is to your blessed I am presence and the ascended host, if you will feel this and enter into it and ask to be filled with it and enfolded in it, I can free you for eternity, for that is my love and my assistance to my beloved Saint Germain, and that is my divine justice to him. Discourse 18 to his work of purifying and freeing the world and mankind upon it from that which was never God ordained, never God created, 
never God intended, and has no authority by God to exist. So, blessed ones, please let us be divinely just to life wherever you abide. Please try it tonight. Thank you so much. Now let us apply this to your supply. People rebel furiously when they don't have the supply they want, to do what they want to do. But the outer self doesn't stop long enough to contemplate and realize that the supply of your life doesn't come from worldly things. The supply of your life comes from your beloved I Am Presence and the enfolding seven mighty Loim of creation and the assisting masters who govern this system of worlds. The supply of your life comes into you from above. It does not come from the physical things of this world. You might have all the physical things on earth, but if your life is not here, you do not have its consciousness of supply, or lack of supply. When you lack supply and you feel that injustice has been done you by some outer, discordant condition, we are coming to the crucial point now, my help to you tonight, you've come, and the outer. 388th I am discourses on supply. World conditions seem so discordant and unjust to you, stop a minute and just remember beloved Saint Germain's statement that he gave you when he said, say to every condition of the outer world, I am the ascended master's law of forgiveness and consuming flame of all inharmonious action and human consciousness. Now that is the use of the violet consuming flame and the fiery Christ's blue lightning purity and the ascended master's consciousness. But, beloved ones, now you aren't expected to love discord nor impurity nor destructive conditions of the outer world. This is where the intellect battles the feeling furiously. The intellect may decide to do something constructive, and the feeling won't let the intellect fulfill its desire. But this is what you must understand, when you are big enough, kind enough, illumined enough to have the desire within you to use the violet consuming flame and draw it into destructive conditions to consume what is wrong, whenever you have that desire within you, that is love, forgiveness, and mercy to life. When you make that call whenever anything is wrong out here, and you will just stop a moment and demand enough violet consuming flame and fiery Christ blue lightning purity to stop and discord, annihilate what is wrong, compel indestructible purity and the invincible victory of all that is right, and go on your way, regardless. Whether you're concerned with the immediate condition or not, if your love for life is great enough to enable you to set the habit and send these decrees forth instantly into every destructive thing that is brought to your attention, you not only will be divinely just to life, you will not only be the law of forgiveness and mercy and the violet consuming flame, but your very willingness to do that will let your beloved I am presence, because it is love and harmony, it will enable your outer self to have more supply of money and things and blessings than you can use. And it is the boundless, open treasure house of life's great divine plan to live the ascended master's way. So whenever you seem short of money or things or whatever you need, stop a moment and go back to the presence and say, I am my beloved I am presence and the ascended master's law of forgiveness and consuming flame of all inharmonious action and human consciousness. That goes into all life everywhere on this earth, forgives all discord forgives everything that is of discord by filling it with and covering it over with. 390 t The violet consuming flame and fiery Christ blue lightning indestructible purity that consumes all evil, all lack and limitation, everywhere throughout the world forever. Just giving that one call once a day will keep your outer world supplied with the limitless things that you can have and need to have in outer world activities to fulfill the great divine plan. When you want that for every bit of life in this world and all in the universe everywhere, and you are willing to call the violet consuming flame and fiery Christ blue lightning purity into every bit of human creation to compel its annihilation so all life may be free. Your very willingness to give that freedom to life is the supply of harmony and perfection from the ascended master's octave. And if you give supply. You must of necessity receive the greater supply from your presence and the ascended host. Anytime you lack for any good thing, 
just give a decree to free all in this world from all human creation forever. And then ask your beloved I am presence and the ascended host, as the mighty silent watcher told you last night, to fill you with the sacred fire purity, love, and peace of the great great silence which lacks nothing, fill you. Discourse 18 391 With that sacred fire love, and be the outpouring of its boundless supply to every good thing, and there must of necessity come back to you more than you can use. Nature is very generous. I assure you, the ascended host are generous. I assure you, your mighty I am presence is generous, and so are the angelic host. Do you realize just how generous nature is? The farmer puts one grain of corn into the ground, and by the love, which is the life and the light of the physical sun, comes into the ground and enfolds that grain of corn. It grows a stalk of corn on which there are four or five ears, or more, on which there are many grains on each ear of corn. So nature rewards you many, many times for the little you place in the structure of earth. And so it is with your mighty I am presence and the ascended host. When you give divine justice to your mighty I am presence and the ascended host by placing your love there, your attention there, your love and your call for whatever you require to fulfill the divine plan down here, there must of necessity come back to you infinitely more love than you can give to your presence, because your presence is greater than the outer self, and it contains more love. 392 THEIM Discourses on Supply the great divine plan of creation that holds the lesser in the love of the greater is always ready to pour forth more love through the outer self. The ascended master's love is greater than yours. Therefore, when your attention goes there and your love goes there, we pour forth infinitely more love back into you than you were capable of giving at this time into the ascended master's octave. So you can't possibly lose. There is no game of chance on this like selling and buying stocks. There is no uncertainty about this, and your tax department can never touch you. That ought to be desirable. Thank you so much. Every time you invest your love and your attention in your presence and the ascended host by your call there, you will have infinitely greater interest on that love which you give than you'll ever get in any condition of the physical world. So it is not only the part of wisdom, but it is, beloved ones, the divine plan fulfilled when you do it. And your limitless supply of every good thing cannot come until you do fulfill the great divine plan. This, I can assure you, whatever comes to you as a gift from your beloved I am presence or the ascended host can never create discord. Dis, three, in you or your world. And if you will ask that it be eternally protected against the discord of the outer world, no one can ever take it away from you and no one can use it against you. It is the place of security. It is divine justice, because it is eternal protection of everything that is right, everything that is good, everything that will bring you happiness and perfection and fulfill the divine plan for all eternity. It is the victory for which you have called, and it is my beloved violet flame freedom and peace to the earth from the mighty Jesus, the great loam of peace, and all who want mankind to be free. So, blessed ones, there is no possible failure when you do this. And there is boundless success, limitless blessings, invincible protection, and happiness for eternity. I hope you will use it. I will love to give it with everything I man have when you love your presence first, and the ascended host, and place your attention there long enough to make it know that you don't want any authority in this outer world but its perfection for eternity. And the fulfillment of the ascended master's divine plan that raises the rest of life wherever you abide into our great perfection also, wherein divine justice is eternal and forever in control of all. Into every bit, I commend you to the fulfillment of the great divine plan. And may you experiment with calling the violet consuming flame and fiery Christ blue lightning indestructible purity and peace that prevents all wrong. Into every bit of wrong you see in the outer world, just make the call and go on your way like the wind, and you will find as you blaze the light, the light will increase in and around you, and it contains everything of perfection for eternity.
Obedience to the first commandment is, after all, ascended master perfection for eternity. May I clothe you tonight in its miracle mantle of love's mastery that reminds the outer intellect of its presence around you, and the love from my beloved blaze of violet consuming flame purity and love and peace and forgiveness in your feeling world. And let your beloved I am presence have command of the outer self to give you everything good for eternity. I offer it. I enfold you in it. And I accept your obedience, that you may be free for eternity and your nation be free by the love that you call forth from the violet consuming flame to purify and save this nation, that the earth may know peace for eternity. I thank you. Record. Great Loam. Discourse 19. Great Loam, Beloved Mighty Hercules. September the 10th 1967 Chase to Springs, California Beloved of my heart, I trust I may give to you tonight the Ascended Master's comprehension of what power is, and how you may have it unlimited when you are safe in the direction of it in the physical world. So tonight, as you have asked for my love and my purity and my victory to heal your loved ones, so shall I ask for the great central sun's love to fill every one of you, everybody and everything under this radiation. And make you strong enough and invincibly protected enough and obedient enough to have unlimited use of the power of the sacred fire love from the seven mighty loam of creation, because you must have power, beloved ones, of every activity of the sacred fire in the physical octave in order to keep yourselves insulated and strengthened and purified and healed enough to keep these calls going forth until their floods into your nation whatever is necessary to remove certain hordes of evil from holding control of certain conditions within the nation that do nothing but destroy and desecrate all that is of God here we must make you strong enough tonight if you care to accept our love and our power strong enough to call forth and release into outer physical world channels whatever purity is necessary to enable the cosmic law to take command and do within the nation that which must be done if the hordes of evil are to be removed. We are hoping that you will become one with our sacred fire power of such purifying or protecting love for this nation that our indestructible victory can come everywhere in outer world conditions and hold control of everything that is in the emotional bodies of the people and hold control of the mental world, so the force that has hypnotized mankind and seeks to hold in destructive activities that which belongs to God, we may be able, as quickly as possible. We hope you can, to remove as much as we can from this nation of everything that the hordes of evil think they're going to do. We hope you can be clothed in our loim, indestructible Herculean power and indestructible victory of our purifying love to do that which only it can do and which you cannot do without being clothed in it this hour. So if you will accept it, I assure you, as your attention comes to us and asks for its release throughout the nation, you will feel your oneness with our great power of the purifying love and peace and indestructible control of everything in the conditions around you. So that is you hold that peace, we may pour forth throughout the nation the sacred fire's purity that does remove as much of the sinister force and its control over the nation as possible at this hour. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please, and just remain so. Now you have heard repeatedly that we can only do for mankind what we can do through mankind, and the same thing applies to you. We can only do for you what we can do through you. And we have to do through you whatever your life stream will allow our heart's flames to come within you, and expand its own light in this outer. 398 THEM, service to the rest of life in this world, which we must have in order to free the nation from a certain proportion of the hordes of evil that have sought to desecrate and destroy everything. There is no limit, beloved ones, when you want to feel yourselves one with us. Our heart's flame is already within your forehead, and there is no limit to the amount of the sacred fire's purifying love that we can release in, through, and around you, to give you the strength necessary, not only to stand against the destructive forces of the outer world, but to give you the wisdom and the power by which, as you move among the rest of mankind, we can expand and consume the hordes of evil wherever you pass by, or to which you direct your attention. 
This goes on without your intellect even being aware of it. The constant outpouring goes on into outer world conditions wherever you move. Now this can control anything in the physical world if people are aware of it and will let us blaze in, through, and around the outer self our own heart's flame of the seven mighty loin. It is not only to abide within the brain structure. We can clothe you in the miracle mantle of the sevenfold flame of our purifying love. And if you are insulated in that, the impurity of the outer world cannot connect with your life stream. It cannot disturb you. And it cannot come in and destroy the work that you have done in holding to the light to hold protection for that which is constructive in your nation, in your fellow men, and especially within and around your loved ones. People reach for all kinds of things in the outer world to gain power here and there and everywhere. And our heart's flame of the seven mighty loam can release more power into physical conditions than mankind's comprehension can possibly understand at this time. You may have unlimited power so long as you demand that it is the sacred fire purifying love, indestructible power of that love to free all life from human creation. Then there is no limit to what you can have. But we must have the daily call in order for a certain proportion of your own life energy to come up to your presence and to us. And then we take that, and pouring into it substance from the ascended master's octave, as well as the sacred fire of our sevenfold flame, and return it to enfold you and be the insulation around you, not only to cut you free from destructive conditions or your connection with them, but to give you the power to act, the power of accomplishment. This 4. Will give you added energy and strength to do many, many, many things you cannot do alone. So you can have all of our low power to use in physical conditions to overcome opposition or resistance or delay or problems or mistakes, or anything that mankind has created to shut out the light and the blessing in the perfection of the ascended host. Now if you will charge yourselves and ask to be filled with our Herculean, indestructible peace, it will bring within you a sense of power and mastery, and hold in balanced control all the powers within your own life stream. It will hold in balanced control the energy in your feeling world, which, I assure you, will give you relief from turmoil and strain and struggle that you cannot believe possible until you begin to use it. If you care to remember me as the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim Herculean power of purifying love and peace, you can be the pressure so to speak, of our peace in this world wherever you abide. And just by your own conscious awareness of the stillness of our peace, you can be the controlling element that prevents turmoil, prevents accidents, prevents distress, prevents problems, prevents lack and limitation. And if you will understand me tonight and try, discourse, and it will prevent to use this, gain a momentum of it, I assure you, supply, Herculean supply, if it's necessary to use it through you, can be drawn in and around your outer self and under your direction to do many things in channels of supply that will protect what is constructive. And it will prevent the desecration of that which the hordes of evil intend. Then they cannot take away from you that which belongs to you, and that which you need to have in order to fulfill the great divine plan. So, blessed ones, if you'll just experiment with this, and ask your beloved I am presence and us to fill you with what we know this can do for you. And then set into action your calls and acceptance of it so you gain a momentum of its flame in and around you, not just for yourselves. But to control conditions in which you move, that you may protect everything that is constructive in outer world conditions, and consume that which the hordes of evil intend in order to prevent the perfection coming into outer manifestation that is the fulfillment of the divine plan. You can be the protecting presence of the constructive activities of your business world which you called forth in your decree the other night. This is one way and means by which we can protect. 400. All constructive business activities. If you will call the sevenfold flame of my indestructible victory and in protecting power of purifying love, you will find many things taking place that will surprise you greatly, but joyously. And we can also take away from you much that has been your struggle and limitation because of constantly interrupted flow of the energy of the outer self by discord. 
This will help you to maintain permanent harmony. And it must be maintained in the emotional body for us to give you the greatest power possible to do this which needs to be done, and prevent the hordes of evil in the nation desecrating everything, which is, I assure you, their intention. If you ask your beloved I am presence and the ascended host to tell you what the ascended masters know our hearts flame of indestructible, Herculean power means to life, not only the life within you, but means to all the life in this world and this system, you will find there comes to your outer intellectual consciousness the comprehension that makes you realize just how wonderful and just how powerful is the sacred fire of the seven mighty Loim. When you think of the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty Loim and its great heart, to go forth and command and heart control of life, its heart protection of life, you have no idea what you can call forth in yourselves and in the world around you to not only give you greater happiness, but give you greater freedom in the use of the supply of this world. To go forth and do greater things that are all constructive and can only bless life everywhere forever, because, I assure you, our sacred fire cannot be requalified by any human being. And if you ask us to give it to you, nobody can take it away from you. This is your eternal security into the sacred fire's indestructible victory and purity and love and peace. This makes you the powerhouse that you need to be, in order to stand against the pressure of the discord of mankind in the outer world. So the more you can accept our Herculean power of the sacred fire and all its activities of perfection to hold protection or victory or freedom, whatever you desire, or healing, just as certainly as you keep calling this into the outer self and around the outer self. We can soon establish a momentum of power that can act for you instantly. And many times, just where you pass by, can act to bless others without your even knowing it. It just goes on and on and on in its expanding perfection. 448 yeah. And blesses life wherever it goes because the sacred fire is the fullness of power and mastery over all manifestation. Beloved ones, it is a power I have longed to bring to your attention. I have longed to concentrate it into your outer use. And because of the world's need tonight, I have taken a chance to come and offer it to you for acceptance if you will use it for your nation. Thank you so much. And if you'll take this statement and call forth the beloved mighty I am presence and all the ascended hosts Herculean Loim control of everybody and everything within your nation, and anchor here the Herculean heart flame and control of everything within your borders, it will bring tremendous protection to that which is constructive, and especially the channels of supply that come to the mass of the people, of their food and supply of outer world things. Call for the seven mighty Loim heart flames supply, and protection to the supply of all that is constructive, for yourselves, the nation, your loved ones, and any part of life wherever you go. When you call for our indestructible victory of the heart supply by the sacred fire love and for purity of eternity, you will find it not only expands, but it carries with it automatic protection. Neither you could, nor anyone else could misuse it. So it can only produce perfection for you. It is eternal. It is invincible. It is all expanding perfection. So, blessed ones, just learn to live within our heart world of the seven mighty low in sacred fire purifying love and invincible victory of the heart supply to life of whatever is necessary to produce perfect manifestation, invincible forever. It is your heart that supplies the energy to your outer self. This is the thing that the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty Loim guard in your brain structure. This is what we have offered, our life for your use. But when you ask for our heart supply of whatever sacred fire purifying love you'll need in any situation to make you master of it, then we can blaze that sevenfold flame around you. And as it unites with your own heart flame, it makes you invincible against human distress. It ever expands your power and ability to send forth greater and greater blessings, and it calls forth from the great central sun whatever expanding sacred fire manifestations are needed in this world to reveal the divine plan's fulfillment in outer physical conditions. 468. So, blessed ones, it has mighty blessings, 
miracle blessings, limitless blessings that can come to anyone and everyone, and come into each one to enable each one to do whatever needs to be done to manifest the divine plans fulfillment in and around yourselves, your loved ones, or to whom you direct your attention. It brings a peace indestructible. And I would think in the midst of the outer world's conditions today, you could stand Herculean peace, don't you think so? Thank you so much. Therefore, when there is turmoil in you or around you, don't hesitate to call to your blessed I am presence first, and to me, or any of the seven mighty Loim, or all of us, for our Herculean heart flames purifying love and peace. Such Herculean peace in and around you that it makes you invincible against discord forever. It is the place of safety, precious ones. It is invincible protection. It is boundless supply, and it is the help for which you have called tonight. And I long to give it. We love to give everything from our octave that you nascended mankind can use to correct conditions down here until the hordes of evil are consumed forever and our purifying love takes the place of the distress and limitation. When you understand and destruction in which mankind has been caught throughout the centuries, now it's time for freedom. When you understand that the mighty Saint Germain's freedom to the earth depends on the amount of the sacred fire's purifying love of the violet consuming flame or fiery Christ's blue lightning purity necessary to consume mankind's creation and impurity everywhere, then this must come into outer physical conditions by conscious command, be set into action, compel the purification, that our indestructible peace may come and control the manifestations in this world. And more than that, this control holds the powers of nature and forces of the elements obedient to the conscious command of any part of life that wants perfection and purity and freedom for life from human creation. So it is an eternal, ever-expanding power of life's perfection, an eternal gift. And it is the scepter of power that you must have someday, sometime, somewhere. You must use it to clear your own world and fill your world with that which makes you the power that is invincible and protected for all eternity wherever you abide, and until you come to us in the victory of the ascension. And how the, it is the fullness of the sacred fire's presence and power of perfection from the ascended master's octave that must be drawn into the individual by conscious command and conscious understanding and comprehension of what the sacred fire is and can do and how the individual must use it in outer physical world conditions to consume what is wrong and to manifest in its place the perfection that is the divine plan's fulfillment. Because you can't have the fulfillment of the ascended master's divine plan without the sacred fire's presence that not only manifests the fulfillment, but sustains it and protects it and expands its blessing and victory and perfection to life everywhere forever. If you just call to your beloved presence and to us to make you understand all that the Herculean sacred fire purifying love can do inside of you, for you, and enfolding you, can do in the world around you, for you, to protect you. And then it makes you the power to overcome conditions of outer world activities that you cannot overcome alone. Without this sacred fire, you cannot master certain concentration of hate and filth and destruction in outer world channels. But when you fill yourselves with it and surround yourselves by it and feel yourselves clothed in it so you feel at one with us, then the unlimited action of the sacred fire can go into outer world conditions and handle them by consuming them and making them helpless before the almighty command of the sacred fire's indestructible victory that must come into outer world conditions as soon as possible. In order to compel the removal of the hordes of evil from all channels of mankind's activities and experience in this world. Since the emotional body is the target for destructive forces, when you ask everything in your feeling world to be filled with, surrounded by, and made our heart flames purifying love and heart control of life. You'll find it not so difficult to hold your peace in the midst of outer world pressure and turmoil. And then, when you ask your world to be made of that, everything in your world filled with and become our heart world of the sacred fires purifying love and peace and indestructible protection for eternity, we can blaze it and blaze it and blaze it around you. And you can go on your way. 
and wherever you go, that flame around you consumes the discord in outer world channels, and it purifies conditions so outer world channels give you the best they have, to do that which. 400. Is constructive and bring the divine plan into manifestation everywhere in the physical octave. It cannot come any other way. It never has come and it never will, because this is the activity of the sacred fire the great cosmic law has established to produce this kind of manifestation in this world. And this is the invincible, eternal perfection with which the hordes of evil can never interfere. So when you think of Herculean power, it isn't just a concentration of energy. It is the conscious existence of the sacred fire from the great central sun in its indestructible purity and love and peace and indestructible victory, and therefore indestructible harmony. It is the conscious existence of the sacred fire from the great central sun in its indestructible purity and love and peace and indestructible victory, and therefore indestructible heart never will, because this is the activity of the sacred fire the great cosmic law has established to produce this kind of manifestation in this world. And this is the invincible, eternal perfection with which the hordes of evil can never interfere. So when you think of Herculean power, it isn't just a concentration of energy. It is the conscious existence of the sacred fire from the great central sun in its indestructible purity and love and peace and indestructible victory, and therefore indestructible harmony in your feeling world. It is the release, beloved ones, from anything and everything that is of struggle. So if you ask for your release from all struggle by my Herculean heart flames purifying love and power unlimited of indestructible victory, it will allow me to establish this within you and around Bring the divine plan into manifestation everywhere in the physical octave. It cannot come any other way. It never has come and it never will, because this is the activity of the sacred fire the great cosmic law has established to produce this kind of manifestation in this world. And this is the invincible, eternal perfection with which the hordes of evil can never interfere. So when you think of Herculean power, it isn't just a concentration of energy. It is the conscious existence of the sacred fire from the great central sun in its indestructible purity and love and peace and indestructible victory, and therefore indestructible harmony in your feeling world. It is the release, beloved ones, from anything and everything that is of struggle. So if you ask for your release from all struggle by my Herculean heart flames purifying love and power unlimited of indestructible victory, it will allow me to establish this within you and around you to control conditions that, heretofore, have disturbed you so much that you could not make the progress you wanted to, and day by day, you've been interfered with. Now let us call for the Herculean Loim sacred fire's annihilation of all interference with the perfection of the divine plan fulfilled and the discord for perfection of all protecting harmony within and around yourselves. Call it forth to bless the powers of nature and forces of the elements, and that will control them, so at least where you abide, they will not act destructively against you. You can have this power unlimited. And since the outer world has the concept of myself just as power or force, if the people of the outer world understood that that is the sacred fire's purifying love, you can have it in power unlimited, which is indestructible victory, because nothing can stand against that sacred fire. So we offer it, that you may consume everything that has caused you distress. If you will add to that our Herculean power of the great great silence, you'll be amazed how you can silence disturbing conditions of the outer world by conscious command, and abide within the peace of our heart world, the peace of our sacred fire love, the peace of our indestructible victory. In that, you will feel a security. And when you have security, you are at peace. You're not worried when you are secure within the activities of the sacred fire. You do not fear what someone else is going to do to you or your world. It is the place of eternal protection and security. It has been provided by the great cosmic law. It has. That you may not be touched. Been placed in the brain structure of every human being. That we may expand it and enfold you in it to control conditions around you. That you may not be touched by human creation when you want to live the divine way that fulfills the divine plan and makes you invincible against discord for eternity. You will find a peace in the emotional body coming into your outer self that you will feel within you. When it comes to disturbance, none of these things move me. And they won't, because they cannot get into you to disturb you. Our Herculean Loim control of all the energy in your feeling world, in your emotional body, is the thing most needed right now by all mankind in the outer world in order to survive and stand against destructive forces until they are consumed forever.
It is the power of help unlimited, and the power of all protecting victory, and the power of strength unlimited within yourselves if you understand it and fill yourselves with it, feel yourselves surrounded by it. And then ask us to make everything in your beings and worlds our heart world for all eternity, the heart world of the seven mighty Loim of creation. If you care to live in that world even while yet you nascended, you will find destructive forces. For, cannot disturb you and cannot take from you that which belongs to you by divine right, and cannot prevent your assisting others, too. And that is quite valuable. When you understand that our heart flame and our heart world protects you and supplies you with the power to help others, and no one can take that from you, you will feel a freedom and a mastery that will bring joy for eternity and peace that is indestructible. I enfold you in my heart's love and purifying peace tonight. May you feel it, and your world be my world of indestructible sacred fire victory over everything of human creation, and such peace come in and around you as to give peace to all you contact wherever you abide, or to which you direct your attention. You can send the peace, that it comes to others and helps them to be free from discord just by your own call. And your world, kept at peace, is not disturbed by the conditions you have to handle. Go forward and dwell within this, and become the powerhouse of the heart flame and the heart realm and the heart love of my Herculean indestructible victory for eternity. Use my power to free as much of life as you can, wherever you abide. And you shall have it without limit, invincible for eternity. Thank you with all my heart. Record CD 13 6, Discourse XX. Beloved Lord Mahashuran. April the 5th 1970 Chicago, Illinois Beloved of our hearts, some weeks ago I offered, if you would remember to charge into your outer selves my heart's flame, when I said, if you would ask your mighty I am presence and myself to charge into you and fill you with what I know you need to prevent or wrong, and give me that call at least three times a day, I would establish at the inner level the pulsation and the release of that sacred fire in and around you to keep repelled the hordes of evil or the destructive conditions of outer world limitation. Now when you call forth to your mighty I am presence or the ascended host for the release within you and through you and around you of what we know prevents all wrong, then hold the picture clearly within your flesh body of either the 404 discourse, 400 violet consuming flame or the unfed flame or the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim or the cosmic light substance, so that you give recognition to the sacred fire and the cosmic light every time you make a call to us. Call this in and around yourselves. Then feel it blaze through. Then call it into outer world conditions until you get in the habit of recognizing and holding the picture within the outer intellectual consciousness of the light rays and the sacred fire every time you ask your presence or us to give you anything. Your part, in order to help fulfill your own calls, the part that the outer self has to do to cooperate with your call and produce the manifestation is to hold the picture clearly of either the cosmic light or the sacred fire filling the outer self with what we know prevents all wrong. Anything that is wrong, anything that is discordant, is darkness. And therefore, if you want protection from our octave, you must hold the picture in the outer intellectual consciousness, and in your feeling world, of the light rays coming down into you, first of all. From the light ray that comes from the heart of the electronic body, the upper figure in the chart, then the light rays that go forth from that body through the causal body. 416 th I am. Get in the habit of seeing light rays go forth and fulfill your call. Now this is imperative. And in cooperation with this. We offered a long time ago the instruction to hold the picture on your forehead of the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty Loim, or the luminous presence of the beloved Master Jesus, or the mighty Saint Germain, or mighty Victory, any one of the ascended masters on the forehead. Where mighty Cyclope focuses the power of the seven mighty Loim. Now, we offered this a long, long, long time ago. This isn't just for your own accomplishment. Form the habit of recognizing and being aware of the presence of the sacred fire and the cosmic light and the ascended master's luminous presence in your physical flesh body within the brain structure or in the solar plexus or enfolding you or coming down and enfolding the things of your world. Your homes, your business, your loved ones. Get in the habit of holding the picture constantly of the activities of the sacred fire, especially the violet consuming flame, the unfed flame, the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim. But form the habit of being aware that the ascended master's consciousness is in your brain structure. Because when we offered you our use of our ascended master consciousness, discourse XX, it contains within it the likeness of ourselves. 
It contains a picture of ourselves within that light or within the sacred fire. Now this has many purposes of blessing to you and to life everywhere. First of all, use it on your own forehead to protect your own mentality from domination by just vibratory action that floats in the atmosphere of earth, just the mass consciousness of mankind's disturbance or constant suggestions of the outer world that are created by pictures, by colors, and by the radiation of the energy of destructive conditions. This is a powerful protection to your acceptance into your minds of anything from the outer world that is destructive. The other activity of it, when you form the habit of holding the picture of any ascended being in blazing white light surrounded by the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim on the forehead of anyone else, you give assistance to the higher mental body of that individual to help it fulfill your call, either to control the other person if he or she be discordant, or to bless that one and protect whatever is constructive in that one's consciousness or world. This is a double blessing, because when you hold it upon your own forehead, there comes a 400. Clearness in the mind that you don't experience unless you are aware of light in your mind, or the sacred fire. When you hold it on the forehead of someone else, it becomes a protection to that person from any destructive conditions in the outer world, just like it is a protection for you. Then whatever comes into your consciousness has to pass through the Ascended Master's consciousness and the sacred fire, and, in that, then whatever might be wrong in outer world conditions, it is consumed before it enters into your brain structure. The same thing, as you give your blessing to the rest of life, many times it will be an inspiration and a protection to constructive activities in someone else's world that will many times be the protection of those life streams or their loved ones. And more than that, it helps to surround the individual by power from the Ascended Master's octave that needs to be drawn into the physical conditions of this world in order to place the sacred fire into the physical structure of Earth to help bless the powers of nature and forces of the elements. It also goes into the things of this world. Then if those things have been charged with destructive activities, when you hold the picture of any Ascended being in blazing white light, discourse, Surrounded by the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim, and you just visualize that around this, that, or the other manifestation in the outer world, your mighty I am presence, and we can send that forth again and again and again. Just like a flash of light that comes from a pulsating source that is constantly giving it to the world. Dear ones, you will never know what power is until you set the habit of using this, and then you begin to feel it control conditions in and around you. And sometimes in a surprised condition, that will be already anchored, the power for your protection will already stand in the atmosphere around you to act instantly. And through that, your mighty I am presence, can expand suddenly the activities of the sacred fire that repel destructive forces. Now this is a tremendous protection in any outer world condition, whether it be the powers of nature and forces of the elements, or whether it be mankind's destructive intent, and especially on your highways. If this is constantly accepted and you are as aware of it as you are of your hands and feet, you will be able to draw in and around yourselves, and around others that might be in your atmosphere, protection of the sacred fire which only our ascended master love can give. 402. This is a very valuable, almighty power of life that you can have just as certainly as you can have sunshine from the sun, when it comes out and it's in the atmosphere. You can go out and receive that just the same as the powers of nature and forces of the elements receive it. But it takes your own conscious determination, your decision, your choice, your desire to have this activity of the sacred fire within yourselves, and the cosmic light and the cosmic light substance, it takes your desire for that. And that desire, when it becomes strong enough as a habit that you set in yourselves and around you, that becomes, dear ones, the ascended master's habit of holding constructive action in and around yourselves. This is the thing that prevents many of your habits, mental and emotional, or even in speech, habits that were not constructive, this prevents them any longer existing within you and torturing you or making you fail in outer world conditions. So it is well worth every effort you make to hold this picture of the luminous presence of any ascended master and see it in and around yourselves. Make it as large as you choose, if you care to have it enfold you. Blaze it in and around everybody else that you contact, and this keeps the Discourse XX 400 Atmosphere about you from carrying destructive activities generated by other human beings from entering into your atmosphere. Now this has another very wonderful blessing, and that is concerning your supply. If you call this in and around yourselves and in and around everybody else, 
with your call to your beloved I am presence and any of the ascended masters who govern supply. To fill you and keep you consciously aware that your beloved I am presence and the love from the ascended masters is constantly pouring into you and through you and around you the supply which our love contains. Your mighty I am presence contains the supply, but you don't let its love come through often enough and powerfully enough to be the supply, sometimes, when outer world channels don't seem to be available. But when we ask you to use our ascended master consciousness of our supply, it means that your beloved I am presence or an ascended master can in an instant release into your outer use the light and the sacred fire love that is a magnet to draw supply to you from outer world channels that you don't even know exist. This is a very, very practical way of helping you to be aware of the supply that is the answer to your 420 calls. The same thing is true of healing. But when you call forth the ascended master's consciousness, the sacred fire is that. So when you visualize the luminous presence of an ascended being enfolded in the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim, this is the supply of our life to your life. And the sacred fire love is the power to produce any manifestation that brings perfection to you. When you visualize the light rays pouring forth in and around you, see them go forth to expand and bless the rest of mankind with the ever-expanding light, the light of God that cannot fail to purify, heal, protect, illumine, and move you into outer channels that carry greater and greater blessings and freedom for you. But everything that you want, everything you want to bring into outer action or want to use, depends on the amount of sacred fire love and cosmic light substance and the light rays that come from your mighty I am presence and the ascended host. Because, just because something exists in the physical world that you think is the supply of something you want, doesn't mean that you have a right to that particular channel of supply. But if you ask your presence to fill you with what it knows brings its supply to a charged discourse xx. For, with whatever prevents all wrong, then you open the channel for us to give you many, many, many things and blessings and supply that do not depend on human beings in this world. And that's very much more secure than what the outer intellect thinks is the channel of supply to you, or to your loved ones or any outer world activity that affects your nation or groups of people. This has a very far-reaching effect. And this is almost the opposite of what the mighty Hercules gave you last night when he said, withdraw at the inner level all destructive use of energy. We say, condense and draw into yourselves and around you the limitless supply from your mighty I am presence and the ascended master's octave. And it doesn't make any difference what it is, our sacred fire love contains everything. It may bring intelligence in the mind, or the divine plan and the way and means to accomplish something. Or it may draw into your outer use things that are already in existence. But the drawing power is the love of our sacred fire, or the love in the light rays that is the magnetic pull upon whatever the substance and the things are that you need in your world to fulfill the divine plan. This is also the beginning of the power of precipitation. 400. So it is not idly, I assure you, that we have asked you to hold the luminous presence of an ascended being on your forehead or on someone else's, or over your stomach if it's to control your feeling to keep you from accepting distress or irritation or depression from someone else who might be just passing by. Sometimes when you're too tired, the energy is low and you just pass by someone on the street who might be depressed or negative or downright destructive. Many times when you touch that energy, if you are not positive, it comes in and connects with you and produces some kind of experience in you that is not constructive. This is the cause of accidents. If people will fill themselves with the Ascended Master's sacred fire love, the Ascended Master's cosmic light substance, what the Ascended Master's know prevents all wrong, you won't experience the disaster or the limitation or the accidents or the unhappiness that only brings you more problems. So, blessed ones, there is nothing that takes the place of holding the picture of an Ascended Master enfolded in the sacred fire on your own forehead or on the forehead of everybody and everything you contact. More than that, in the animal creation of the outer world, this will hold control of the destructive. 400. Conditions in the animals. The Ascended Master's sacred fire love and harmony and activity of purity can hold control of the destructive conditions in animals. This is what the Masters use in the forests when they go through a forest with wild animals. Those animals don't have any desire to do anything destructive to them, because this goes ahead of them and soothes the feeling in the animal. Now this is how you become master over the animal nature of man, over the animal conditions in the physical world, the animals that are in the physical world and in the destructive activities of the powers of nature. 
Everything this does for you inside of yourselves or through you or around you or in your world, brings some manifestation from the Ascended Master's octave that is constructive and produces the things in this world that bring our Ascended Master perfection here. And one day makes this world our world of manifestation. But mankind must control the habit of the attention going to this, that, and the other thing, and constantly drawing back to the individual the chaos that is in outer world conditions to which the attention goes. Now if you want to break the habit of letting the attention connect with what is destructive in the 420 outer world, remember your call to your mighty I am presence and to us to fill you with what we know prevents all wrong, and this prevents you letting your attention go to something wrong. This is ascended master control within yourselves, and this saves your energy. You do not commence to become exhausted when you understand this. You will have much more energy to use, and it will be harmoniously qualified and therefore will produce perfection for you. And you will not know the exhaustion that you do otherwise. So this has many, many, many blessings. Nothing takes the place of the luminous presence of your mighty I am presence and the ascended masters and the sacred fire. Nothing takes the place of that. And if you were to hold the picture of the upper figure in the chart, the causal body, just like the whole picture lowered in and around your physical body, and ask your mighty I am presence and the seven mighty low him to, as you hold that picture, fill you and everything in your being and world with what your presence and the ascended masters know, inside of you, prevents all wrong. You can free yourself in a very short time if you will practice this. It doesn't take any struggle to set the habit and to use it. It's comfortable. It's constructive. It's perfect. 400 and doesn't contain one thing that isn't perfect, and it is no particular effort to do it. You can love to do it, and let that love come into you and prevent all wrong. And if you don't fill yourselves with the sacred fire of our love that prevents all wrong, the outer world will drive its wrong into you and destroy you. So there's no compromise. You're either going to set the habit and, by it, become your freedom. Or else, if you don't use it for yourself and for others, then the outer world comes in and imposes its destruction upon you. And there is no middle ground. There's no halfway place. Either the light and the sacred fire love is there or the darkness is there. So, blessed ones, I trust from this hour that when you think of any one of the ascended masters, you'll hold a picture of that master in your forehead. And also hold it within your heart. When you feel within your heart, your love feels the presence of an ascended being's picture within your heart. Sooner or later the atmosphere is cleared, and your love opens the way for us to come to you in the visible, tangible body. Thank you so much, precious ones. Won't you be seated, please? This is not difficult to do, precious ones. It's not difficult to set this habit. It's rather a pleasure. It's entertaining. You can love to do it, and every bit of love that you pour to your mighty I am presence and the ascended host will come back to you amplified a thousandfold to fill you with what we know prevents all wrong. And blessed ones, you can just as well be filled with our world and our things and our perfection, and give that blessing to the rest of life, you can just as well do that as you can draw your next breath. There isn't one thing about it that would be a struggle or a strain or unpleasant in any way. But people don't do it. This will help you to keep your attention on the perfection of your presence, the perfection of the ascended host, the perfection of what belongs in your nation. It will help you control your attention and take it out of the clutches of the destructive forces of the outer world that are just constantly driving at mankind something that is destructive. So in order to protect yourselves so that you live in our world of peace and ever-expanding perfection, it is imperative that you hold a picture of an ascended being, of the sevenfold flame of the seven mighty loim, in your forehead, in your heart. And now I'm going to give you something that I trust you can use, and prove to yourselves the power which you can have as you form the habit and gain the momentum. And that is, feel, when. Discourse XX. 4. You want to do something in the outer world, and it doesn't make any difference what it is, so long as it be constructive, you can ask your presence to amplify the unfed flame in your heart and pour it out through your hands until your hands produce perfection everywhere. What do you think it is that makes your hands able to do what you want? It's the energy from the heart flame of your mighty I am presence. And if your heart doesn't beat, your hands don't do anything. And you can just as well fill your hands, your body, 
your being and your world with our ascended master heart flame of sacred fire love and the cosmic light substance or the light rays, you can just as well reach up to the presence and draw this into yourselves and then pour it out to the rest of mankind. You can just as well do that as you can lift your hand to eat your food or write a letter or do whatever you want. The action of your hands is governed entirely by the heart flame of your mighty I am presence. This is why we ask you to use these activities of the sacred fire and the cosmic light, and become aware that love is constantly pouring its boundless blessings into your outer use, that you may expand them and pour them to the rest of. 438. Life. And wherever you move, wherever you pour them, life will cooperate with you and bring back to you its own blessings. Blessed ones, there isn't any other way to produce perfection. Therefore, if you will start this habit, if you'll try to set the habit, Ask your presence to make you do it. If you sometimes have delay or struggle remembering to do a thing at a certain time, with fierce determination turn to your beloved I am presence and ask it to pour into you whatever it knows will make you do that. So that you get in the habit of feeling that the heart flame of the mighty I am presence is the control into in your physical body that makes you do everything right. There's no struggle, precious ones. And this is why the mighty Saint Germain told the messengers in the very first sentence he ever gave them when he said, until you accomplish a thing harmoniously, it's never permanently done. And as long as you fight a thing, it will fight you back. So why not turn away from the fight and ask your beloved presence and does, whenever you need anything, to fill you with what your presence and the ascended masters know you need to prevent all wrong. Then you don't let come into your outer feeling world that which becomes an obstruction and a delay. Discourse XX 431 To something that you're trying to do to fulfill the divine plan. This is the way you free yourselves from all obstruction of human creation. Therefore, when we know you need the violet consuming flame, you ask your mighty I am presence to fill you with what it knows you need, it will be the violet flame that will come in. If you ask us to fill you with what we know you need to prevent all wrong, we may use the violet flame or the blue lightning purity and the pressure from our octave that nothing opposes in this world. This is what makes you master over physical conditions and limitations if you will set the habit, gain the momentum, and then use it. Just use it, use it, use it, just like you use your hands and your feet. If you will do this, as you gain a momentum, my dear ones, your fulfillment of your calls becomes almost instantaneous action. When this reaches a certain point, and then you say to your beloved I am presence, fill me with what you know enables me to precipitate directly from the universal what you know I'm going to need to help others, your presence can release its powers through you safely. And charged with what it knows and we know prevents all wrong, so you can't misuse it. So, blessed ones, please go forth and use this. This is part of the miracle power of the sacred fires. 432 THIM Discourses on Supply Love. Go forth and use it and use it and use it. Bless everything with it from the tiniest detail to the greatest accomplishment of cosmic activities. And let there be the power from our octave come in and around you to be the greater perfection that blesses you, but gives you greater power to help save your nation, to help your fellow men and to prevent the hordes of evil dominating you or your affairs or your world for any reason ever again. This makes you master over human creation and limitation. And then comes the peace. There is no permanent peace until you get to this place where you let us fill you with our sacred fire of what we know prevents all wrong in you and through you and around you forever. And it is as free as the air you breathe. We love to give it. It is our life for the redemption of the world. And when we give it to you, we give it to you to use for your fellow men, your nation, and the world. And then peace becomes a reality and is eternal in your being and world, and limitless for you to give to others as we give it to you. So go forward, and take your freedom by the love of the sacred fire which our life gives to you to help your fellow men and raise all into the victory of the ascension. Thank you with all my heart. Record CD 1597. Cassette 60276-2. Unveiled Mysteries Volume 1 by Godfrey Ray King The Magic Presence Volume 2 by Godfrey Ray King The I Am Discourses Volume 3 by the Ascended Master Saint Germain Ascended Master Instruction Volume 4 by the Ascended Master Saint Germain I Am Adorations and Affirmations I Am Decrees Volume 5 by Chandler Ascended Master Discourses
Volume 6 by the Ascended Masters. Ascended Master Light. Volume 7 by the Great Cosmic Beings. The I Am Discourses. Volume 8 by the Great Divine Director. Volume 9 by the Great Cosmic Being, Beloved Mighty Victory. The I Am Discourses. Volume 10 by Beloved David Lloyd. The I Am Discourses. Volume 11 by the Ascended Master Saint Germain to the Minute Men the I Am Discourses. Volume 12 by the Ascended Master Youth, Beloved Bob. Beloved Saint Germain's Talks. Volume 13 by the Ascended Master Saint Germain. Volume 14 by the Seven Mighty Loan. The Ascended Masters Speak on Angels Volume 15 by the Ascended Masters. Archangel Michael speaks on the Angelic Host Volume 16 by Beloved Archangel Michael. Volume 17 by Beloved Master Jesus the Christ. The I Am Discourses on America. Volume 18 by the Ascended Masters. The I Am Discourses on Supply. Volume 19 by the Ascended Masters. The I Am Discourses. Volume 20 by the Gods of the Mountains.